<coughs> you Good want morning. me to start? Hello, welcome back to day three of strengthening the roles of teachers in school-based screening and interventions. Good morning to all the participants here in our Zoom platform, as well as to our participants in YouTube and Facebook. How's everyone doing? Uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, it's already day three. Uh, has been amazing participation from all of you. And today we have uh, our speaker for today, Prof. Santoshi from University of Calcutta, India. Very uh, early morning there. It's like 6.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. there in India right now. Thank you, Prof, for joining us. And here is the agenda for today, day three. We have the session with Prof. Santoshi until tea break, and then we'll come back uh, with a group presentation and we'll go for a short break, uh, sorry, lunch break, and we'll come back again with Dr. Tan from Singapore. Yeah. Okay, Dr. Santoshi, Prof, are you ready for today? Yes, absolutely. All right, Prof, <coughs> all right, the floor is yours. Somebody is writing, I have too many knowledge of this project. Okay. Because you are saying you gained a lot of knowledge from this project. Good. Great. I will uh, go through the assignment a little and jot one or two lines on each. And then I will share with Sahaya. She will share with you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, good morning. Very good morning. I thought that I will be late, but I can see others are late. Good. Great. I am 6.30 a.m. right now. <laughs> so my children are going to the school. My husband is preparing them today. No problem. And uh, we are going to start. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thanks. Um, I hope that you are enjoying your session and your training uh, session and the training workshop is going great. Today, we are going to continue the same session, uh, The continue the same topic, sorry, same topic but we will move on to the intervention and more on the application level, okay? So I am sure that you will enjoy it. Let me share the screen. You can see my slide. You can see my slide, right? Yes, okay. Thank you. Let me move this out here. Okay. <laughs> Oh yeah, Prof, I have to inform you that hmm. I have to attend another meeting. Yes, so, yes, yeah, absolutely. Pro, uh, pro Harish, Madam Harisha will be here to assist you if there's anything that you need help with. So we will continue uh, for the first one hour and then uh, we will give a five minutes break and then we will again continue for the next one hour and then we'll, we will have some interaction. Okay. So you can ask direct question, but kindly you can also go on um, asking question uh, through the chat box. And I will keep an eye on that so that to answer your questions while I'm seeing this. <clears throat> so you can continue to write messages and ask your queries in the chat box while I am taking the session. However, we will uh, also have some direct time to okay okay so <clears throat> we were yesterday we were going through what are the, what is autism what is what are the different uh, predominant characteristics of autism and today we will move on to some of the effective intervention as well. Uh, however, uh, because it's a continuing uh, session, so we will continue where we left and then move on to the next slides. 
<coughs> sorry <coughs> so what are the challenges that the people with asd in a classroom face or you as a teacher will face in the class see there is a great variability in the characteristics of individuals with autism as i told yesterday also that it's very difficult for the parents for the teachers to come up with a solution to come up with an individual program that works for all because there is nothing that will work there work for all in the same manner so we because no two people with autism will have the same kind of a profile might not have the same kind of profile and that's very common and that's very usual this you have to keep in mind something working this uh, for with this child might not work the same way for the other child it needs to be modified and refined and personalized for each and every child <clears throat> children with autism so children with autism uh they face a lot of as i was saying they face a lot of difficulties in social interaction for the reason that they are not able to decode multiple means of communication now 10 to 25% of children with autism do not acquire meaningful expressive communication so when well, we are saying meaningful expressive communication that means that the what is meaningful that means if i want something i am asking for it properly or in the socially approved way so while we say meaningful that itself means that socially approved way that it needs to be and that's a problem because they are not able to they may might come into some other modes of communication in a very very socially unapproved way for example there are many many cases where these people with autism because they are completely non verbal sometime they are not able to put their demands in a socially approved way and <clears throat> that is why what happens is they uh, adapt or they take some socially um, unapproved ways or non meaningful ways of communication which is not conducive and there in the interventionist role that those uh condition those conditions behavior those behavior that has been conditioned wrongly needs to be deconditioned that's very important so we as a we as a as interventionist have to take care and put all this as learning needs for them or learning objectives for them in order so that they are able to acquire meaningful socially approved or meaningful expressive ways of communication even children with autism who can speak suffer from challenges to varying degrees in many areas for example imaginative play making friends is a problem for them they are not able to make friends very fast the way that the neurotypical people do playing and having peers and as friends is very important part of life in the adolescent stage as we all do but they might be having problems and issues in that so the empathy may not develop the same way that the typical people do understanding others point of view might be very very important however they may lack these issues as well so <clears throat> uh while uh, uh i can see that the english uh, version is not uh, you know the transcript is not coming uh, today so i don't know if it is okay for all for everybody else uh to uh, yesterday it was there so the transcript english transcript written over the screen was coming yesterday are you getting that because that was important for some of you i think anyway if it is not a problem for you that that's fine just uh, making aware of even children with autism who can speak so they also suffer from varying degrees of uh, areas that needs to be inter intervened okay and as i told while they are not able to mingle up they are not able to take part in the social communication and interaction of course this will lead to social isolation and that might be a problem okay why this is not going trying to move this away <coughs> uh 
somebody was saying like the weather is bad and the interconnection the under internet connection is also not good are you not able to hear me properly tell me is it okay right or there is some problem from my side i can't see any internet connectivity problem from my side yeah that's why thank you this is also not moving okay so let's move to the next slide <clears throat> so understanding the autism triad is very important this is called the autism triad as you can see and that's very important for us as a special educator or a researcher and teacher to understand that if they will face they might be facing challenges mild to severe challenges in social interaction they will face challenges in verbal and nonverbal communication and restricted and repetitive behavior we already covered this so i'm not going through this but this was called autism triad remember this there are some theories which you might be interested in how autistic brain works so there are some neuroscience bases which says there are two very very intense and important significant theories one is the social motivation theory or the social motivation hypothesis which is called the smt which accounts for the social communication atypicalities so they say that there is a difference in the reward system when compared with the neurotypical brain what is that for example when the typical people uh, we are in a social context uh say for example we are in a party <clears throat> or a social ceremony or a marriage ceremony what happens we go there and talking to somebody or socializing might be awarding and rewarding for us reinforcing for us okay however when it comes to the people with autism that might not be rewarding for them so there is a kind of difference in the reward system when it, when we compare this with the neurotypical brain and hence they just go back to shell because talking to somebody and saying hello to somebody making friends uh in the way that the typical people do might not be rewarding or reinforcing for the people with autism however conversely or in contrast what is rewarding for them is just mingling and mits or taking some time for their restricted interest or repetitive behavior that is reinforcing that might be reinforcing for them for example many of the autistic people might be very very interested and they uh they spend an extended period of time for video games trains or cars and because so they do this isolately and they will do on their own and these restricted interest might be rewarding or reinforcing for them and that is why they are found to be uh in more inclined and intended to spend time with these rather than socializing in the way that a typical person do <clears throat> okay this is one motive this is one hypothesis which has been drawn by the neuroscientist and we need to understand so just remember when you find a child who is not uh interacting in a social situation the way that we expect the typical people to do understand why the child is doing it go into the crux of the issue that that doesn't mean that the child doesn't want friends but the kind of environment that we put in that's very loud for them and that is why it's not very very rewarding for them and they go back to their shell it might also be there so because while they want to make friends they go and try to get into the social context or the social interaction what's happening however because they are not able to decode the multiple ways of communication so it is not rewarding for them and that is why they go back to their shell or rather they get involved or engaged in the restricted interest 
some might be interested in video games, trains, cars, vehicles, or insects, etc., etc., because that might be more rewarding for them. And because there is no communication which they are not able to decode there. Understood? Okay. The next one is overly intense world hypothesis, which is IWH. And the root of both, which is which can be considered as a root of both social deficit and sensory sensitivity. So what happens is because it is it is uh, proven by the neuroscientist that a lot of there is too much of brain activity which is happening in some parts of the brain in the autistic person. So selectivity might be difficulty difficult for many of the autistic person so for example as quoted by bonnie that is in nature communication in 2017 more synapses or excessive connection between neurons may create miscommunication among neurons in the developing brain this is one of the quotes from peak inside a singular mind by daniel tamet okay <clears throat> When I was growing up, I didn't make friends. Number filled the gap. I didn't make friends. And they didn't come because everybody needs something or the, or the other thing. So when I am not able to make friends, number filled that gap. So I was more into numbers. And as if these became his friends, the number came alive. My mind was able to pick out patterns from the numbers and to make sense of them. See, when we are more and more involved into something, of course, these kind of things might also take place with the inanimate things. So this person is quoting, this person is saying and expressing his experience that when I'm not able to make friends, when I don't have friends, uh, numbers actually fill that gap. And I get into those numbers more and more as I was able to pick out patterns from them, and this made sense for me. So this was rewarding and reinforcing for the person. See how it is getting replaced. The animate people are getting replaced by the inanimate things. And this person is getting into his own shell, into his own world, because this is what is more rewarding for the child, for the person. <clears throat> There are some more theories which you might be interested and in, which will give you some more understanding and knowledge of what is autism. The mind blindness, which is called delayed in developing a theory of mind. See, when we are in a social context, it is very important that we understand other person's perspective or what is expected from us. For example, when you are going to a conference or meeting, what do we expect? We know that this is the kind of attire that is expected from me. This is the way that I need to talk in a conference. And that is extremely different from a marriage ceremony, say, or from a night party, or from a swimming pool, or from a sea beach. And we can understand this very well. I mean, when we say we, the typical people can understand this very well. What is expected from us? from the other side. However, it might not happen so with the, with the person with the autism. So they are not able to understand what is expected from them in a particular situation. And you can understand that might draw a lot of attention and staring eyes because they are just doing something else which is not expected in this kind of situation because they are, don't understand other person's perspective which we can pick up very, very directly and very instant with a click. We understand that. Okay. There is a chair. <coughs> yes. Uh, Binti Muhammad. It's true. Most of my autistic students prefer to do their work by themselves. They didn't like to be in group. Absolutely. So on the positive side, now, I would not just take this as a negative also. As I was saying that I will try to find out the strength. <coughs> strengths from these deficits or the atypicalities. What was that? See, we all say that it might be a 
uh, an Aspie. We say that, you know, the Asperger syndrome, uh, this term came from autistic. So Aspie means somebody who has autism. So uh, the first stone spare, you know, the, the first uh, invention of stone, uh, the, the instrument which was made out of stone or might be prepared by an Aspie or an autistic person. Why we are saying like this? Because the typical people are so much involved and mingled and engaged in socializing. While an Aspie is too much engrossed in finding patterns out of something else. And that might be also an invention and discovery. So there are very, very many, many uh, autistic people who, can, who are scientists, who are great scientists, who have developed great things because they have not uh, wasted their time. And I would say like not spent their time much in socializing and just meaningless socializing or interaction, rather in meaningful uh, ways of finding patterns into something or going very, very extremely in-depth in any of the topic or any subject. And that has created miracles. We will go through some of those people who are very, very well-renowned scientists who might be having autistic traits, okay? So when we say that they delay, they have this mind blindness, or while we say that they don't understand what is expected from them from the other side, don't you think that that can be also the source of so many out-of-the-box thinking? So they are able to create new things in a new way. So they are different from the most of the average going people. And it has been found by the employers where they are employed that when a, when a problem is given to them, all of the other typical people comes with the same kind of solution. I find the, these people who are having autistic traits coming up with very, very out-of-the-box kind of solutions, which are so naive, which are so different, which are so unique, which are so interesting. So the mind blindness, on the other hand, can also be the opening of or the possibility of creativity, innovativeness, novelty, okay? Because they are they don't understand what is expected from them on the same usual way. <clears throat> Next is autism. There is also an hypothesis or research also finds that there is an association between autism and high IQ as they share a diverse set of convergent correlates. For example, they have they, it has been found and proven through some of the research that they might be having, some of them might be having large brain size, fast brain growth, increased sensory and visual spatial abilities, enhanced synaptic functions, increased attention, focus, and more deliberative decision making. And these are some of those positive strengths that I was talking of. <clears throat> so autism is not all about the deficits. Autism is not all about the weaknesses. Autism is also about the strengths which can be honed, which can be facilitated. Yes, somebody is writing Limpo. Yes, my autistic girls. Always come out new design in seeing, always think out of the box. They are also genius. Yes, no. Thank you so much. Yes, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> okay. Yes, thank you. Yes, absolutely. It's helpful to understand mind blindness among ASD as an avenue to think and learn out of the box that makes them unique. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Datingaling. Yes. Okay. So we move on to the next slide. World-renowned people. There are many, many world-renowned people. I have just given few of those examples. 
where you will find that there are many there were so many scientists and great people that we have known and it has been actually reported that they might be having uh, some mild to moderate or to severe autistic traits because we all know to understand the future we must go back to history see unfortunately however the one is the first one is mozart i hope that you know who is mozart is one of the greatest musician from the europe then we have isaac newton we have satoshi tajori we all know isaac newton we all know satoshi tajori the inventor and the discoverer of pokemon i know there is a lot of staring about pokemon because of many negative aspects and negative uh, uh, points however you need to understand that this was the person who was during a child was too much engrossed into all types of insects and these kind of interest is not taken up as a very very uh, i would say very very positive kind of interest rather you would say oh my god i don't know why he is always sitting with insects but see what he discovered something which the entire world knows and which kept people glued to them so the inventor of pokemon who actually found pattern and rewarding experiences being involved in all types of insects and then we have suzanne who is the greatest i think he was she was some idol indian uh, some european idol music idol and she had a great music she had a great voice okay so these are some of the people and you will find many many even bill gates has been also associated with having autistic traits and how do we know that we have not assessed some of these people because they were in history where autism was not so prevalent and not so understood or there was no diagnostic tool and anybody will not not have dared to assess them however what happened then what do we how do we know there are many many contexts many many situations where it has been found that these people were showed or expressed in some way in some situation in some context that resembles much with the autistic traits or the autistic characteristics however you know that they are so world famous and they did great in their own field so what i am ma making the point here is that autistic people are also great scientists great musicians great artists and great great in their own field what they take and if that is of their interest if that falls within their restricted pattern of interest for a typical person if you say okay you are interested in physics math but you can also try out this they might try but for an autistic person it's very rigid if they don't have this as their interest it will not happen they will not be able to adapt to something else which is not falling within their interest area and that's rigidity is there we need to accept it why because if they are uh if they are allowed to pursue in their own interest area they might find out interest and rewarding experiences and reinforcing experiences in them and this might also create miracles they might go very very high in their own field that is why as a teacher you need to identify the strengths and what your child is good at let's take some of the chat boxes <clears throat> yes there are beautiful things coming up no my autistic student can write beautifully i read some of my student can sing very well i would like to uh, talk to so many of you if you are interested as i told that there can be a later session an uh, individual session after the workshop also and i would like to hear some of your experiences so somebody is saying tanti i wonder why autistic children have the tendency to master english language more than other language it happens to most of them then that i no including my daughter for example in my country our everyday language is uh your everyday language is 
uh, my country language is bhasha melayu and scientific explanation regarding uh, for example my, where is that box any scientific okay yeah wait giving i read some of my student also sing very well plays the piano my autistic son can play a song by ear absolutely my autistic child love music very much and another child like to play with the string yes 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 temple grandin we all know autism is about strength yes that's absolutely right they are good in art too yes elisa rural my autistic student can draw well rural yes right i think that's albert einstein oh yeah 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 that's albert einstein absolutely right john uh there was another picture which was of isaac newton i think i have removed it that was i albert einstein absolutely right john some of them can draw exactly the same like they seem yes absolutely right not clear right here okay my autistic child has a tendency to dash out of uh <coughs> uh out of class and start to find interest in plants great great hong hong it's a very very good point my autistic student really loves music she can play keyboard very well how good things are coming up and this can be cherished this can be owned this can be facilitated so very well you know always come out with new design in singing yes 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 great learning out of the box that makes them unique yes yes thank you thank you uh doesn't like noise music likes to spit shout and rage and another one likes music draws i can see two different situation it's difficult for me to carry out activities with them yes so you many of you have admitted as a teacher that they have wonderful traits and we as a researcher really need to capture this so that we can provide you a solution so that we can help you facilitate uh, these uh, these skills and if you are interested uh, you know you can just uh, share your email id with uh, suhaila suhaila will of course share those email id with me so that we can have one to one session and i can help you out with how to facilitate some of these strengths and traits okay thank you professor for this dang, uh, that tingling realization the children with asd can reach their fullest potential with the help of multidisciplinary team around them by carefully and patiently tapping their interest yes absolutely thank you so much <coughs> yeah this is einstein oh i don't know why i just dropped that so um, you were saying like uh, there are see one one question was that somebody was more inclined towards language it has been found that autistic many of the autistic people are amazing in multiple languages so they are great in different different languages and sometime in not in your regional language and no scientific basis has been found out of it i tell you i have found autistic people some of the autistic people who have never learned a particular language but are able to read just completely fluently right from the very beginning and there is no uh, kind of uh, explanation out of it people try to find derive a kind of a link with their past life but these these have no scientific basis however as a teacher uh, what here where there is no base why the child is more inclined to this subject but the one that point that you made that they are more inclined to its simply english language only that might not be wrong that might be just a myth okay they might be inclined towards any one of the language it can be this that or any foreign language also you never know you have never taught german but all of a sudden when you uh, give something to the child after one or two go you find that the child is very very fluent in that particular language and that's very very uh usual sometime and common also with some of the autistic people so what as a teacher you need to do it why don't to give that particular interest area for the child to facilitate nowadays we all want our children to go with an international language and why not english or other any other language that the child finds comfortable in maybe that particular language is not loud and is interesting for the child and the child is able to break that pattern very well so the child is comfortable so as a teacher as a special educator we need to find what is comfortable for our child 
and what not what, and not at all what is the average going trend in my class in my school in my country okay the other language can be taken care of but if the child is interested in some other language that language should be given to the child in his off time in his as a as a leisure so that he also derives interest out of it the other language can be taken care of <coughs> to meet the basic requirements of communication yes child is very special it's a spectrum that's absolutely right yes okay so uh the, as you see as you find in your children as you find in your students in your son in your daughter autistic daughter in your son the same way that we derive and we try to identify the strengths in the uh, in the typical people what do we do we actually expose them to different different kind of activities engagement as many as possible in the childhood period why our expectation is the child will pick up the one that is interesting for them or we will understand what the child is interested in the same thing we need to do with the people with autism as well we need to expose them to different different opportunities different different environment different different activities and observe very well as a teacher as a parent and identify what is the strength what is that my child does well what is that my child is good at and make a list of those things and try to find out how well he is in singing whether a trainer can make it more more uh, facilitating experience or not whether somebody is needed to hone those skills and that's extremely important for you as a teacher to bridge that gap okay thank you thank you meera my student live in the ktm quarter he can draw the atmosphere of the railway station yes autistic kids narul yes professor i agreed autistic kids good in english quick learner maybe from educated family i agreed of you yes it might be because of the kind of uh, environment or the language that they are picking from the family or for any reason that that might be easier for them but don't make uh, make uh, generalizations and judgments about out of this that uh, they are good at um, english all of the autistic people will be good at english <clears throat> it might also be they are given some english books english story books and that that the story that the topic they find interested they find it interesting and that was in english language so that they find a link with it so that is why they think that through cracking the patterns of english language they are able to find their own interest and that is why they are more inclined towards the english language <clears throat> yes okay so we move on to the next one here you will also find uh, albert einstein is there but isaac newton was also there there is bill gates there are many many people who are still there and who are not still there and it has been found that they were many many symptoms for example there are many narratives which are about einstein newton satoshi and also suzanne herself told that he is uh, autistic however not these people have told that they are autistic maybe satoshi kajori have also admitted that he is autistic but uh, um, isaac newton or albert einstein or bill gates or mozart will never say have never said that confirmed that they were autistic however there were many situations which you can derive out of the narrations from different books that itself proves that these kind of uh, behaviors or these kind of responses that has been seen are a part of autism are autistic trait okay <clears throat> afik they are saying there's a saying when you meet one person with autism you have met one person with autism you have met one person with autism now there are various skills that you can see my autistic boy is angeline my autistic boy's father own a car wash so he can write all the cars names correctly and can write class teachers car numbers plate correctly absolutely angeline there are many many these kind of example that you will find that their memory is very sharp and if they see a number plate they are able to uh, just remember it even after months after months 
they are able to sometimes remember the date of birth of people, different people, not only just one people, different people. And uh, some some of the autistic people are very, very inclined towards cars, different kind of car. And from a very, very early age, you will find them to have a list of all sort of all brand cars that they can name. And the same way you will also find one of the autistic person, autistic parent with whom I talked to in US. <clears throat> Interestingly, you know, the whether you will facilitate these kind of interest, out of the box interest or not, that is also a lot to do with whether this will get owned or facilitated or not. There was this parent whom I talked in US um, uh, uh, and what she found is right from the very beginning, one of her child was extremely interested in all kinds of dogs. So different kind of dog and her other twin, she has twin uh, daughters and the other twin daughter was too much interested in witchcraft. You understood? You hear right? Witchcraft. Now tell me, which parent will actually allow this kind of... Uh, so somebody is writing no. So true. Wait. Where is that word? So true. My nephew is... Uh, and really good using English. I was surprised when I met him again. He's now eight years old. What is the pattern of brain growth in children with autism? It is normal. The pattern of brain growth, as I told, that it has been found that they have, might be having a bigger brain size, not all, but some of them. And there is more synaptic reactions taking place. And that is why scientists also say that, that is the reason that it is they find the uh, environment very, very loud and not, and selectivity is an issue, which one to take and which one to not. And that is why they just go back to the shell because it's very loud environment for them. <clears throat> okay, now the kind of skills. There are many skills that we have found. Oh, the one that I was saying. So there was a parent who who confirmed that her child, right from the very beginning, was very very interested in all types of witchcraft and the goddess of different countries, and she was able to name the goddess of. Each and every country. Can you imagine a child naming goddess of every country? <clears throat> and what did the parent do? Interestingly, the parent didn't actually care for the society or what will be the social reaction that I as a parent or mother is facilitating which, you know, witches and witchcraft and related things. She took her to the library. And went to the librarian and asked for, do you have any book on witch and witchcraft or and the name of goddess and all these things? The librarian was a little, okay, so you want this and you want to give to your child. Maybe that was a stare. We don't know. But she got the list of those books and she also gave those books to the child, to her own child. And she got interest in it and she found interest in it. She was engaged. This was something which she found, she derived interest out of it. So this falls within her restricted interest, very, very engaging interest. So that's what I was saying, that it can be very, very out of the box that we have not heard of from any of the typical children. But that doesn't mean that that is not allowed and that you will not allow. You have to see that how far it goes and what the child is able to make out of it. It might not be a wrong thing to facilitate many of those skills. I would not say all, but many of those skills, at least one of those skills which the child is good at, and then provide that kind of environment and create opportunities and scope so that the child gets interest and is also feeling comfortable and at peace. <laughs> so this is about skills and autism. An individual may have limited ability. Now, what is the problem? When we talk of the strength, the problem is many of the individual may have limited ability to express or understand others. So many of the individual will have understand problems understanding others, but they will demonstrate extraordinary ability in other areas. So, for example, if there are you know five of the traits which is required for a person to go forward. 
the autistic person might be not good at or maybe at a very, very below average in some of the traits, maybe three or four of the traits. However, in two or one of the traits, he might be very, very exceptionally superior. What does that mean, exceptionally superior? Exceptionally superior means while you chalk a graph of all of the traits of the or a profile for the child, you will find in five of the traits, the child is low, but in two of the traits, he's extremely high. So while you compare a peer of his own uh, age or a little slighter above uh, his age uh, child, you will find that he's extremely superior. <clears throat> so these kind of traits are called Isles of Ability or sometimes also called Spinker Skills or Saving Skill, which have a, a lot of parents have a lot of concern using this term that is called Saving Skill because there was a time that people used to, people, you know, too much of anything is not good. So all the parents started thinking that, okay, every child will have something or the other. And they tried to find out and identify a saving skill in their child if the child was autism. Kindly don't do like that. I'm just saying it's not all about exceptional skill. It is also about non-exceptional skills. What does that mean? We are not only talking of superior skills. We are also talking of the, the skills that the child is good at. Okay, so don't actually misunderstand my point that each and every child will have these superior skills. No. All autistic children might not have superior skills. What does that mean? That means a skill which is extraordinarily better than a peer of his same age. But the child might be very, very good at three, four, five things, which is not exceptionally good or superior, but good. So pick up those and hone those skills. It is said that approximately 10% of autistic people have some type of special exceptional skill, but that is 10%. 50% of the individuals with exceptional skills have a diagnosis of autism, yes. There is a very, very strong association with the saving skill or the exceptional skill, but we are not talking of all of the, uh, all of the autistic people, okay? So there is another point which is called the inter-individual level or, or the a talented savings showing an outstanding skill in comparison with their overall level of functioning. So what does that mean? So for example, I am good at this, you know, I have these four or five traits. So three of the traits, I am very, very low, but one of the traits, I am very, very high. I am high. But I, when, as I compared with my traits. So this is called intra-individual, uh, you know, uh, level called talented savings. So they are talented in one field. Now, when it comes to inter-individual level, that is prodigious savings, they show outstanding skill in comparison to their overall level of functioning as displayed by others of the same age. So this is in comparison. This trait is in comparison to their other peers and not with their own skills in other areas. You understood these two, two differences? inter-individual level and the inter uh, the intra-individual level and the inter-individual level, okay? So important to note is not all people on the spectrum may be having saving skill, but they do show strengths and abilities and the potential that can be taken further with appropriate environment. That was my point, okay? Let's see, there is a lot of chats coming in. It's true that children with ASD learn differently, but good at it. In my class, I handle number of children with ASD. One is good in puzzles, the other is good in different languages, and the other even know the politician in all the religions of the Philippines. Absolutely right. I wonder how Afik, how they develop this restricted interest. We don't know. I want to see the movement when they decide, okay, I like trains or cars a lot. Yes, we don't know why they have this restricted interest and why all of a sudden we find that they are so good at one those and they are so obsessed with one of, one of those. It's true that different, okay, that in, but good at it. One of my students can memorize all the timetables of the teachers in his class and he knows all the Air Asia flight tickets. Absolutely. These are very, very common examples which is coming. This is by, okay, Fariha. My five-year autistic boy got a big tumor in his left brain. So the doctor made a conclusion. That's why he cannot speak and become 
non-verbal. We don't know. This is a medical problem. You need to consult the doctor and find out what is the base for uh, for his non-verbal. It might be there that some of the nerves are uh, are affected. That might also be a, an issue. But you have to go into the crux of the source of the problem and refute any medical any medical reason first in order to conclude something else. Uh, yeah, my student with autism showing interest. I would love to talk to many of you and try to find out a way for you. Yeah, my student with autism show interest in drawing cartoons, dinosaurs and scary monsters too. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, John. He admitted he plays a lot of shooting games and mobile games such as P-Bug, P-U-B-G. Uh, P -P yeah, I have never heard of this. And Call of Duty, okay. There are some of the video games, they might be very interested. I have one student can draw almost like the real thing of all kinds of guns and machines. So your this particular kid is very, very interested in these kind of gun machines and these kind of uh, uh, items. He even knows the gun's name. Okay. Wow. So true, my nephew is severe autism and really good. You may have a surprise when I may. Okay. What is it? <clears throat> Do brain scan. Shows no. Where is that question? Autism as early indicators. No, I have one student can know. No. Early indicators of what? Also, one of my autism students recently won number one in state reading competition, two competitions, kind of. Challenging to train him with reading since he got tantrums. Yes, but it's very rewarding when he got the first prize. Yes, that's rewarding for the teacher and also for the child. So these are extremely rewarding experiences for the special educator. That when one, one, <coughs> just with a very small kind of improvement and progress also, you don't know. I mean, I know that many of the special educators must have experiences. This is so much of joy for the teacher. So much of joy when you bring into the parents. And that is all about the special educators that is reinforcing that is for us, for teachers, for researchers, when you are when we are able to track something, when we are able to see smiles and happy faces around and some kind of achievements. And these can be done. Yes, it is very, very difficult for making that person read or making that person do with many, many other kind of behavioral issues. For example, he got a lot of tantrums. Now you should work on that particular tantrum. Why the child is coming into tantrum, find out the crux of the issue and work on it because then you will be able to facilitate more on his strengths and uh, work on that particular strength uh, if you have got rid of the tantrum. There might be some reason for the tantrum and you really need to find out that. Okay. <coughs> okay, let's move on to the next slide okay so these are some of the, the uh, one that you were saying it's already proven some of the subscripts as derived in autism by neurocognitive studies okay memory Memorization of films, the one that you were giving example. See, this is already in literature. Many of the autistic people will be very, very good at and superior at memory. They can memorize things like timetables, number plates, cars, names of this or that, date of birth, very important memorable dates, uh, bus routes, maps. They see the map and then they can draw the map. Then maths. Masked, they are very, very fast. Some of them might be very fast. They play with numbers. They love numbers. Mental arithmetic calculation, generations of prime numbers, etc., etc. They can just do it in mouth, in my brain. Calendar calculation, generation of the appropriate day of the week of a given date. You give a date and you say that after 10 years, when this is going to come, they will tell you. They will calculate instantly. Absolute pitch or music. Identify the note of a pitch or music. You just play once, they will be able to catch the notes. So just by listening. And there is no training involved at that particular point. Mechanical or visual, visual special ability. That is building something, kind of, you know, the building of something, creating, measuring distances. So the, the knowledge of space, how much space is required. For example, 
a bike needs this much time, uh, this much, or the cycle needs this much of space to pass on in a street. So if there are a lot of uh, vehicles moving, whether this car will uh, get into through, get through it or not, this is visual spatial ability. So that's very important for engineering. People who are good at visual spatial abilities can be great engineers, civil engineers. Art, <coughs> drawing, painting, sculpting, sculpting. A uh, many of the autistic people will be very, very extremely good at these. Fluency of different languages it can be English, it can be German, it can be any other language as well. Special eye for detail. They also have a very, very special eye for detail. For example, uh, if you give, uh, you know, there are so many things that we play together. For example, finding out the differences. Give two pictures and find out the differences. It takes a while sometimes for typical people to identify. They will just see and say, yeah, this is the difference. You will be amazed to see that they are doing this within seconds, within seconds. Even you will find that they have not looked at as if, but they have found the difference. And that is very, 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 sometimes very, very common in many of the autistic people. They just see the map, they go somewhere, see the map, Google map, and they can draw the Google map. They went somewhere to Europe. They have seen many buildings and all those things from a top apex of a mountain. And then they come back and then they draw it. Just the same that they have seen. Can you imagine? These are some of those which has already been proven by Baron and Cohen of Cambridge University. There is Prefer 2009 and there are many, many of those kind of published paper which talks about these kind of skills, these kind of trends, which are exceptionally superior. But as I was saying, we need to also find out scope and opportunities and facilitate not only the exceptional skills, but also the non-exceptional skills that the child is good at. Okay. So autism differences or disability. <clears throat> Wide variability. Now, wide variability and diversities of autistic people have resulted in many misunderstandings about autism. As I was saying, like the saving skill has been taken as a very, very negative way also by the parents because it was so much overpowering and the parents used to think that this is something that they have to find because all of the autistic might be having saving skill. But what if the child is not having some saving skill, but rather is a little low on IQ? So the parents were not able to accept that particular thing. And that's why this has been given a lot of stereo in the saving scale. The neuroimaging studies overhaul the way autism was thought. Let's forget about this. We can move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so there is this empathizing and systemizing two-factor theory by Baron and Cohen of Cambridge University, which is very important to, for an understanding of uh, an autistic child. See, why I, I, see, I am a researcher in the field and why I think that these are important because if I just say that do this and not do this, this is not going to work for the autism, autistic kid. As a teacher, you need to have a foundational knowledge of why this is happening, why the child is different, why I should facilitate this. So these needs for, in order for you to do this, you need to have a very, very strong foundation and these theories are giving you the foundation, foundational knowledge about why this is so. So it will actually answer many of your questions and this will give you a good base and justification to move on and facilitate those atypicalities which you find in an autistic child. Okay. So this is a very, very strong theory which resembles, which is closely associated with the strengths. It explains the social and communication difficulties in autism. That was the delay and deficit. We all say that it, there is a deficit in empathy. So that autistic child is not able to understand other people's feeling. An autistic person is not able to understand or express properly his own feeling. And that can be a problem. 
because how to express your own feeling if i am having a stomach if i am having if i am sad today if i am happy today that needs to be expressed and confirmed and the same thing needs to be also understood by the autistic person about others in front for example you're going to the house or a party and your boss is very angry we can just understand by the appearance of the face that the, your boss is today very angry and you should not pop up that question of taking a leave today rather you will go and warm up a little form a kind of a base and then try to pop up that day or other just pass for today and do it later that makes things so very easy and we do it so often but for an autistic child understanding empathy understanding other person's emotion might be extremely traumatic and extremely challenging and therein lies many problems like firing out okay so you are asking like this go fire it so there are many cases that even if the people the asperger syndrome many of the autistic people who are having kuch great great traits they might be having issues with going with, with just you know going on switch switching from one uh job to another and that might be a problem because they are not they are not uh, actually satisfied with one job because they are fired for this or that reason sometimes they also say everything so straight they just to understand they just understand what is right and what is wrong what is what is happy and what is sad but not the shades of happiness and the different shades of sadness what does that mean i am very happy today oh i am so excited see my face and expression that itself says that i am extremely happy i am happy today you know so this itself says that i am moderately happy so that if different shades of happiness and then there is the same i am extremely shattered and i am crying like hell this is saddest i am not feeling okay i am a little sad you know so see the shades of happiness and the shades of sadness it is crucial to understand these shades and that might be a problem with an autistic person that is why they are not very successful in relationships it's so important understand the feeling and empathy of other person but that is not there okay so uh, who is the coordinator can we take a break of 5 minutes i think we have already passed one and a half hours and only one hour is left who is that soela has gone so who is in charge of this session but we can take uh the questions in the chat box i know somebody who is bm okay noraj in their norgia binti they drawing uh, too they are so detailed and as a teacher I, i am so impressed yes great so brian let's see what brian has written know the developmental milestone of the child in their growing years for us to be able to identify some red flags of developmental delays of a child most of the autistic behavior for children with asd are uh, most manifested at the age of yes we that is why we are talking of early identification of autism autism the uh, the as soon as we can identify these uh, uh, deficit areas atypical areas and also the strengths it would be easier for the child and the for and the parents also to to find out a way to move forward to find out the right kind of intervention to move forward and that's very important <clears throat> okay so uh, that is why we are we are we are uh, but however the catastrophe is in most of the developing country and the southern countries which includes vietnam which includes cambodia which includes um, india and many of yeah so my full name is uh, you can type my name in google and you can find many uh, articles uh, which we have published 
on the line i will also share and <clears throat> what was the other question i have written in the chat box my full name uh, in the drawing to they are so detailed and uh, and this is my email id you can contact any time there is manifested in yes early Uh, identification and early intervention is extremely crucial and important why the autism only can be detected or identified when the child around 3 year old not early than that yeah, no we can do it within the first two years but however it might sometime be needed because you there may be some false positive and, uh, and false negatives as well because as i told that autism diagnosis is a process and that you have to continue for the next 6 months again because you might have got some red flag indicators when the child is early within the next first one and a half or two years however you also need to uh, go for a follow up kind of assessment to confirm whether the child has progressed with those red flag indicators or not or it is going in a different way or it is progressing normally or typically so that is why it is needed sometimes it takes 3 years but within 3 years or 2 and 1/2 years it should it it can be detected and that should be the target so that you can start the intervention different kind of applied behavioral analysis intervention can be very well very very effective for many children to come up with the eye contact to come up with the uh, with the some of the uh, meaningful way of communication or the social approved approved way of communication and uh, that can be facilitated right from the very beginning okay we have seen extremely very very good is autism genetic are they more inherited genes uh see there is a very, very interesting question uh, hemawati uh, there are there are uh, research which which has proved that there is a close association between high socio economic status so the parents of the autistic people have been found to have belong to a very very high on education income or maybe occupation also both the parents are working great in their own field and very very uh, uh, meritorious and it has been found that their children are more autistic but you can't draw the lines because it might also happen because the people who are more aware they are actually moving for diagnosis because autism diagnosis is also some some of the countries in some of the countries where the government is all, is not taking care of might be very very expensive so it might also happen that the people who are in the rural areas who are low on the socio economic status might not be able to access the diagnostic process as well okay so we can't draw that conclusion uh, so uh, well actually uh, uh, so strongly i would say yes so norala is saying yes some of their parents were both doctors and all yesterday in uh, professor slide japan is high on autism in graph what kind of reason about prof i think because japan is advanced technology country sorry if i am wrong rural yes uh, i am so uh, happy that you are trying to draw out conclusion but see unless and until we prove this uh, through uh, our research we can't generalize but we can just hunch the way that you are assuming there are also uh, somebody yesterday from singapore a very young special educator was asking about diagnostic process it has to do a lot about the diagnostic process as well maybe japan is very very fast in the diagnosis maybe the tools are very very accessible maybe everybody is able to access the tool and technology efficient and that is why the prevalence rate is showing very high however in contrast conversely you will find in many of the countries the diagnostic process is not there the government is not doing anything with the diagnostic the uh, national diagnosis of autism rather only the affluent class people or the parents are able to avail the uh, the diagnostic process or the diagnostic tool and that is the reason that they are only able to do it for example in a country like india i will say that many of the parents most of the parents in the center they are all well to do families because they are the one that they are able to 
get the best interventions, um, which is one-to-one, which is very expensive. The ABA intervention is also very expensive. At the same time, the other ones, as uh, the diagnosis as well. However, in many South Asian countries and the Southern countries and the developing countries, the main reason might be that the diagnostic process is not accessible or is not on the national level. So in order to draw these conclusions, we have to first uh, identify all of the autistic people in the country. What we are having right now, maybe that's just the crux of the iceberg and might not be covering the entire what is there. Okay, let's take a five minutes break and then we will come just after five minutes. Okay, is it okay for everybody? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, let's come after five minutes. We will continue this.
Prosantoshi? Prosantoshi? Hello, Prosantoshi. Good, uh, good morning. Uh, we can't hear you. Are you experiencing technical glitch there on your side? So, Ella, everything is fine. We have given a five minutes break right now, okay? Five minutes break. Yeah, just oh, right now we have given a five minutes break, okay? After okay. two minutes, we will start again. Tell me how much time is left for me. Uh, you have only like until 10.30, which is about five minutes. That's oh. Why, yeah, that's why we thought okay. you end the session already. Okay, so uh, our time is already ending right now. Yeah, it's already almost ending, Prof. Okay, Prof, about the research, about the research uh, participants. Okay, for the respondents, since this research uh, is not under, uh, we're saying it's not directly involved. So, uh, we're not allowed to give out the names and the, the details of the participants. But what you can do is, because uh, we support the research, and so we allow you to <coughs> communicate with the participants themselves. And you can ask them, uh, to give you, you can make announcement and ask them to give you their details instead of us uh -huh. providing. Yes, yeah. that is fine. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Yeah. Uh, so you want me to wind up uh, right now? Yes. Uh, yeah. Want me yes. To... yes. Okay. Please. Let them come back and say, uh, and then I go. Uh, they are all here. Uh, okay. All are here. Okay, fine. Their names are here, but I'm not sure. I uh, <coughs> are the participants here. Yeah, because we're supposed to go for a break at 10 30 before we end Prof Santoshi's session. I think Prof Santoshi is, the, I mean, with the time difference and everything, it's a bit confusing. So it's understandable. So, yeah, okay. time because of the, because <laughs> you were not there. I was asking, like, tell me somebody, but there was no one. Yeah, I, I had to run from the meeting room to come here. No problem, no problem. Yes. Okay, so, okay, so mm, I think what, uh, and we don't have any other session, right? Because I didn't get time to show them the intervention that we have done, which was extremely important for them. That we, we can, can we continue uh, until 11.30 here, Malaysia time? You tell me how much time, I mean, uh, more. Because uh, your uh, my time is right now 8, 8 a.m. Okay, 8 a.m. Can we continue until, say, 9.30 a.m., your time, Prof? Oh. So uh, it's eight, and you are allowing me to continue for the next one and a half hours. Well, uh, yeah, then that means uh, we give the, because in the um, from ten forty five until one, there was there's no you're not coming in right. You're gonna give us a task. So if you were to continue, then instead of the task, then you can continue with your lecture if you want to. Otherwise, you can uh, hand over the task. Then uh, we can end your session. Uh, right right now <laughs> because so what we can do is uh you are saying like you can give me another one hour from now right yes bro. it's 8 a.m now so mm -hmm. i can continue until 9 a.m nine, or 9 30 yeah or 9 30 yeah uh okay but at least if you give me 30 minutes i can wind up 30 minutes 30 minutes half an hour from now okay yeah, uh, sure, sure. We can go for, we can finish up for 30 minutes and then we'll have our break later on. That, that's okay. also fine. Okay. Is that so okay, uh, dear teachers? Are we okay with that? We'll finish up with Prof uh, Santoshi's session for 30 minutes. Oh, okay, they're all very supportive. And then we'll go for a late break, which is about 11, 11 or 11.15. 11 all right, no problem. Sure. Okay, okay thank so you. Okay, Prof. <clears throat> okay, uh, and in the meantime, to participants here who fit the selection criteria for Prof. Santosish uh, research, you may please get in touch with her directly. That's also fine. With that. Thank you, Prof. So we'll stop yes. you half an hour from now, yeah, Prof? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely sure. fine. I will wind up. I will show the intervention and then wind up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so I think everyone is there again, back again.
thank you there is a lot of uh, com uh, confusion regarding the because of the uh, time uh, you know zone we are at the ist and you are at the malaysian time uh, okay so i am going to show you some of the intervention which you will be interested but however i can't uh, maybe uh, go through the details of the intervention that possibly you would be able to do for that uh, many technical aspects are there which needs to be covered uh, so uh, but uh, i think that many of you after going through this intervention that we have done which have shown so much of effective results in the people with autism you will be motivated to learn it okay so i am going to show you some of the intervention and then we will talk for 5 minutes and then we will wind up <clears throat> i'm again going through the slide tell me if you are able to see this i am directly moving towards the intervention okay <laughs> so see there is this aba based intervention i can see 191 people already there so <clears throat> everybody is able to see this <clears throat> okay so there is this as a behavior intervention interventionist we do aba based intervention that is the science of applied behavioral analysis in order to bring out the some of the socially approved way of doing different things in different walks of life for the people with autism which has been a very very evidence based science revolving all around the world which has been found to be extremely effective with the young children and the children and also with adults by the way aba based intervention is not only for the uh, people with autism but for many other categories of disabilities not only for the disabilities but also for the typical people we just apply the science of behavior analysis so if we categorize these two this can be antecedent based intervention and consequence based intervention we broadly categorize like this i'm not going to the details of it because we don't have time i will just show what we did and how effective it was antecedent as the name goes means are designed to alter the environment before a behavior occurs there are many many uh, uh, socially non approved way that we find the child to do things and before the child comes into that behavior we alter the environment so that is why it is called antecedent based intervention because you are modifying the environment before the behavior happens so this can be for example choice this can be providing different choice prompting high probability sequence these are different different technical um intervention uh, principles or intervention strategies that can be applied the next one is the consequence based intervention that we do after the behavior occurs for example differential reinforcement the dra that is differential reinforcement of alternative behavior we all reinforce an alternative socially approved behavior differential reinforcement of other behavior differential reinforcement of compatible incompatible behavior there is also extinction <clears throat> i'm going to show you some of the practical application of aba based intervention so identifying the function of behavior is a must first of all we identify why the behavior took place and then we chalk out and and plan the intervention so for example this was one of the intervention that we did application of trial based functional analysis of self injurious behavior of a child with asd okay so it exam so a child was there of 7 year old this was a classroom setting and the child's behavior was that the child was having huge head hitting behavior the child was non verbal non communicative 
what we did is we applied applied behavioral analysis intervention a uh, group of intervention we just don't uh, didn't apply one intervention but various types of package kind of intervention in order to curb this head hitting behavior and we were completely successful so see first of all we go by this strategy which is where we find out where this behavior is happening and what is the consequences of the behavior when the behavior is happening what is that happens just after the behavior and just before the behavior these two things are very important these are some of the trial based functional analysis data sheet which we provide so we assess the child's behavior in these sessions for example the attention whether the child is doing this for attention whether the child is doing this for some demand that we are putting that the child don't want to do whether the child is doing just for, as a means of self reinforcement for not any other thing but because the child just want to do it for his own self and whether the child is doing the particular behavior say it is a head hitting behavior or a temper tantrum or a tantrum just to get something that is called tangible so these are the four basic kind of situation that we will give to the child and assess whether the behavior is happening socially inappropriate behavior is happening for this reason or not <clears throat> so with the the with the first phase of the intervention we first find out the reason behind the behavior and through this chart we chalk out a graph with the data that we found and we found that the child's behavior was happening 40% uh due to the demand reason that when we were putting some demand the child was having more behavior or rather for tangible that means the child was coming into tantrums or head hitting behavior because the child wanted something this is the intervention that we have conceptualized and planned and this is the graph that we found after these four kind of intervention strategies that we applied functional communication training that is fct ext that is extinction that is we stop reinforcing stop rewarding the behave, the socially inappropriate inappropriate behavior that means if the child is coming with a head hitting behavior for something for example the child want to get the swing we don't give the swing we stop giving the swing rather we reinforce another alternative behavior so dra differential reinforcement of alternative behavior so if we are asking the child to put is because the hand are the reason the hand is the means to do that behavior so we ask the child to put your hands in pocket and with the one sec the first thing attempt would be the child will not put his hand in the pocket but will touch just with the mere touch we will give the child for what the child was doing the behavior earlier so give the child the swing when the child understand that he is getting the need fulfilled with just touching his pocket we reinforce more we reward more so it extends forward so when the child is putting his hand in the pocket for more time or maybe 1 minute then 2 minute we go on extending the time and go on extending and increasing the reward as well so we give the swing for more time and we stop that is called extinction we stop reinforcing the child or stop giving the swing or for which the child was giving going for the head hitting behavior when the child is into socially inappropriate behavior that is head hitting if the child is head hitting we just keep up neutral that is called extinction so see in the graph you will be able to notice <clears throat> this is the first phase that is called baseline where you can see siv siv is the self injurious behavior that was so high 170 per hour okay when we get a baseline now you will find the first phase of the intervention where we put extinction so we will not give the child what he is asking for when the child is doing head hitting behavior so extinction we also do dra dra is differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior when the child is putting his hand in the pocket we give the child the swing and then fct we also taught the child to learn socially approved way of communication that is if you want the swing show this the child was non verbal 
So we didn't try the first attempt to come into verbalization because that is not something that he will do. So we give a sign language kind of or a bodily kind of movement that he was able to do with his hands. The same hand with which he was doing the socially unappropriate behavior. So this is the swing. And when he's showing this, we will give him the swing. And when he's putting his hands in the pocket, we reinforce him. So this was going this. In the first phase only, you can see the SIB dropping to the level of 20. So it has dropped already. See, this square ones were the self-injurious behavior. The triangle ones are the DRE. So we are differentially reinforcing the alternative behavior. And see the functional communication training, the FCT is moving high. So ch the child is doing more the socially approved way of communication, which is increasing, which is a good sign. The next phase also, you can say phase two, where we have increased the reinforcement with the extension of time of putting his hands in the pocket. Here also, you can find the FCT is going up and the self-injurious behavior is going down. Phase three also, you can see the self-injurious behavior to be going down, 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 and the functional communication training is coming high. So the child is learning socially appropriate and meaningful way of communication. We went to the phase four and phase five. With the phase five, you can see the self-injurious behavior to have uh, has dropped completely and the functional communication training is extremely high. Okay, so this was one of the interventions that I wanted to show you. And I'm going to stop here. I can see some of the chat boxes getting populated. Maybe line connection, mind clear too, must be at your side. Yeah, I think uh, there must be some, and hear the voice. Somebody was not able to hear the voice, but it's completely clear from my side. Are you able to hear this entire thing? All of you? Okay, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. So I wind up here and uh, now I am writing here my email ID because we are not going to meet after this. I will go through your assignment and put a few lines on that, uh, what you have written. I hope that those were uh, from, uh, those were the real life experiences that you have shared as a, as your assignment. Now, regarding the research which we are conducting, uh, I will, I can, I'm sharing my email ID here. We are working on the strength focused model and it is a multi-country research project where there are, there is Cornell University, there is Queen's University, there is South Africa, Pretoria University, and we all are doing, uh, working on exploring the strengths of the people with autism and also finding out a way for providing you to to uh, for a model that you can apply as a special educator. I also have some of the books which you can find out while you type my name in Google, which are for the special educators, which is coming in March 2023. I have already two books, which is already there. If you type my name here, I am, I hope that you are able to see my, uh, what I am doing. I am just typing and uh, so these are some of the books that you will find that we already did. And there are two more books which are coming on inclusion. And why this is important? Because this gives a very, very many, many important models that you, for teachers, would be amazing. See, I am pasting this. You can go through these links uh, to find out this book. These are the two books. And the one that is coming. <coughs> we have three books coming. 
this is for the teacher educators teaching in inclusive classroom this will be extremely important for you and another one is inclusion and diversity these are all international books might be a little expensive but you may find it in some of the libraries if you are attached to this is another book which is coming in 2023 these are the link that i am sharing and some of you if you are in touch with me i can also share some of the soft copies of the book if you want uh, technology book these are the books these three the last three are the books which are coming in 2023 march so you will find some of these books to be very very handy and helpful for you uh the 2017 one was one was in 2019 and these three are coming in 2023 one of these book is completely made for special educator teaching in inclusive classroom and we have given various models and all of these books are international books written by various chapters written by various specialists from all over the world which will help you to give you uh, many many things which you would be able to apply my email id is here and as i told that we are working on a research and we would love to have some of you who would be interested to talk to us it will not take much time rather than 20 to 30 minutes only and you would also get benefited by talking to us because we will be able to facilitate some of your uh, problems and the some of your challenges that you are facing those who will email me i will also share some of the published works on autism and intervention which has been done on parents and also the autistic adults which talks about how to facilitate different skills of the people with autism okay any questions you yeah, are i'm very happy to answer directly if you want we have 5 to 10 minutes there <clears throat> and then we will wind up okay if there is no question so i am leaving here uh for sohela to continue and my email id and everything is here so you may contact who are interested for further follow up for anything that you want okay thank you so much and bye bye Uh, Prof. Yeah, is there somebody? Uh, I'm uh, Edi from Senior Sen. Uh, okay, Apo and Suela will uh, uh, be online because we want to give a certificate uh, to you. Can you uh, hold for a uh, for a minute? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, thank you, Prof. Thank you, thank you so much. <coughs> They're all. Welcome to keep in touch for anything that you need in regard to your teaching. Okay, so uh, should I leave now, or you were asking something? Sharing, I mean, because hard is part, yeah. There are many some questions also. So that you can still full yes. 
what are the procedure to find out which one of these yeah somebody is asking this but this will take a while to show you because this is this needs another class somebody was asking about how to do this uh, i think afik afik this will take another class uh, because uh, this is the strategy needs to uh, uh, there are many many aspects you know how to conduct this uh, uh, in uh, application in a real life situation so for this another you know uh, maybe session is required so hopefully we will we might meet sometime in a different kind of a training session and i'm sure that i would be able to help you out this one that will be completely on a private behavior analysis okay so uh, coordinators yeah i'm not saying should i leave now uh, if if it's over thank you so much everybody thanks so much so <clears throat> yes sir yeah who is this namaskar uh, okay i can't see you yeah tell me from the coordinator yeah so hala okay yes i'm leaving uh, now yeah can i leave now or is there something you want from me more or done uh wait thank can you wait for a minute okay prasantoshi Mm-hmm. Yeah, who is okay. this? This is Suhaila here. Suhaila, yes. So can I leave now? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you're gonna finish at eleven. Ah, uh, okay. So thank you so much, Pro Santoshi. We would like to share uh, our certificate of uh, participation appreciation to you, Pro Santoshi, for your time and uh, for sharing session for these uh, okay, okay. for the two days that you uh, are with, here with us. So uh, I look forward to your. Do you want to brief the participants on what to do next for the next session, Prof? Or will you email me the content? I will email you. I will go through uh, and I will write two three lines on the assignment mm-hmm. uh, that you have shared with me. When I get some time, when mm-hmm. do you want it? When is this uh, workshop getting wind- completed? Today or tomorrow? The workshop will end today, but your uh, there's another session as we discussed earlier in the schedule. The session, the next session will be from eleven until one. So we have okay. So I will do hours. right now. I yeah. will I will put some uh, points mm-hmm. for reference in each of those assignments and share that with you mm-hmm. if that is okay. Thank you. Yeah, that that's fine, Prof. I. I hope to receive it uh, the soonest because after this, when they come back for break, then we'll continue. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Session. Okay, thank you so, so much. Ayla. Thank you so much, Prof. And to our participants in uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook, thank you for joining us. We'll break for the breakout session after this, and uh, we'll see you again at two o'clock with uh, Dr. Tan's session. And to our participants in Zoom, the teachers in Zoom, please stay tuned. Uh, and I'll see you again at eleven fifteen. Right, eleven fifteen Malaysia time. One, eleven one five. Okay, <laughs> don't be mistaken by eleven five zero. No, it's eleven one five. I'll see you soon, teachers. Thank you for joining us.
Okay, to our participants in uh, Zoom and uh, you, sorry, in participants in YouTube and Facebook, may I please have your attention to our participants in YouTube and Facebook. Uh, when we come back later after our tea break, we'll have a discussion going on. So for that, you will not be able to join because it's only uh, restricted to our participants in Zoom. However, you may join their presentation, which will be shared later. Uh, presentation will be approximately at 12 or 12.30 in the afternoon for... Okay. Okay, so the participants in Zoom, uh, YouTube and Facebook, you may come back later for their group presentation. But for your information, I would like to share here that there is no lecture going on from now until uh, 2 p.m. Malaysia time. Okay, you may join, you may join uh, for lecture, which will be at 2. But for you to join the, the presentation, you may join at 12 in the afternoon. I hope that's not confusing. Is it confusing? No, it's not. <laughs> Let me make, make, make it clear here. To YouTube and Facebook participants, you may join us again. There'll be no lecture, but you may join us for presentation, which is at 12 in the afternoon, Malaysia time. And we'll break for lunch and we'll open the, the YouTube streaming session again at 2 for continuation of a lecture. Okay, so hope that's clear. For participants in Zoom, do stay tuned till the end. Uh, there is no issue with participants in Zoom. I'm just talking to the participants in YouTube and Facebook. All right, thank you. I'll see you.
Hi, teachers. If you are back, uh, okay, we have five more minutes. We wait for others to come back. I will really start in five more minutes. Uh, do enjoy your short break. I know you're working so hard for the entire three days. So let's take a, another five more minutes. See you.
Okay, everybody, welcome back from your tea break for today. Okay, so since yesterday, everybody had... <laughs> thank you, Madam Uroshima. Uh, yesterday, everybody uh, worked so hard in the breakout rooms and uh, had a very fruitful discussion. And so we're about to uh, announce the top five uh, groups for this training session. But before that, I want everybody to know that we really appreciate all of your great effort and discussion. So everybody, everybody is a winner actually, but we just have to choose the best uh, five. But before that, okay, uh, let us call upon the group members to present. Okay, we have until one o'clock Malaysia time for the presentation. So we'll, hmm, how should we go about, I mean, I don't want to call from 1 until 10 because that is so typical or 10 to 1, you know. So we're going to ram, randomly pick or, okay, uh, anyone here is so quick at doing like picker, number picker online? Afik, can you help out? Okay, but I don't want you to choose the number. I want you to create that. You know, you go to the website where they have that uh, one until 10. And then we have that random picker. Can you help out, please? Random picker. There you go. All right. <gasps> Afi, round of applause to Afi. Okay, so I hope all the groups are ready. Can I please get like a thumbs up in the group saying that we are ready to go? Then, yes. Okay, everybody's ready with a thumbs up. One moment, please, Afik, before we spin the wheel. Okay, so when the num your number is up, okay, group members of the group, uh, please get ready with your materials to present because you have 15 minutes, but we'll give you additional five. Uh, if you have more information to share. But once you exceed the time given, once you exceed 20 minutes, then we'll deduct your marks. <laughs> so you have to make sure that you are uh, on time. Okay, all the teachers are ready. All right, I'm excited to start. Afi, are we ready? All right, Afi is ready. Okay, so the first group will be... Dang. Lucky number one. Yay! Group six. Woohoo! Group six, group six. Can we please get the members of group six to get ready to present? Can okay, we give you two minutes to prepare? Group six, where are you? We'll support one another, yeah? Oh, that's fast. Oh. Miss Napa, Miss Napa, Kapkun Mark Mark. Okay, let us uh, show our great support to Group Six. Okay, Miss Napa and team members, when you're ready, introduce yourself. Then we shall start. Can we have like a timekeeper here? Anybody volunteer to be a timekeeper? No, I can be the timekeeper, but I just want to be biased. People might think that, oh, she's giving extra time to this group. She's giving extra time to that group. So we need one from the participant here. Can you raise your hand? Anybody here wants to be a timekeeper? But you have to be fair. You can't be biased to your group. Okay, nobody volunteers to be thank you for okay. I'll be the thank you for then. <laughs> Group six, are you ready before I start the time? Oh, we won't think you are biased. Oh, all right. Okay. Thanks, Afi. Thanks for the faith in me. <laughs> Okay, can we please have all the members of Group 6 to turn on your camera and raise your hand so Mr. Rusnedi can put you in the spotlight. 
So this is very crucial. So later we can take your picture and, you know, as a proof that you participate in the group presentation. Miss Napa, Miss Napa, I think you're still muted. If you're trying to speak, uh, we can't hear you. Hi. Miss Napa? Can you hear me? Ah, okay. We can hear you now, but it's not so clear. Still very soft. Okay, I will speak louder. <laughs> okay. Miss Napa, who are your group members, Miss Napa? Ah, mm. uh, oh, I... I can show you this list. Okay. Okay, we'll spotlight Miss Napa. How about the rest? How about the rest? Can we please have uh, the rest of the members to also be in the spotlight? It would be great to have all 14 of you. Yes. All their pictures, yeah. You can just be one presenter, one or two presenters, but the rest can just be on the spotlight as well. Yeah, so can you please turn on your camera and uh, <clears throat> raise your hand so Mr. Rusnedi from the technical team can put you in the spotlight. Okay, Miss Norwida. Can you say a few words? Miss Norwida? We can't. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry. Um, hi, Assalamualaikum and hi, everyone. I'm Hello. from Malaysia, Sabah. And actually, I'm teaching a preschool. Mm. I don't really have experience in special needs, but this is a very, very good opportunity for me to learn and experience um, like live. So, yeah, thank you for thank the you. opportunity. Thank you. We're so glad to have you with us, teacher. How about the okay. rest of the group members? Please raise your hand, turn on your microphone, and say a few words so our technical team here can uh, pin you. Okay, then we have one more. Hello, teacher. Introduce yourself, please. I haven't started the time, by the way. No worries. <laughs> Assalamualaikum and hi, everyone. I'm Farah from Malaysia, uh, from Johor Bahru. Hi, teacher. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Here we have one more. Miss Waluk Mapon. Hello. 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 Uh, good morning in Thailand. <laughs> good morning. Yeah. Um, um, uh, the first thing I uh, would like to thank uh -huh, uh, everyone because the first uh, the first time I uh, uh, give uh, attention to this cross. I think it's very close for me because uh, everyone uh, attention to do this. Uh -huh. And uh, actually my English uh, uh, not good, but I very grateful to uh, for a nice to meet you, everyone. Hello, Sawadika. Sawadika. Your English is excellent, Miss Mapon. No worries. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Yeah, everybody's doing so great here. Okay, we have more teachers joining us for group six. <clears throat> okay, if you're ready, group six. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna start the time now. Okay, your time uh, 20 minutes starts now. Hi, everyone. I am Amar Priscilla. Center of Group Six. Uh, I would like to present about Teacher Fala case. If uh, this case, Teacher Fala teaching in preschool that her classroom have a uh, seven student that six is ASD or autism spectrum syndrome and one is Down syndrome. We pick one case is the boy five years old that diagnosed as a autism syndrome. He likes to scream out of nowhere. Every not notice for order. And the behavior appear after finish his work. He can talk a normal sound, but he he all he can 
he screamed out loud in everywhere that he want about the uh, in classroom or her his home the uh, family told the teacher that he also screamed out in home their friend with autism always hit his head hit his head when he makes the noise because it's annoying it's too loud for them and step two uh planning to help them in this issue first we we talk about finding some reason that why they why he scream or how frequency or what situation that he scream and number two is teach about emotional and how to express properly like in a picture is a emotional chart we teach about one is i feel happy two is i feel content three is i i have a problem four is i feel upset and five is i feel angry because we believe that maybe she scream out because he don't know how to express his emotion in properly and three is teaching good behavior replace the screaming and when when he want to screaming if uh, he have to change a behavior to shoulder tapping the teacher or hand rising in classroom by using a social story to tell him about proper behavior that he has to do uh four is sensory integration or to control himself maybe he have a sensory problem we have a sensory integration to make him con control himself about emotion or behavior and five is create a safe place for him for him because in the class we have many many students but he he maybe he want an only safe place to be alone or to calm down to uh, reduce the behavior and the final is when he did the behavior that we teach we give them a reward or token economy to reinforce a good behavior and number three question is so is so how uh i think we have to solve this problem with his family we have to tell the parents about the kids problem and solve it together and we have to policy for student in classroom have our accommodation or adaptation something for for him and maybe we can refer him to professor or therapist that diagnose or help them with this behavior and the challenges for this problem is encourage a new skill because they screaming out anytime anyway and no clue why they why he screaming how, uh, how the teacher can teach a new skill is a uh, challenge uh number four question is any suggestion we we think about our good thing about to create a learning goal and behavioral goal for him for the para teacher that have a information for us that he tell that he can learn he can do his work he can speak like what he want but he have a improper behavior uh number two is using pro time technique is a technique that we learn together 
with children, when they play, we give them a situation to challenge them to solve a problem, to create a new thing or to think, to have a communication with other while playing. And finally is work with his family and other teacher because if we, if the para teacher teach them only one teacher in this school, I think it's not work because it's a uh, not a standard like you teach them in classroom, but they go home, they have a same behavior. They go, they go back to classroom. They will have a same behavior too. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you. You still have uh, 10 more minutes for your presentation. Uh, let us uh, show our support to group six in the chat box. Any questions from the members of the floor to group six? Or any additional um, feedback or comment or content from the rest of the group members? Yes. Um, hello out there. Yeah, that's like... Um, I quite wonder about like um, number two. I that like it's not it's not only me, but like the represent a uh, representative from group number number ten. Uh, we quite wonder about step by step planning, but um, teaching good behavior. And I think that it should be intervention at that like for number two planning. It that should should be the combined. Uh, I might be wrong. To should be combined by checklist. Yeah, you have to check it first for mm -hmm. determine and to the confirm. I think like it is teaching attitude gonna be there to and number three, it is solve the problem and intervention. And please, please, like all of you, please clarify for this one. Mm -hmm. yeah, can you please clarify for <clears throat> step two? What uh make you decide to um, what happened if the problem is not solved, right? Is that why you're asking, Mr. Chapatana? Yes, yes, yes. That, 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 that the group number 10, that we just like you talk yeah, about this one. Yeah, yeah how step the planning, planning that we should be at like intervention or not because I step the planning, that plan that they keep in our mind, what, how should we do? Hmm. You, you say in number three question, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. And, and, and number two, uh, the, the planning, I quite wondered about a teaching. Teaching that, like, does uh, mean um, like proper activity? Uh, does mean intervention or not? Because I quite confused about the planning. Yeah, planning to address. Uh, is this a planning, but. It's also intervention because I use for for this step I use the PBA positive behavior support that help him to have a good behavior. This is a process that we teach about proper behavior to fix what the problem that he have. Um, I think if you 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 may mean that we have an intervention in number three answer, we have to yeah yeah, yeah. I, I I mean like planning step step by step planning for the number two, but uh from my point of view, teaching good behavior like a tease about emotional that should gonna be like. Um, I moves out to the number three because I already saw because it, because you teach already that at the from a point of view or anybody in this room, what do you think about it? Planning, planning this first to keep in your mind. Planning how you should a checklist if you're not a checklist first about some for the fire area, the ground water function. At this your problem said that the boys just so like to scream and then you have to check about them. We have your like um we have a checklist or not. Like it from ah, yeah yeah. I, I I also mentioned it in the number one. It's for the reason 
why he scream or how frequently or where the situation happened. We use about observation or assessment or interview the. Uh, is this a collecting data? Yeah, excuse me. I want to say something. Can yes. Say something, please. Uh, I am a group member uh, from group number 10. And, and we all think that uh, the step two is for addressing the problem. I think oh, we, all, uh, we all thought that uh, this is for screening the problem for the eye. Yeah, we all think that. The number two is to plan to uh, be assured the issue or the problem, like the screening process. Not to, uh, uh, only in number three, we can solve or not, we decide. Uh, we are not sure uh, it is right or wrong. Okay, basically here, right? Um... Miss Napa and the group members are uh, basically sharing their experience and what they do, right, in the, this in the situation of this Farah's case. Am I right? So yes. this is the this is the attempt. Uh, but I think as far as whether it's right or wrong, it is still very subjective because it depends on the situation. It depends on the children's situation and also the classroom environment as well as the teachers' uh, capabilities. And now, of course, the best person to answer this would be the speaker. So since I'm not the speaker, and uh, basically the members of the this group are also sharing on this issue, then uh, to ask whether it is right or wrong, then uh, probably uh, not not the the best time to ask a uh, teacher who asked this now. So it's more like let us uh, hear on the sharing, and perhaps you can give your ideas on whether what should be done or what are the are the alternatives that can take place so that teachers here can have the ideas on how they can uh, uh, solve this issue would that be okay so let, let us agree on uh, the terms like okay let us not ask whether it's right or wrong because I think uh, we are not in the position to answer that question yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's okay. thank you so much for your understanding yeah thank you but we, we would like to share ideas. I think that's what we should do. You know, we, we empower one another. I think the best thing about us are having teachers from other countries as well, other places, other institutions. We have from government, we have from non-government, um, we have from Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore. I mean, diverse uh, cultures and uh, diverse different backgrounds. So I think, yeah, let us... Uh, let us uh, perhaps uh, brainstorm and come up with the uh, uh, different solutions or some ideas. Yeah, thank you so much for those who are agreeing with me. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that's uh, that's what we can do now. Uh, we empower one another. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? We still have six minutes to uh, for group six. If anyone wants, would like to comment or share your ideas to group six. Everyone can share your idea because <laughs> this case is uh is so challenged because we don't know <laughs> we don't know why he's screaming out. Mm. Teacher Farla want to want the, <laughs> to help <laughs> to help. Hello. Her. <laughs> Hello, good morning yeah. to everyone. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to commend uh, group six of their work. I know it's very hard for us as a teacher to be able to, um, to provide intervention to our children, especially with this type of situation when he got um, making noise a lot and we cannot focus on teaching him since he have uh, some issues in terms of the behavior or how to focus on the classroom. And one good point that you have was um, knowing what's the reason behind it. What's the reason why this child scream? It's more on multi-sensory approach. Um, in ABBA behavior, I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you have to know first what's the source of his agitation. Why is why he screaming? Maybe he's not comfortable. 
he's not comfortable with the noise or there's something he wants to, to do that he cannot express because he's nonverbal. So you have to, as a SPED teacher, you, will be, you should be very observant of your child's behavior. There is no right or wrong intervention as long as you're striving and you have the passion to help the child to be at his best, to know his interest and capitalize it for his own good. And I think um, everyone should be happy with it when you try to do it in a way that um, you're helping the child. So any intervention will do as long as you be very observant and try to take down notes on what are the behavior of the child if you do this, this kind of activity. And then if it is positive, then continue doing it. You just have to explore and try to read more about the intervention that you found online for you to be able to be equipped of the new intervention or strategies or read and try to apply it, uh, apply it in your classroom. And I recommend um, group six for giving this kind of step-by-step -step planning for this kind of days. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Brian, for the very insightful sharing. Uh, so any comment from other members of the group uh, on Mr. Brian's feedback? Or we can move on to the next group. Oh, hi. Um, I would uh, I would say something. Yeah, sure. Miss Napa, do you mind? Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. I just yeah, I, I just I just want to clarify here the reason why the kids scream out out of nowhere, very noisy, because uh when uh teacher teacher Farah, correct me if I'm wrong, because this was yesterday, uh, because whenever he is done with his work he will get very, very excited. This is what happened to the kids. So when he gets very excited, he will scream. Correct me if I'm wrong, teacher Farah. So that is why we come up with the teaching good behavior. Uh, actually, this one will take time for sure, I believe. But then what teacher Farah uh, is trying to say is, uh, this is what they've been doing, like to calm these boys down uh, by like shoulder tapping, by like, mm. you know, rubbing rubbing the body of the boy so that he will come down this is one of the way that they did in the classroom right teacher para yep so th this is what actually uh means by teaching good behavior so that whenever he scream teacher will come and calm him down by touching his body but not in a like negative reinforcement but in a way like shoulder tapping and so on lah. Okay, mm. that, that is the only thing I want to clarify because this is what they've been like asking, right? It's actually teaching good behavior to show that whenever he scream, that that one is not a good one for him to do. So teacher will come and calm him down and show good example by like, you, you should do this and you cannot do this. We don't know what he's feeling, right? But by showing through action is one of the way that the child, I believe, will learn. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, very well said, Teacher Norida. Okay, now, uh, thank you, Group 6. A round of applause to Group 6. Let us move on to the next group, Mr. Afik. Are we ready? You can share screen, Mr. Afik, so we can see the random picker. There you go. Let's go. Number 2, we'll go to Group Nine. <laughs> okay, group nine, are you ready? Please raise your hand. Uh, turn on your camera so we can uh, spotlight you in the main room here. Group nine. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, teacher Norhelina, Amalia, Irish, Mayorkas, Azhar, Nur Eliza. Okay, turn on your camera, please. And uh, raise your hand so Mr. Rosnady can pin you. Oh, we have Malaysia, Myanmar, Indonesia, Philippines, and Thailand. Wonderful. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm sharing our presentation, but I'm not going to present. <laughs> I'm calling for I'm calling for uh, teacher Azha. Oh, teacher Azha, let the gentleman present, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> teacher Azha. Okay, we'll wait for the rest. Please raise, raise your hand. Turn on your camera, the rest of you. Oh, that's the chance I see a baju batik eh, hari ni. <laughs> okay, anybody else? We just wait for the rest to raise your hand and turn on your camera. Oh yeah, for information, our technical team can only pin limited number of participants. Uh, I think up to 10. Okay, so the rest, then we, we don't have to raise your hand anymore if you're not put in the spotlight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I think we have space for two more. Good luck, group nine. Uh, so kind of you, teacher us. Thank you. Okay, your time Thank hasn't started yet. We're still waiting for... Miss Eddie, can, we, can group nine start already? Chayu. <laughs> All right, group nine. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, so your time starts now. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Uh, still, good morning. Not not like yesterday. Okay. Okay, I want to present my our, our group uh, from group nine. Uh, we can study about uh, anarchism style repeatedly. It, his hand on any hard surface. Okay. Uh, we try to find the cause because uh, one, the second about uh, an attention. Uh, secondly, for sensory processing. The third one is attempting to communicate. Okay. Uh, the way to overcome it. First, uh, we... Uh, using an assessment or behavior checklist uh, to observe the child's behavior. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the example is to use the child modification chart to indicate the child uh, behavior to show uh, uh, first the, uh, how it begin and how we to solve it. Okay. For time to time. Okay. Uh, secondly, we use uh, using a picture touch to communicate. Uh, use a sensory activity like the snacking, snacking, uh, snacking, not snacking, eh? Okay, play do and use trampoline to overcome the uh, aggression. Okay, create a timeout room, uh, a calm room. Use a uh, one room to separate them from the other others. Okay, using a uh, black curtain, not too light, not too dark. Uh, just uh, give a little light to give a uh, calm place and a uh, surrounding. Okay, we can uh, use a uh, cemetery variable, music or therapy music or their favorite music. Like uh, in Malaysia, you, we, we can using a uh, open uh, open e Omar Hana Islamic uh, music or uh, the if more uh, suitable for we come uh, as an Islamic or we can using an Islamic uh, from a Quran uh, recite okay okay but uh, uh, the number five we use from a uh, classroom routine. Okay, so you can give a price and reward if the behavior is changed. Any behavior, slightly behavior, okay. Uh, as an example, we can, uh, if we say to uh, not to uh, not hit yourself, we give a clap hand. Okay, good and praise him. Okay, uh, we can. Uh, clear rules about the behavior and every day 
of the group would like to add to Cikgu Azhar's presentation. Great job there, Cikgu Azhar, group nine. Any members would like to say a few more words to... Okay, thank you. Mr. Wirapong, would you like to add anything? No. Okay. Uh, all right, any question to group nine? Any question or any comment? Sorry, sorry, not really question. Comment or a suggestion. Or any feedback that you would like to share uh, with Group 9. Congratulations. Good job. Congrats. Wow, Group 9. Very positive participants here. Okay, if there is no comment or suggestion to Group 9. All right, round of applause to Group 9. <laughs> Vote for Group 9. <laughs> Vote for one. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Good Thank job, you. Group Nine. Okay, uh, Mr. Afik, our great assistant here from Singapore. Okay, are we ready for the next? Okay, let Let us wait for the rest of them to be moved from the spotlight first. Okay, Mr. Afik. Okay, let's go. Next group will be group number two. Yay, group two. Let's have group two to present. All right, as usual, yeah, that's raise, my your own group. <laughs> raise your hand. Turn on your camera. Is your group, I think. <laughs> All right. Let us wait for the rest of your group members. Okay. Uh -uh, group Afik. Okay, go group two. Go good luck group two. Where are the rest of your members? There you go. Hello, teacher Raya. Uh, teacher Tirapon. Anyone else from group two? Okay, we'll uh we'll keep on uh putting them in the spotlight. I'll get to Sharvina. Nur Izati. Oh, uh, any group like a participant? Uh, yeah, you can. Anybody here would like to add Miss Nor Laila? W were you not yesterday during the discussion? You were not in yesterday? 
Okay, can you enlarge the Kima right now? That, that's a good, good suggestion there. Adichino Laila, you may uh, ask the other groups if they, you can join them. So far, you know, we have group two. So we have group one, three, five, four, seven, eight, and ten who have not present. So you can communicate with the group members. All right. So we, any more members? I can Chino Atika. Okay, Mr. Afi, are you ready? Who's going to present for your group? Um, I think I can present then later on, like if anything, my other members can help pitch in. Yeah. That's great. That's so great. uh okay, your time was, starts now. Thank you. Yeah, so this case was uh presented to us by Miss Shabina actually. So this is like a real case that um she encountered in her school. And I guess like a lot, what the team did on that half was like really uh, ask her a lot of questions to try and get like as much information as possible about the child's needs and like what she has tried. And so I think it was like a really a good effort lah for this, even though it was just one person's case. Yeah. So uh, this is student S. Um, he's eight years old. Um, he's male. And the area of need that we have identified is behavioral difficulties lah. So student S is a boy diagnosed with ASD, autism, spectrum diagnosis disorder, and he would show hyperactivity symptoms. However, Miss um, Shavina shared that he was not diagnosed with ADHD and his hyperactivity symptoms actually would disrupt his classmates. So what he would do is he would throw things at them, such as a uh, particular eraser, right, Miss Shavina, uh, take their things and like, he would even write on the whiteboard when the teacher is teaching uh, so I think you can see how this is quite disruptive for classes, uh, for the students and the teachers. So he also get especially hyperactive, like even more hyperactive after his breaks and recess. So I think this made us consider maybe it's like his diet also a little bit. And he also exhibits the sensory symptoms of ASD. He would like spin on the floor and he would like do a handstand. Like he will put his body in an upside down position. And, you know, he will also like rock his chair to the point of like falling down. And he actually fell down twice before. And on a few occasions, he also beat his hand. So he has some self-injurious um, behaviors as well. And I think it was important to note that this was consistent throughout all his subjects and lessons that student S attends. So this was really more of a behavioral difficulty and not like specific to any lessons or any learning things that he was trying to avoid maybe. So uh, after talking Miss Miss Shabina, I think we tried, uh, I think we noted that she tried a lot of things and um, some of them quite fun also. Yeah, so uh, at the very first, at the baseline, what she did was she got a trampoline and she got student S to use the trampoline for 15 minutes at the start of the day and in between some lessons. So if they can find some pockets of time throughout the day, they will let him like jump on the trampoline up. So this was maybe like to tire him out and like to give him like that physical like stimulation that he will need to focus his attention after that. So uh, she actually shared that his focus will improve for an hour or two. So like one hour, two hours after playing on the trampoline, like he was able to like really do his work and focus on like his worksheet. But, half, but after like one hour or two hours, like he will revert back to his disruptive behaviors. So he will start disturbing friends and like writing on the whiteboard again. So I think after she tried uh, this, um, she actually had a conversation with the student's mother. And uh, oh, the mother actually shared uh, that student S had similar difficulties in his previous schools. So he was at two different schools before this. And like in those schools also, he showed similar uh, difficulties. So um, I think something that we learned is that holistic approach, right? Make sure like the teacher and the parents are all involved. So uh, Ms. Shavina actually worked with the mother to implement some strategies to ensure the continued support at home and in school. So one thing that they discussed together was uh, this like reward system. So uh, for student S, if student S did not disrupt his lessons for the entire week, his mother would actually bring him up to go shopping and buy some chocolates, which he gets to eat like once a week. Lah. So this will be his reward for not disrupting his classes. Uh, she found out that uh, the mother actually tried to send student S for OT before but this did not help lah, with his difficulties and um, one other thing is uh, I think above here we mentioned that he gets hyperactive after breaks and recess 
So we thought that food intake would be a problem. So uh, they actually worked with the mother to help control um, student excess sugar intake in school and at home. So maybe to help reduce like hyperactivity. Uh, I think this is also a very important aspect is that um, she actually tried to talk with student S to get the student's perspective. Um, but student S was unwilling to share about his difficulties. Lah. Maybe because he's uh, eight years old, but maybe because also he was uncomfortable. Yeah, but yeah, I think this is very important lah, to try and get the students' opinions on their own difficulties. So after these interventions were in place, um, the problem was still not resolved. Um, Although it did help reduce the disruptive behaviors a bit, uh, like I mentioned here, uh, he can approve for one or two hours, but yeah, the difficulties were still present. And this was especially after his meals, uh, after like recess and stuff. So after hearing about the case, the group actually discussed together to come up with like a few strategies that uh, teacher Shavina can take back and like try for themselves, try for herself. And I think that is something that we all learn from each other also. Uh. So um, at the very first, we thought that, okay, maybe it just takes some time, you know. He's eight years old, he's relatively young, new to the school system, so it might take him some time to get used to the entire routine of school and stuff, like needing to sit in his seat and stuff. Uh, secondly, uh, a lot of us mentioned task differentiation, uh, such as play, uh, crafts, flashcards, and even games. So this is trying to make the lessons more interactive for student S as well as giving him that choice of like what he wants to do so you can play to his interests. Lah. Yeah, so task differentiation. Then I think yesterday also we covered a little bit on task differentiation um, or like in terms of like the feedback, right? And like grouping the students into piles to help with task differentiation. So I thought that was a, a very useful insight following this um, discussion. Lah. Next is also sensory motor because we noted that he did have some sensory symptoms such as the floor spinning and like playing with his chair. So some of us suggested like sand play and water therapy and this is to really accommodate his sensory needs. But we also noted that maybe the school may not have like such resources lah to help with these things. So maybe need to find a bit more uh, applicable uh, situations, uh, applicable um, recommendations. Uh. And I think like we heard a few in the previous groups just now. Uh, I think this is also another very important point is uh, playing to the child's strengths and weaknesses. So uh, Ms. Shavina noted that he likes food, he likes movement, he likes play. So we will try to include this in the intervention strategies that we implement, such as the rewards and movement breaks. So since he likes food, maybe like you can give him food as a reward as that would like motivate him more. And since he prefers movement and play, uh, maybe movement breaks in between lessons like when the lessons are transitioning, that would really help as well. So a little bit more on the movement break. Miss um, Shavina mentioned that the school actually has this brain gym at the start of the day. Um, and that helps. So maybe we can like think of incorporating brain gym throughout the day as well for the child. Uh, musical and dance is really just to get him moving, um, get him to like tire himself out in a way and like get him like get the uh, regulation out and so he can focus on the class. Yeah, so this would be more socially acceptable ways to regulate his hyperactivity lah, rather than him disturbing his friends. And you can also involve the whole class, you know, uh, when you play the video for the dance and brain gym, you can get everyone, I think everyone every now and then can use that, like a good break to just stand up and stretch, you know, even us adults, right? So even more so the kids. So we noted that uh, she had a reward chart in place, um, but maybe we could shift the reward from a weekly reward to more immediate and daily rewards. So this is to really reinforce the behaviors. Lah. Like the child doesn't have to wait an entire week before he sees the fruits of his labor, but rather he can just wait till the end of the day to like reinforce that his good behaviors. Lah. So um, I think one of the concerns that was brought up was that they don't want to have uh, the child to really rely a lot on rewards because like the child will be doing it just to get the rewards and not cause of like, you know, intrinsic stuff. So uh, I think it was very important that at later stages, we should fade off the rewards. So maybe instead of once every day, you can do it like once every three days and then eventually once every week. And hopefully uh, once we, he has built up the skills, uh, you don't even have to reward him like, to, for him to show the behaviors. Because uh, I think every child does want to learn like, if they have the skills and like to do it. And this is really to help in uh, promote independence. Like. 
So like, uh, yeah, to re- reduce his reliance uh, um, on the teachers, on the reward charts, and really to help him self-regulate by himself. So to touch on further on this self-regulation, um, it will be something such as uh, the deep breathing exercises that if he gets a little bit too excited, he can just take a step back and just like breathe, you know, and like try to calm himself down. And I think that this movement break is also can be considered as a self-regulation, right? Because like it helps him adjust himself to be ready for class. So uh, there's this thing that I learned as well in this week, actually, before I attended this course, was this thing called zones of regulation. So it's actually a class-wide or individual intervention to help promote students self-regulate. Uh, so I think a lot of it has been covered in batches throughout the other presentations, such as self-awareness. I think one of the groups just presented on helping the students identify when they're happy, when they're excited, when they're sad and stuff. So this is similar. So you teach the students how to identify their emotions. And I think it's important to use a language that they can understand. So maybe some students cannot really understand like the words like anxious or something. So you want to give them like things that they can understand, like in the case of student S, this is only eight years old. Maybe you can say, I'm feeling blue. It's like when he's sad. I'm feeling green when he's like ready to study. He's feeling yellow when he's like a bit anxious and he's feeling red when he's a bit angry. So self-awareness. Okay, uh, Shafi, for this, mm. right, for this blue, green, yellow, red, uh, it has, the student S has prior knowledge. Uh, yeah, so we need to teach him how to do it. Lah. Yeah, correct. Ah. Yeah. So I think one thing about this sort of regulation is you really need to teach them these skills. Like mm. on how to self-identify, self-monitor, and then self-regulate. Yeah. So once um he's aware of his own emotions, like what his different emotions are, we can try to teach him how to monitor his emotions throughout the day. So maybe you can give him like a chart or something that okay, at for English lessons, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling blue. Okay, maybe we need to try and get you to the green. But maybe for math, oh, I'm feeling green, I'm ready to learn, you know. So help him monitor his emotions throughout the day. And the very last step, once he knows what his emotions are and he can monitor his emotions, you can help him to self-regulate, which is try to bring him to a state where he's ready to learn. So like for example, if he's feeling yellow, like he's very excited, you try and teach him like deep breathing techniques or movement breaks that he can do on his own to help him get ready to learn. Yeah, so this is a very progressing to independence kind of strategy. Yeah. So I think that brings us to the end of my sharing. Yeah, if any of the group mates would like to share anything else or any questions from the floor, yeah, we'll be willing to take them. Thank you very wonderful, much. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Afik. Any additional comment or feedback from the group members of group two? Yeah, so I, 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 yeah, I quite love like such a like emotional view, right? And so like scroll down to like self abandoned, right? It's like such a like emotional views, right? So 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 awareness. Sorry, uh, I didn't quite catch. Was it a question or or is it like a comment that you like the? entire emotional view emotional take on this uh, intervention strategy yeah such that like um i quite love um the idea so awareness like emotional view right oh okay so this is your, uh, your comment yeah mr chai patana All right, thank you, Mr. Chai Patana. We lost him there. Okay, uh, any more feedback or comment for group two? Great uh, job, hello. very good presentation. Yes, hello. Uh, I'm teacher Eliza from Malaysia. Mm-hmm. Okay, I would like to add uh, some uh, additional for the sensory room. Mm-hmm. We said put a trampoline or uh, any sort of music. Uh, like us, we can uh, put there a waiting uh, blanket. This I was try at my uh, school before this mm. for the tantrum student. They're having a tantrum. So we put there inside the sensory room. 
So mm. inside the sensory room, we also provide a blanket, a heavy blanket to calm uh, the, uh, them with, uh, when they have a tantrum or uh, hit themselves. Mm, okay. So just a suggestion, additional suggestion uh, mm. that we can put inside the sensory room beside the trampoline or sorting music. Mm. Okay, we also can put a, a blanket. For At what age, teacher Eliza, what age is suitable for the heavy blanket uh, approach to be used for the, Sorry? Age, the age of student that is appropriate? Age. Hmm. To use this heavy blanket method for in the sensory room, uh, for a primary school it's also can, and the secondary uh school is also can. Hmm. Uh, the heavy blanket to uh to cover them when they have a tantrum, then uh they can calm them down when uh they try to hit themselves. I see. But this is uh, depends on the situation. It hmm. cannot be controlled. <laughs> Sometimes cannot be controlled also. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miss Elisa. I'm Sharmina here. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we have, um, you know, some sort of uh, limited resources. We don't have sensory room in our school. So, uh, yeah, even I've heard about this uh, snooze learn, right? Snooze yeah. Learn. Uh huh. So it's a kind of sensory room too, right? But mm. yeah, since we have the limited resources and limited uh, space, we yeah, couldn't. <laughs> we couldn't uh, build yeah. a room for. I understand that not 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 all uh, school can provide a sensory room, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but we can looking forward for for that. Uh, so for the um. Every not not every school can provide that. Yeah, but anyway, thank you for the suggestion. I'll take take it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Welcome. A really great suggestion, there, teacher Eliza. Thank okay, you. Um, thank you so much. Okay, there's no more feedback or comment or suggestion for group two. Let us give a round of applause to group two there in our chat box. Great job, group two. Thank you. Thank you. Afi, I still need you. Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Afi, let's move on to the next group. Group number... One. <laughs> group one. Are you ready, group one? All right. Raise your hand. Turn on your camera. Group members. Okay, there you go. Miss Yip Mayen. Ah, group one. Who's presenting for group one? Good luck, group one. Yes, good luck. Wow, time really flies. It's almost 12.30 already. Okay. I think we should start already with group one. All right, so because we have, uh, we have six more groups to present. Okay, let's go group one when you're ready. You want to share? You want to share your slides or your document? Who's going to start presenting? Who's going to share? One oh, Mr. Chan, Mr. Chan. Okay, all right, Mr. Chan. Oh, there you go. All right, your time starts now. Good luck, group one. You please turn on your microphone. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm hello. Mr. Chan. I'm from uh. 
Please speak louder, please. We can't hear you. <coughs> or put your mouth closer to the microphone. Okay, so I, I cannot open the camera because the, the Wi-Fi here is quite weird. Mm -hmm. It's okay. All right. You can just go ahead. We have... Mm. So this is uh these are uh, our group members. Okay, so uh, the problem here is uh our problem we are focusing on uh, uh the problems. Okay, one of the student a student with a uh, intellectual disability is always sleeping during the lessons. Uh, so that is our challenge. Okay, uh then step one uh uh step of planning. Uh, step of planning, uh. so we are using the anecdote uh, form to record uh, the data. Uh. So we are record uh, the, the form in, uh, included the date, the time, the location, and the incidents. Uh. Uh, every day uh, we rec uh, record uh, uh, the duration of time for the students uh, who are going to sleep. Uh, and then after that, uh, we also getting information uh, by interviews uh, their parents. Uh, so we want to find out uh, the time to bed, uh, his diet, uh, the physical activity, uh, and then his routine of activity. Okay, after that, uh, we come up the interventions. Uh, uh, so, for example, like number one, we give uh, him a reward. Uh, for example, uh, we uh, give him a sticker, a uh, sticker, an emoji sti uh, sticker. Uh, uh, let's say uh, he didn't sleep uh, for a particular section of time. Uh, so, for example, 15 minutes, uh, we give him a sticker. Uh, so uh, he can accumulate the stickers to get the grand uh, rewards. Okay, so this is number one. And number two, uh, fun learning games. Uh, so uh, to avoid the student to get sleep, so we can carry out fun learning games. Uh, or group games uh, uh, together uh, with his friends. Uh, so to avoid him to uh, go in sleep. Okay, and then number four, okay, suggestions uh, to the parent to create a de dependable and consistent bed routines to prevent, uh, to prepare themselves for deep sleep. <clears throat> and then number five, to create activities. Uh, so for example, uh, singing. Uh, before the lessons uh, to avoid the student getting sleep. So the student get more interesting uh, and then uh, it can help uh, the students uh, not going to sleep. Okay, and then number, number six, we need to change his, uh, him, uh, sorry, uh, his uh, habits. Uh, instead of uh, sleeping during uh, study time, and then let him uh, sleep another time. Uh, uh, so means that we are, we ask the parents that uh, we work together with the parents so they uh, we change the sleeping time for him uh, And then number seven, play brain gym video and conduct all the students uh, to do together. Mm. Okay, number eight, exercising regularly and avoid daytime naps. Mm -hmm. uh, number nine, uh, light therapy. Number 10, outdoor activities. Mm. Uh, I think my group member can help me uh, to elaborate more uh, about uh, the, the intervention. Uh. Okay, okay, so I just mm -hmm. go to number three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this problem we hope that can be solved like within three months. Uh, the challenge we can uh, uh, solve this problem within three months. Okay, uh, the cooperation between parents and teacher play the important roles to implement strategies. 
Hmm. Okay, and then number four suggestion here. Uh, create sleep charts to monitor, uh, monitor and avoid the student sleep in class and home. Mm -mm. Okay, and then uh, provide enough sleep time at home with complete uh, completed on new uh, nutritional interventions to improve sleep for students with intellectual disability. Mm, uh, so we also yeah. uh, focus on diet. Sorry for that. Um, that's, uh, that's great. Okay, so uh, I think my group member can elaborate more. Lah, huh? Okay. Okay, so that's all for me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chan. Uh, if there's no additional from the group members, I would like to move on to the next group. Do, uh, anyone here would like to add? Uh, sorry, can I add in something? Yeah, sure, sure. Good afternoon all. I am Ip Megan from Kelantan. Okay, may I can elaborate for the intervention, which is the part of the... The part one, suggestion to parents to create a dependable and consistent bed routine, which to prepare themselves for their deep sleep. As, as we know that intellectual disabilities is a term of use when there are limits to a person's ability to learn at an expected level and functions in daily life. As a teacher, we must we not only teaching in schools, but we also to cooperation with parents, which is to to solve this problem which the students sleeping in schools. So for the subject for this suggestion, and also can cooperate with we can create we can suggest to a parents which is to create a dependable consistent bedtime routine mm -hmm. and pair and also we can pair it with a simple supported schedule mm -hmm. which means a children with the a children with a development dis disabilities is strict on consistent routines in the school mm -hmm. and community settings. The same strategies which use those environments which is school and we can cope we can cooperate with parents, which is suggestion to create a dependable, consistent bedtime routine, mm. and can also teach parents to pair it with a simple supported schedule. With using a visual schedule with symbols may increase their children's independence before that before the bedtime, and also will calm their mind and body and prepare themselves with a deep sleep so they may have a good sleeping at home and they will focus on practices when, when the teacher is teaching them. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was great uh, insight there, Ms. Yip. Okay, so we like to move on to the next group. Thank you so much, Group 1. Have of applause to Group 1. Congratulations. Great sharing there from group one. Okay, Mr. Afik, let's move on to the next group for today. Okay. Next group that we present is group eight, seven, seven. All right, group seven, where are you? Thanks, Mr. Afik. Okay, group seven, members of group seven, please raise your hand, turn on the camera. Okay, Mr. Kwanjai. Hello. Masuraya, Noroshima, Roini Hasliza. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello, yes, you may proceed. Well, yes, um, okay. Yeah, you can start sharing, yeah? Yes, can I share? Oh, Miss Shamila, mm. you are, you are a spy, spider woman. You're upside down. <laughs> <laughs> spider woman. 
All right. So, okay, your time starts now. Good luck. Um, thank you. Um, representing group seven. Okay. Sorry if my voice, my English may not be very good. Or, okay. No. Um, okay. Amy. Okay. Yes, this is my group seven members. Okay. Some group members may be able to add uh, some details. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Go on here. Yeah. And I start now? Yes, please. Okay, okay I present briefly. Um, because uh, from this listening to each group, I think it's so good, and I think there is a common point. Uh, this uh, uh, this by different social days, uh, culture, nations, blah blah blah, language, but the characteristic of teacher and um, or of autism children or uh, different types of special education needs. Mm. Okay, in, in my group problem about children kids, seven-year-old boy and severe autism. He doesn't have any verbal and he will use some nonverbal communication like a kid, teacher or friends and he will upset if we change the teacher or specific subject and sometimes self-harming and tantrum like scream and lack of eye contact mm. okay and and this one as a special education teacher need uh, maybe have these problems like cooperation with parents right and some inclusive programs in school are sometimes not success because um like me, mainstream teachers or special education teachers uh, will will find student don't student and parents don't understand or other teachers don't understand special needs. Mm. Yes, and lack of modified tools to teach. Next one, and this is group seven steps. <laughs> okay, step one. Dealing with the problems and identify specific problems uh, like explore frequency and timing of behavior, like uh, uh, SOS, <laughs> make a face time with the missing teacher or use symbol like X, X cross or yes symbol at teacher photos. Okay, and step two, do the IEP. Or in Malaysia, have RPI, right? Mm -hmm. By multidisciplinary teams like uh, doctors, teachers, special modifications, or ABA program like uh, sessions in the morning mm -hmm. from Miss Sandoshi. And four, do activities that are useful instead. Uh, many, um, Many members in my group uh, give any, many, so many, many ideas, mm -hmm. like uh, do an activity by getting the students eye contact, like a face painting or cardboard or flashcard mm -hmm. near, near teacher's face, and adding some sensory integration, like uh, sand, play doh, or a bubble, yes. And step five, must evaluate every every time, and always um, communicate with the parents in their progress. After six months and or one years, like IP program, yes. Mm. 
and last. If so, okay, must do. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> do continue program. Uh, and if fail, uh, we must identify future or uh, potential intervention. And okay, discuss with parents, teachers, and any any therapist or mm -hmm. doctor. Mm -hmm. If success, what success and what failures? Okay. Okay. Thank you. And Thank okay. You. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, and, groups. Yes, yes, sorry, yes. Sorry, you still have some more to continue, did you? Uh, others. How about uh, any others group members in like my group? Yeah. Yes. Any group members would like to add any additional comment or feedback? Because we are, our time is kind of limited right now because we still have five more groups. <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah but... Uh, uh, and if you'd like to comment or you'd like to add, you can do it in the chat box. Okay, we'll read that through later. Thank you so much, Group 7. Round of applause to Group 7. Congratulations. Well done. Now I feel let's go Thank to the you. next group. Shall we? Okay, Group 10. All right, Group 10. Your turn now, Group 10. Okay, so uh, we are representing from the group number 10. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, Diana will be responsible for uh, question number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, Yan Yan from Myanmar. And for me, um, number three, and suggestion. All right. Okay. Okay, Diana, you go okay, first. Okay, you can start now. You may start now. Thank you. Good luck. Uh, did, did, did you see my screen? Yeah, we can't see the. There's only pink, black pink right now. <laughs> black <tea. laughs> okay, again, again, again. Yeah, sure. Okay. I'm so sorry because time constraint. I had really have to like rush all the group members. I wish we can have more time. Otherwise, we can't go for our lunch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, good luck, group 10. Wow, did you know that? Thank you, did you know that? Are we okay? Did you know, Diana? Uh, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Group members of group 10. Ah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> we can see. Uh, and Yes. All right. Perfect. All right. Okay. Uh, where, where to put this one? Okay. Uh, as for group 10, uh, I will be presenting the case. Okay. So, this is uh, one of my students. Uh, he is... How to move this one? Okay. He is a boy in standard one class. Okay, uh, in his class, he got a various of types of disabilities such as ADHD, dyslexia, and speech delay. So uh, he was described as severe autistic student with non-verbal communication. Uh, he is lack of uh, social communication also, and he's quite love to being alone only. Okay, uh, one of his, <clears throat> one of his, <clears throat> uh, what is it? Oh, uh, he will be distracted by <clears throat> loud sounds. Uh, he, he, he doesn't like, he doesn't like loud sounds. And if he hear that very loud voice or, or sound, he will bite himself first on his wrist. And then after he's biting his hand, uh, I mean his wrist, he will, he will find another people to hurt after that. Okay. Uh, if he didn't find any people to hurt after that, after he's doing uh, himself, he will continuously cry like, oh, until he, he can exceed it until 12, 12 p.m. Uh, from morning until 12 p.m. <clears throat> and then uh, he, he is lack of interest in any physical activities. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, next one. So this one is will be presented by Mr. Chai. Oh, Mr. No. Yan Yan. Yan Yan, Yan, Yan please. Yan, okay, Yan Yan. Hey, sorry, sorry. 
Alamak. How? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Yan Yan, Yan Yan. I'm here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, to ensure his problem, and so we will uh, we will make a step by step planning and uh, to address his problem behavior. And so uh, for number one, um, screening by doing physical activities. And for number two, and uh, we uh, we have some factors like. Uh, we have a uh, team approach like uh, therapists and uh, teachers and to diagnose his and um, behavioral problems. And also the family is um, part of the team. And, and do multiple assessments in uh, multiple environments and, and home and school. And, and we also uh, we also have uh, we have to have enough time to get a therapy child of the learner. Mm. And we, we have to uh, assess the environment and not just the learner uh, and why, uh, why his behaviors become uh, intense or why he make an, such loud noise and so much. Mm. And also, uh, we, we can also use the checklist like social language, fine motor skills, functional behavior. Mm. And so uh, this is our step uh, to address uh, the his behavioral problems. And thank you very much. Excellent. Okay. Mm. And that's for this is my responsible for the question number three. At like the question go up if so, how if not repose the challenges intervention. Um some 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 um some some categorize not so because of her review to follow the therapy instruction given. So we did recommend that seek for consultation from outside who has the expertise such as PD, um, PD education that, that we all brainstorming already. Yeah, they quite, so this family, they quite refuse. So the first thing we, we should like, um, must be got like happen, like, uh, trust. Trust, it is a very important. So how we to engage them, how to, because that they need to open the, their own mind. Yeah. They need help. And uh, such, such as like pediatrician, um, psychologist or not, and apply behavior analysis, um, functional behavioral assessment, as it like, and modify environment and alternative behavior and reward system. Because sometimes, because she said that in her, like, in, in her classroom, it's quite diversity of like multidisciplinary, um, mau, mau, mau. Multi like multi multi dis disability. Sometimes we should like um uh gonna be uh, modify environment or not like color in the classroom and like simulate the corner or not. Yeah, and jump to the next slide. Yeah, and this is um any suggestion from to all of us from group number ten um productive strategy avoid him from loud noise as much as possible. And using like the picture, exchange, communication skill, and teacher use the body language or the gesture. And make a so cool activity by so calling his name and let him write up the can. Because um, he doesn't know about like um, name or the language. Mm -hmm. And the teacher provide additional spatial learning independently through individual learning. And discuss and with the hip parent and get help from them to know his improvements. So that 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 be quite so advantage about the it because like um it, uh, exactly when the child who got like um autism spectrum maybe sometimes they have the problem like um physical or so yeah because it's, um, we, we 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 need to check it yeah sometimes yeah that that to confirm that 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 to confirm that that gonna they happen or not. Yeah, that uh, um come to the end from the group number ten. Please feel free to ask any question. We will we mm -hmm. will try to give like my best an our best answer. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For question and comment, we can proceed in the chat box so you can answer there. There's also question for group seven. So perhaps group member seven can uh, answer the questions in the chat box. 
Okay. Oh, uh, Miss Teacher Nor Laila, you can share in the you can share with the participants. You don't have to share personally with me. You can just ask them. It's okay. All right. Now let's move on to the next group, shall we, Mr. Afik? Great job there, group 10. Group 10, let's uh, round of applause to group 10. Okay, now we have group... Oh, I missed out on that. What group was it, I think? Group 3, okay. <laughs> All right, group 3. Let's go group 3. Thank you. Uh, mm -mm. Group 3. Okay. Uh, Nimala? Can you show the screen? Zati ada, Zati, Zati. Zati, do you want to present or? Anyone. <laughs> Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, Zati will cl clarify the the whole uh, assignment later. Okay. Uh, hello, I'm Teacher Tika from Melaka, Malaysia. Uh, do you? Hello, you... good luck, Teacher. Okay, you. Uh, I'm. You have ten minutes, yeah, Teacher, to okay. present. All, all right, right. Thank right. You. Uh, we'll be fast, <laughs> fast and furious. Okay, and we'll be the uh, and I will be the representative of Group Three. Okay, first of all, I would like to apologize to all because during the the time I was rushed to the nearest clinic to get in. Uh, then I managed to zoom to go to zoom meeting lah, and contribute some some of my thought. Okay, so back to the presentation. Okay, this is a case from one of the school in Johor Bahru, Malaysia. So basically, this this uh this is a school for blind people, and they also have integrated special education program, which is known as PPKI here in Malaysia. So for, pardon for the huge wall of text uh of essay over here. Okay, uh, uh let's see. Okay, uh, problem of anyone, can you zoom zoom in so we can see it clearly? Clear, clearly, Nimala. Oops. Okay, problem or anyone challenge face as teacher of your student identification of the problem. Okay, uh, I identify, uh, identify an issue. It was when I received a seven years old people year one last year in my class. I was informed that these people didn't go to preschool earlier, earlier, and her mom, her mother enrolled her in our school, special education school. Her daughter has vision impairment, which is totally blind, unable to speak well, and love to explore. She likes to touch the thing around here and shake the things to hear the sound, and she does this repeatedly and based on my observation I made an assumption that she is having autism I asked her mother but she is not aware of it for your information her daughter was placed in the mainstream she also didn't give any response despite her name being called several times and she had the tendency to uh, cover oh, her okay. ears when the sound around her is too loud Okay, as her behavior always distract her friend from studying, I made a suggestion to the administrator to place her in the integration class, which is PPKI, uh, here in Malaysia. But me being a class teacher and the other teacher who taught year one class need to observe these people for a duration of one to three months. I also made an IEP, uh, which is individ Individualization Education some, something a program, I think, for her earlier once she, she registered in our school. Based on that, we knew that it was difficult to achieve the objective where yeah. we want her to respond uh, such uh, as uh, raising her hand. Okay, her. Speaking English is so terrible, no? Uh, I can Maybe someone is tapping for her this time. Is it? Okay, okay, never mind. Zati, can, can you do the... the, the class teacher in Malaysia. Lah. Zati, can you... Can you... Ni? Can you perhaps uh, do the, the speaking? Okay. Continue, continue, yeah. The, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will continue the, the sub number one, sub number three. Based on the IEP, we found out that the people never respond and talk. Even uh, raise hand, she never raised hand, even after so many times. And so, I had consulted with an experienced teacher in my school and told her about the people. And the people then was diagnosed as autism based on her repetitive behavior and uh, her tantrum for some times. 
and finally the expert and administrator agreed to place her in the integration class as she can and unable to follow the subject from the mainstream. And I also need to write a full report of her progress within three months to strengthen the reasons to why we should be placed, uh, why we should uh, place her there. And for the next question, which is step-by-step -step planning to address the issue, uh, we come up with the plan, which is the first one. We made the observation for three months, including the class teachers, the administrator, and also the subject teacher that taught the year one class. Yeah, that's the first. And the second, we had discussed with her parents about her behavior, uh, her identity in, in, in the school, and the way she reacts with her uh, surrounding. Okay, and the third, we, uh, the mainstream class teacher, write a report about uh, her behavior. Uh, and after that, uh, another full report before she moved to integration to integration class because uh, we need to refer the IEP first and we need to discuss with the administrator and after that uh, I have to make the full report before she moved there and after that um, she the, the children uh, the child uh, see the doctor to diagnose her disability again as uh, mentioned in her OKU card I don't know uh, in English what we call by in Malaysia, we call as uh, orang kelainan uh, upaya, uh, the short form OKU. And uh, because um, the OKU card, uh, her OKU card is being labeled as BL, which is a full visual impairment. But when we uh, see, we, when we saw the uh, her behavior, uh, while she blind and also a bit like uh, an autism characteristic, so. Uh, we think we sh uh, she should, uh, her mother should uh, consult with doctor to diagnose, re-diagnose again her disability. Maybe um, to diagnose another disability uh, other, than, uh, other than visual. Lah. And after that, um, after she has obtained the, pardon, where's the, where's the screen? Eh? Suddenly it's lost. <laughs> Where is Nimala? Can you reshare? Who removed the screen? Sorry, I, I was... <laughs> yeah, you can <laughs> just... It's okay, teacher. Just proceed, teacher. Okay. Mm -hmm. And because I I don't have the... Okay. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Atika. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, after we have the result from uh, the consultation from the doctor, mm -hmm. uh, we inform the school administrator regarding her condition after being diagnosed, and she uh, we refer her to the integration class, and we met with the class teacher there, and we make um, the mother should remake the disability card, uh, so okay, you card because uh, at the first she was being labeled as the but after the diagnosed as autism, she need to remake her disability card, which uh, might be MD, multiple disabilities, because uh, her identity was shown as a visual impairment and also uh, learning disabilities. Okay. And uh, the last one is um, the teacher should do, uh, can you scroll uh, up a little bit? The, the last one. Oh, okay. Um, and the teacher there should do a diagnostic test before continuing this integration class. Okay, for well, the number three is uh, uh, the question number three uh, about the problem. Uh, actually, the problem for this student uh, has already been solved because the doctor has diagnosed her condition as a multiple disability, which is autism and visual impairment, as I said before. And she was enrolled in the integration class, which is PPKI in recall in Malaysia. And the last one for the suggestion, uh, we, uh, the teammates, uh, had discussed yesterday uh, about the some of the suggestions we can uh, implement to this student. Uh, Atika, can you scroll? Uh, okay, thank you. All right. Okay, for the first one. Uh, we should create a classroom environment that will allow the student to be successful. 
uh, which we need to provide all the supports commonly found in the classroom of sighted students with autism and develop a schedule for the class that is as consistent as possible. Uh, such as um, the, uh, the class schedule uh, we can make uh, in the tactile form as we in the visual impairment school, uh, we can, uh, for those who can see, uh, uh, they will uh, see the schedule uh, in the form of what we call select. Uh, see, lah, we can see the, 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 the words clearly, but for the blind uh, or the, the uh, susah to talk I'm sorry, I'm so sorry because I can't recall the English word. Um, the especially the, the blind one lah, uh, we can uh, translate the schedule into a tactile form which is brain. So uh, when they want to know what the schedule, uh, what uh, what after this, what after this, what class after this, so they can uh, just drop her uh, their finger on the schedule and get to know get to know the the class after that. Uh, based on the letter lah, letter fit on the schedule. Okay, and so uh, using the tactile symbols that already existed in school, and the student also couldn't yet read her name, so I could assign the children, uh, the child, sorry, a personal tactile symbol, and the symbol will appear on all of the students' belongings next to her name in Braille. Okay, well, because we in a visual, uh, visual impairment school, we most of the uh, belongings. Uh, we label as in in a braille lah because it is easier for them to detect the belo uh, their belonging. Okay, the second one is motor skills activities such as play doh, magnetic sand, etc. etc. Uh, that uh, involve the movement of fine motor skills. We want to enhance more on their fine motor skills because uh, I found this student a bit um what we call it like a uh, she. Uh, didn't want to hold um like you know they they want they uh, she didn't want to hold a, even a small mm. thing uh like um uh, like when we when we uh, tap on the uh cellophane tape she she was like oh, oh I don't like these sticky sticky things ah uh, mm. and from there we want to uh enhance the uh, her fine motor skills uh, mm. such as uh through the motor skill activities lah. Mm -hmm. And the third one is self-management such as poetry training. Since I'm so sorry. I, I have to interrupt you there because we're out of time. Uh, okay, okay. It's yeah. okay, madam. Th thank you so much. Okay, let's leave uh, okay, our thank support you, to group three. Thank you so much, teacher. Group three, thank you. Yeah, betul. Thank you, group three, for the fast but very in-depth presentation. That's right, Mr. Afik. Okay, move on to the next group, please. We have group. You know what? Since it is lunch time, if you want to eat, just feel free to eat in front of the laptop. I'm uh, I'm not really strict on that because you know it's your break time. You can uh, as long as you're still here with us, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, now let's uh, move on to which group was that? I missed that just now. Group four. All right. Wow. Group four. Okay. Group four. Let's go. Group four. Oh, did you Masura? Oh, she starts sharing the screen when you are fast. It's my group. Okay, good luck, group four. Let's show our support to all uh, to group four now. Um, hello. Is it clear? It's clear. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, this is group four presentation. Um, Brian will continue with the first slide. Brian. Okay. Uh, good. Pleasant good noon, good afternoon to everyone. I'm, I'm Brian from the Philippines. So let me present the collaborative um, output of group four. So first question was about the problem or challenges faced as a teacher for students with special needs. So most of the um, comments that we had are more on children with autism. So, uh, one of the key studies that we put in is one of my student, which is a child with diagnosed with autism, which has a short attention span. Um, he was able to communicate using functional words, 
but cannot follow certain instructions. Next slide, please. So what are the steps that we do uh, for us to be able to ensure that we can help the child um, in, his, in developing or getting his developmental goals? First, we do a pre-assessment of the child. So we do a pre-assessment, we, we, we conduct interviews with the parents, um, conduct diagnostic assessment and class observation. Let me give you a profile of the child. The child is a five years old student who was enrolled in a different class a different school rather, for kindergarten. But the, the teacher is having problem with dealing with the child because he's dealing with 30 students. Then that's why um, they prefer or they um, transfer it to a sped, uh, special education um, school, which is in our school here in the Philippines. Now, the child is a five-year-old child. He is a verbal. He can... Use functional words like papa, mama to address the parents, pupu, wee wee, and eat. Then he stay with his grandparents. He's the only child at home. Uh, at home, most of the time, he spend his time watching the television or watching it um, using cell phone. So his attention span is less than five minutes. Um, he can focus. Uh, he cannot focus due to hand-eye coordination during the assessment. He lack eye contact. He has poor grasping skills, and can follow one-step um, instructions. The child undergone therapy, and he was diagnosed with autism. Um, based on the developmental pediatrician, he got, he undergone therapy sessions, speech session for one one session per week, and one session for occupational therapy. For the uh, creation of the individualized educational plan, so first uh, we coordinate, we do collaboration with the speech therapies, occupational therapies to have a cohesive developmental goal for the child. And then uh, what are the developmental goals that we, we already conducted? First, um, increase attention span to six to five, uh, seven minutes. Increase sitting time for 10 minutes to 15 minutes. Improve hand, handwriting skills. Increase hand-eye coordination and to follow two steps instructions. Now, in terms of parents' cooperation, we advise the parents to lessen the viewing time at home to help him communicate more with his caregivers. Since um, screen time is very important, uh, that most of the children nowadays are watching television or YouTube, uh, we we advise to lessen it so that um, they can um, more focus on the communication skill or have self-awareness with their surroundings. Then we ask the parent to communicate with the child using specific uh, words, simple words like action words. Since child um, uses hand gestures to initiate what he wants, um, I ask the parents to start using words like eat, um, what are play or get, want, just to help the child to express his feelings, to avoid um, tantrums. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, uh, improve sleeping hours because the, the child has a sleeping uh, can only sleep at least seven to eight hours a day, so. Uh, we suggest to have at least 10 or more for the child to, for the development of the brain. And let the child play with other children. Like I've said a while ago, it's, it's very important to ask the parents in terms of the settings. Setting is very important. You should have the, an overview what, what is the child doing at home? What is the environment he lives in? For you to be able to focus on the intervention that you can give to the child. Now, I ask the parents, since he is just alone and the caregiver is the grandparents, let the child to play with his cousins so that they improve his social skills and communication skills. And lastly, provide and um, provide or introduce healthy foods with the child. Nutrition is very important for the brain development. Next, uh, the slide was gone. Let me continue. Uh, next, uh, we have to capitalize on the interests 
of the child in the classroom activities. So the child is interested in playing. So we use that. We can see the slide, Mr. Brian. We can't see the slide. Uh, Ms. Masura is uh, providing the slides. Oh, okay. Okay. Ms. Masura. Ms. Masura. Yeah, we can't see this. But if can you can go slide. on, you can move on first. Let me continue. Let me continue. Because yeah. I have an unstable connection as well so that I okay. cannot share the slides. I'm at school. Ms. Masura, if you're back, can you please uh, share the screen again? Okay. Hmm. So the interest of the child is more on playing. So use that as capitalize on it for mm -hmm. learning. So um, use manipulatives that will focus on fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination, and attention span. If that child can... If you have the interest of that child, that child can focus. Mm. If that child can focus, that child can learn. Do you agree with me? Yeah. So definitely. it's very important that you have that, as well as the eye and eye hand coordination, especially when writing. The child is not um uh, uh not uh don't have eye coordination when he's writing. That's so very important to have some um activities for him to be able to focus on what he's doing. Next, um, use positive reinforcement. If the child do go use verbal phrases, um, we do we do verbal phrases, not giving certain things um, to avoid that uh, for any other um, behavior might happen or arise because of positive rewards, just verbal phrases. Next, um, communicate with them, with the child using simple words. Since um, children with autism is very um, children with autism uh, have poor communication skills, so you have to use simple words for them to be able to understand. You can use pictures uh, for instructions to increase the attention span of the learner and make structure or routine activities at school and at home. Let me give, um, let me emphasize the importance of parent cooperation. It doesn't matter. If that child has many therapy sessions, what matters most is the follow-up at home. Most of the child spend their time at home. If there is no continuity in, the, in terms of the intervention or suggestion given by the therapist and the sped teacher, it will not work. It will not work. So it's very important that the child or the, child, uh, the parent cooperate with us and provide co cohesive learning environment. Next, slide number three, Mama Sura. Challenges, so here are the challenges um, regarding with this kind of situation about the attention span. Actually, the child increased the attention span during the intervention from five minutes, it is increased with 10 to 12 minutes. Now, what are the challenges that we faced in doing the intervention? First. Uh, dealing with the change routine and take some time to adopt to new, to new things. In terms of changes routine, you just have to um, tell to the child beforehand what, what will happen. For example, tomorrow there's no, there's no class. There's a class suspension because of the typhoon. Uh, at home, you will tell your child, um, let's say, Ian, there is no class tomorrow because of the typhoon. You have to tell it immediately so that the child, there's no uh, abrupt um, behavior that happened because you didn't tell it because there's a change in the routine. Next, having difficulty in sitting during the um, class rotation, uh, classroom, um, classroom duration. Uh, you have just have to know the interest and use that and capitalize it for him, for the child to be able to focus and to learn. Easily to easily lose his attention, same, same intervention, and uh, ask the student what he feels so that you know uh, what to do and what are the other things that you might uh, give or activities that you might give to him. Thank Next. you, Mr. Brian. Mr. Yes. Brian, I'm so sorry I have to stop you there. It's okay. Yeah, uh, we are we already are out of time now, but we still have two more groups to present. Okay. So uh, let us uh, have the two groups to present, please. Thank you, group uh, four. Congratulations. Great job. Well done. 
actually all the groups they have put so much of effort on uh, we can see that in your presentation so group eight and group uh five have yet to present so in the meantime teachers feel free to have your lunch here with us let us have lunch together virtually okay group eight Group eight, congratulations, it's your turn. All the best, group eight. Okay, group eight. Okay, so sorry for taking all of your time here. But I guess this is our last day. So let's just enjoy this final day together as a big group here. Um, Madam Sohaila, please, yes. uh, may I interrupt? So yes, sure. it is uh, really appreciated. So uh, for the cohort have like the platform to like gather any presentation. For the cohort, sorry? Yeah, yeah, for like platform and the center, any presentation, you get it quite, it's really um, valuable, like brain idea and brainstorming. Yeah, we will, we will like um, send our presentation together. Oh, right. okay. Yes, we have. You can uh, upload it in our. We have received all the presentations actually. We have received yeah. everyone's presentation, group one to group ten. So yeah. you mean you want you want to share? You want to see all the presentations? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, sure, yeah. sure. We we'll share you, the link. You want to drop? You want to drop over there? Yeah. Okay, we'll share the link so you can all access uh your all everybody's Slide. presentation. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Okay, Paharisha, nanti share the link ya, Paharisha, for all the presentation. So, Teacher Imadila, seorang sahaja ke? Is she alone? To present for group eight? Okay, unstable internet connection. Yeah, it's okay. But the, the material is the material not with me. Maybe some other of our friends. Ah, okay. <coughs> How about group five? Maybe group five can present first. Yeah, sure, sure. We are waiting. Okay, Teacher Imadila, we wait for group five first. Yeah, Teacher Imadila, then you can sort out your group. Enjoy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, Teacher Norjan. All the best, yeah. Teacher Norjan, group five. Okay. Uh, where is my group? <laughs> you can start. Because first. I can't uh, go more online. detail yes, because of I the time, find. right? Yeah. So, yes. oh, you, where is the uh, the group five? Yeah, coming, coming. Okay, you, yeah. you may start, madam. Yes. You may start presenting so that uh, uh, I need mm -hmm. I need uh, Nazri to show the slide for me. Nazri, where are you? Uh, I can't raise my hand. It's Mahani. It's Mahani. Yes, I have <laughs> no icon. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, it's Mahani, yeah. Nazreen? Nazreen having a, a slide? Teacher Lee? Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. I hope all the groups are our group member here. Okay. Good job. Okay. Good luck. Group okay, five. Can, can uh, Nazreen, can you enlarge it a little bit? Uh, okay. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm uh, Norjan, and my group, mem uh, my group member all, if anything, if you all want to add, you may. Okay, um, Okay. this is the assignment of uh, the training workshop. Lah. Case study, child name and sex male, age six years old. Okay, okay. this is the case from teacher Isma Hadi, is it? Okay. She she's the one that brought up this case whereby in her class she facing a, 
a problem and uh, with one of the boy. Okay, child X is a six years old Malay boy. He is a verbal child. He stay with his family with two siblings and the and the parents. Okay, next. Okay, this is what uh, teacher Ismahadi brought out, child X behavior. Uh, she is unable to follow instruction whereby if teacher, uh, if uh, this, uh, the teacher said that, okay, you may sit down, she is unable to follow, she will do differently, she will walk. And if uh, the teacher said you, uh, you have to do this, uh, you have to do coloring, you have to do uh, a reading, or she also won't follow the instruction. And she's not able to focus during the group activity. So in according to uh, teacher Ismahadi, the, uh, the children, she has 25 children in the group. Is it correct, teacher? Yes, yes. Yeah, 25 children with one of the child who have difficulty. Okay, and she doesn't know what is the problem of the child. Okay, and of course, for the child with the special uh, with special needs children, you are unable to put the child in a big group. Okay, at least uh uh, five to six children will be okay for them. They will be, even though the focusing is not there, at least with our verbal prompting, our uh, for, uh, help, they will be able to focus. So, and according to her also, she, uh, he, uh, the boy have daydreaming. Daydreaming means uh, uh, once a while in the, uh, when the teacher teach, he will be out of his focus. He will be uh, dreaming by himself. So the uh, according to her also attention span will be five to ten minutes only, and uh, he also play by himself. He didn't mix with anyone. He he preferred to be by himself. He's in his own world. It is more to the autism. Even though they didn't go for the uh, more uh, uh, more therapy uh, uh, to see the doctor to see the specialist. From what we see is maybe. For me, uh, maybe he has a very mild autism. Okay, next. Okay, uh, this uh, uh, teacher is uh, teacher is smart. Said that the child X cognitive uh, unable to read simple words. Even though she give a simple word like bola, buku, she, he is unable to read, and he's good in recognition alphabet. Okay. Uh, able to recognize pictures in Bahasa Melayu only, but not in English. Uh, able to recognize number to 100. Looks like he's, uh, he is uh, very good in numbers. Uh, for the card encounters, he's able to count 1 to 20. Maybe we doesn't know if it's a road memory or he can recognize properly. Okay, Understand a simple question from teacher. It's a very simple, short uh, question. Uh, he can, but unable to answer concrete question. Concrete question, uh, question means uh, maybe it's a long uh, sentence, right? Uh, a long one. Is it correct, uh, teacher Isma? Uh, yes, especially uh, in science. Yeah, a long one is like, like uh, 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 please go there and take the ball. Uh, maybe the child unable to perceive, unable to receive the message from what you, see, uh, uh, you say. Maybe you can uh, cut it uh, short, you know, cut it short and uh, you can, you can, you cannot do it at a uh, far from the, this child. You have to go near and you must talk to, to the child. Then he will be focused to you. If you go uh, very far from him, he won't be able to listen and he won't be able, he won't have uh, eye focusing. Okay. Um, Unable to recognize danger. Okay, Ma, uh, okay. This I would like to uh, elaborate a little bit. Unable to recognize danger means uh, that day, teacher Isma did uh, teach the child uh, to cross the road. Okay, when he he she said that when you want to cross the road, you have to look left and right. Correct. Then uh, in one, uh, one incident that uh, maybe teacher Isma doesn't know. Uh, Teacher is not taught that all are the same, and even though uh, she detect the same uh, some uh, uh, what problem in this child, uh, you need to learn more about this child, right? So we we cannot blame you, teacher Isma. Okay, you need more knowledge about this uh, child. So uh, uh, one incident whereby the the children fathers 
the children. Uh, I think the children's father is it. Yes. Ah, uh, the children's father waiting, and teacher Isma want to teach them. So other children, a normal child, they when they cross, they look left and right. But come to this boy, she didn't look left and right. She will just go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's a very very dangerous. From my ah. Uh, Uh, my side, I would like to su- uh, to advise and suggest that uh, next time, you know, uh, for this boy, if you have a uh, special child in your class, you know, uh, so you must teach uh, separately and uh, you have to hands on, you have to take the child to the road and you must show the child this is road and it is very dangerous. The car is passing by and uh you you have to look left and right not only once many many times it can be one year it can be two years okay uh next next teacher okay okay problem challenges faced by the teacher uh not able to focus during group activity okay this is the big problem that the teacher isma had uh, isma uh, uh, facing and she she did say that to, to us in the group member she said that she's very frustrated she's not satisfied because others can listen and follow the instruction but not uh, this boy because she's more she want this boy to participate in the activity next Miss Madam Norjan, yeah, yes. uh, I've I've been uh, told to like uh, stop this session already because the teachers uh need some break. I'm sure all of you are tired since morning, right? Uh, but uh, we have received feedback from Prof Santoshi with all of your presentation because she had uh your presentation she had received them we shared with her so she had provided the feedback. And if you can go to the Google link that Pamastura has shared in the chat box. Deepa Masura will share again the Google link. So you can see all of the feedback there from Prof. Santoshi on all of your um, presentation, on, oh, sorry, on all of your content. Okay, and as for the top five groups, we have already decided based on yesterday's group discussion. So that we will announce later. So I guess everybody has been working so hard and we can see tremendous effort from everyone here. Let's give a round of applause to group five. Group, all the groups, group one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Congratulations. All of you have made it and of you presented so well. Thank you so much. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, I understand that we are all eager and enthusiastic to share, but due to time constraint, we have to take a break. Please also be reminded uh, to come back at two, come back at two, right, for the next session with Dr. Tan. Uh, we, Puan Mastura has emailed everyone Dr. Tan's uh, content, all right, so you please refer to your email, you may download it if you want. So uh, again, my apologies for our shortcomings uh, on the time constraint, the due to time, uh, we, we, we really apologize for that. Uh, congratulations again to everyone represented and uh, we'll see you later at two. Oh, two, two thirty. Okay, we'll come back at two thirty. Okay, we'll come back at two thirty. Okay, Doctor Tan has just uh informed our uh, senior saying that we'll come back at two thirty. So I'll see you later at two thirty. Yes, two thirty. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, happy lunch. Okay, I'm so I'm so sorry to all the groups who did not present uh did not finish their presentation. I'm so sorry. I know you guys have put so much of effort, but the the time the time the time is very limited on our side here thank you so much i'll see you later bye take care
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Doctor. Okay. Hi, Doctor Tan. Good afternoon, Doctor Tan. Hi, Doctor Tan. Hello, good afternoon and welcome back to the final session for today. Uh, but before I hand over the session to Dr. Tan Chi Soon from Singapore, I would like to announce the top five groups for this training session. Okay, for your information, it is very hard for the team here to decide on who the uh, top five best groups are because uh, during your presentation earlier, everybody was so enthusiastic and everybody presented so well. Uh, we can see such dynamic group uh, teamwork there. So it was very hard for us here in Senior Sen to make the decision, but the decision has to be made. And so now I would like to announce the top five groups and show the certificate. All right, room two. Congratulations to room two. Room two, are you there? Congratulations, room two. And we. this is just for information. This is based from yesterday's discussion because we had a few spies going in the room in and out to look for the uh, discussion. It was uh, to see whether it was uh, uh, proactive. So that was how the decision was made. Okay. And so the next one is room four. Congratulations, room four. Top five discussion group for today's uh, this training session. Room five, we have room five also. Congratulations, room five. Yay, congratulations. Room seven, room seven, congratulations. And last one, room 10. Room 10, congratulations, room 10. And to all the other groups, you guys are amazing too. But of course, we, it's so hard for us to choose this five. Now, yes, two, four, five, seven, and ten. Congratulations and well done. Also, congratulations to other groups who are also showing great enthusiasm and fruitful discussion throughout this training session. Now, I would like to introduce our speaker for the next session, Dr. Tan Chi Soon. Let's give a round of applause to Dr. Tan Chi Soon a senior lecturer from National Institute of Education, Singapore. Hi, Dr. Tan, how are you? Doctor, you're still muted. Uh, Mr. Eddie, can you please help unmute Dr. Tan's microphone there? One moment, please, Dr. Tan. Okay, Dr. Tan. yes, Hi. I'm now on. Thank you very much, Ms. Suhala. So very good to hear all of you. I'm I hope you had a good lunch and it sounds like you had a good time working together. Yes, they yeah? did. Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Tan, uh, we, I can't really see the below part of your face. Okay, so let me try. Adjust your camera a little bit. Is it a bit better now? Yeah. Ah, okay, better. okay. You can see that yeah, beautiful so I try to do the, I try to sit up a bit also so you can <laughs> see me better. Okay, I'm really glad to see all of you. I hope you're all you know, had a good break and now you're ready for the next session. All right. Um, so today my session is about um, screening, but in the, ah, ha, ah, yes. All right, screening, but in the area of reading. 
So I'm not quite sure how many of you are involved in reading, but I think this is a very important area. So I'm going to just start my uh, screen sharing, okay? If you... Okay, I'm going, yes. Dr. Uh, Tan, uh, yes? for information, I have to leave now for a meeting. Sure. Uh, if there's anything, you can uh, communicate with Mr. Rusnedi, Mr. Eddie. Mr. Eddie is here. Okay, okay. I'll see you later at the time. Have fun, okay. Larry and John. Thank you very much. All right. Just give me a minute. My PowerPoint seems to have disappeared, but I'll look for it and uh, get back to it again. Okay. All right. I'm going to do it just a short intro. Yes, this is here. Maybe can someone... Okay, can you see my slides? Can everyone see my slides? Yes, okay, okay. You, okay, good. You. All right. So it's about reading for uh, reading streaming students for reading difficulties. I think all of us as teachers, we know lah. You know, reading is a very important. And uh, because when children come to school, the first thing they need to do is they learn to read. So I've been I've been working with students with reading difficulties for quite a number of years now. All right, and um, I found that. And even in Singapore, all right, quite a number of a lot of our students actually uh, are being referred to in the area of uh, having uh, maybe perhaps dyslexia. All right, so I'll talk about a little bit more about that. And after that, after they have learned how to read, the next thing is they have to, they need to learn to, they need reading so that they're able to learn. So whether and usually that's around primary three or primary four, all right, students are then required to use that learning to be able to access, let's say, science or social studies or, uh, or mathematics or, you know, all these other subjects need, it works on the assumption that you know how to read. So you know that reading is a very basic skill. And uh, for in different countries, all right, the numbers, uh, vary, but usually there is quite a sizable proportion of our students, all right, who go to school who struggle with reading disability, and and among these students with difficulties with learning disabilities, specifically in the area of reading, about eighty percent of them, all right, with reading with learning difficulties, actually have this problem with reading. So can you imagine? If you're you're a child, right, and you go to school, and you have this disability, right? And not not only can you not learn, all right, can you not read, but you have problems learning as well. So here, um, in Singapore at least, all right, uh, we have we have services where we uh, students are referred to the educational psychologist or the school psychologist to see whether the students indeed have a reading difficult disability. But the problem, I don't know whether your faces in your country, but uh, in Singapore, the problem is the number of psychologists who can do this, all right, through schools is actually a very small number, all right? So there's always, and I used to be a uh, serve, I go to schools and I uh, go there, you know, a few times a week to different schools, all right, each each week. And then I always have a long, the teachers will have a long queue to say, you know, I want to refer this student, I want to refer that student. So there's really this gap between, all right, the number of psychologists who can do this job of diagnosing students, all right, and actual uh, the uh, uh, and actual students that we are able to support. So there is uh, this gap between the demand and the actual resource available. And part of this is because I'm um, not sure whether you're familiar, but when I, as a school psychologist, all right, when I'm trying to assess whether a, a child has a reading disability, um, the old method, all right, this is a traditional method. I will have to find out what is the IQ and see whether that, and then I will also have to test them on, let's say I'm trying to find out whether they have a problem in reading disability to ask them to do some reading tests. All right. So I want to find whether there's a gap between the IQ score and their reading score. All right. And there must be a big enough gap 
All right, the gap must be between these two scores. So let's say the IQ score is 100 and the reading score is 68. Ah, then I will say, okay, the gap is big enough to say that, yes, this child probably has a disability. All right, has a reading disability. But if the gap between these two, the IQ score and the reading score is not big enough, I cannot give the diagnosis. All right, so this, this has actually posed problems. Uh, uh, using this traditional method. All right, so because sometimes uh, if you just look at in terms of the students' scores, just by IQ scores and reading scores, uh, we don't really, you know, the, the other question we have not answered is maybe the child hasn't had enough reading all right, instruction. They can't read not because they have a disability. But they can't read. Maybe, all right, they haven't had, we haven't taught them how to read. They haven't had enough chance to learn how to read. So that's one problem, all right? So this is one problem that uh, we, we cannot, we have to, we suggest that maybe we have to find another way of teaching the students. Then remember, just like I mentioned, all right, to give a diagnosis of a reading disability, there must be enough big a gap between the IQ score and the reading score. If the gap is not big enough, I cannot give a diagnosis. But usually for this gap to be big enough, all right, there's, it, they have to wait for a few years. Usually this gap can only be seen when the child is in about primary two or primary three, which means we have to wait until they don't do well enough in reading before we can give her the diagnosis. So the problem with this method is that you have to wait to fail, all right? And the other problem is a lot of these assessments, all right, the IQ or reading assessments, they do not really tell me, all right, how, how okay, let's say the teacher gets the report from me. They can, it doesn't really tell me, how do I then help the student, which is what, he just want to know, right? I know that this child, so okay, if I know this child has a reading problem, but what do I do to help to support the student? All right. And therefore, um, I it's not very helpful in that way. Lah, huh? so, so the question now is, can there be another method? All right. So this, this is where I, I want to share with you just as an idea that there's this thing called a response to intervention framework or approach, all right? This is, I'm going to use it called the RTI approach. So this RTI approach uses the idea that we don't want to just wait until the child fail, then we give them help. Can we give them help as early as possible, even before they fall too far behind? All right, so this is called response to intervention. And this approach can be applied both in the academic system, all right, in other words, it can be used to help children with reading problems or mathematics problems, and also for children with behavior problems, all right? So as you can see, there are usually three tiers. This tier one, Tier two and tier three. All right. So, um, so just to I will I'm explaining all this because I want to focus today on this thing called universal screening. So I'm going to teach you how to use a tool so that you can screen all your children. All right, using universal screening with very simple tools. All right. So the idea is that if you can screen all your children, then you can know who are the ones who need help and who are the ones who don't need help, all right? So along with this idea of response to intervention, all right, what is the good thing about response to intervention? Okay, it is, the idea is that we don't wait for the child to fail. Remember now, I talk about the IQ achievement discrepancy, all right, to get, to be able to diagnose the children, there must be a big enough gap between the reading and the IQ, but for re response to intervention, no, you don't have to wait, all right? You can provide the support as early as possible. 
And so that we can ensure that reading, struggling readers have can receive high quality instruction. All right. So don't, because in, I don't know whether in, in some countries, all right, because we have very little limited uh, resource in terms of special needs teachers. All right. And these special needs teachers usually only support students with a diagnosis. Right. So the old system is you have to wait for a diagnosis of dyslexia before you are given special education support. But for RTI, you do not need that. The idea is as early as possible, if I see the child struggling, after I screen the, ch the child, the school, the, all the students, I screen and I see this, there are this group of children that have difficulties, I can provide support as soon as possible. So we don't wait for the child to fail. All right. Uh, maybe I, okay, I'll, I'll just go on a little bit and then I'll stop for a while. Huh? So the, these are the different components of RTI, all right, where you provide instruction, good quality instruction at tier one. I'll show you where tier one is. Then uh, you provide different levels of intervention. The more needs a child has, the more intensive you give the support. Then, this is because you're able to screen all students, all right? You screen all students, you're able to sort out who are the ones who are very serious and need a lot of help, who are the ones only at some risk but not very high risk, all right? And in, in addition, actually, this system also allows you to do what you call progress monitoring, now, this idea of progress monitoring is, let's say you screen the students, you know that there's this group of students, all right, who are struggling readers. Then you start doing an intervention. Now, very often we will say we just do a pre and a post. January we start and then we do a post maybe in June, all right, after six months. But the, the, the risk with that kind of system when you do a pre and a post is that what happens is at the end of six months, when you have done six months of intervention, and then you realize, and then the assessment comes out, the post-test shows that the child didn't show any improvement. Then we have wasted six months, you know? So the idea of progress monitoring is that if we can find a way, all right, of testing the child very, uh, not big tests, but small, using very simple, small tests, we can measure them regularly. When they are not making enough progress, we can see maybe we need to change our strategy. Or maybe we need to change the number of students in that group. All right. But today I will not cover on progress monitoring or database decision making because today our focus is on universal screening. All right. So let's talk. I'll talk a little bit more about screening. Okay. But before we do that, remember I talked about. In the earliest slide, I said that um, we increase the intervention. The intervention becomes more intensive as the needs increase. All right. So this is what we mean. This is what I mean. In the first tier, all right. Usually, this would be about eighty percent of our students who don't really have a problem. So I color them as green. Huh? So there are no problems. You don't have to worry about, and they can continue with the uh, main curriculum. But then the second tier, then maybe have a smaller group of students, about twenty percent, where they need some support, but they are not. Their problem is not so serious. All right. So uh, we still provide, but we provide it in small groups, all right? In small groups, maybe about five to eight students, all right? But in any, in any school, we will always have this small group of students for about 5% who will need intensive support, all right? Who we will need to give them maybe not in such, maybe not even five or eight students. We may need to be they may need to be in smaller groups in terms of maybe three to five students. All right. So this is the intensive support. All right. So that's why, in other words, as we go up the tier, all right, the needs of the students become more and more serious. 
All right, that means they have more and more difficulty reading. Therefore, our to match their needs, we must match it according to intensity. All right, so intensity can be in terms of maybe in more frequent. All right, instead of um, seeing them once in uh, once a week, maybe the in, in uh, the intervention can be done three times a week or four times a week. Okay, so the frequency can increase. Or the duration, instead of doing for uh, half an hour, maybe your intervention needs to be longer, about 45 minutes. All right? Or it can be in terms of the group size. Instead of having them in a group of eight students, maybe we have to reduce the group size to about three students, for example. Okay, so this is the idea of response to intervention where you have different tiers, all right? Uh, the lower tier, that means tier one, not serious. They don't have a lot of problems. So we can leave them alone and they can continue with our usual regular class instruction. Tier two, their problem is a little bit more serious, all right? And therefore, we can provide them in small groups. And tier three, they have quite a lot of problems and therefore we need to give them more intensive. But to figure out where, where our students are at, we must have some way of assessing them, right? Uh, so that's where the universal in, uh, screening come in. Uh, huh? But I will explain, okay, so at this point, I just recap. All right, so tier one, these are students, these are general students, all right? They, are, they don't have much problem they can receive instruction in the general education setting. If it's a tier two, all right, they are below the other students, all right, what they call below benchmark, for example. So they may need additional support in small groups. So maybe four to eight students, all right. And then tier three, uh, these are the ones who are really, all right, not receiving, not doing very well. And maybe they have gone through tier two, they're still not making enough progress. All right, and then they may need even more intensive instruction. So maybe then the, the, the like I said, it needs to be more intensive. It can be more frequent. The sessions can be longer and the groups can be smaller. So that's tier three. Just rest a little bit to give you all some uh, thoughts about this. All right, before I break into universal screening, I'm going to just ask you all, do you have any questions about this? Because I don't want to cover any after that so much. I must also do progress monitoring, right? So you have questions, be feel free to uh, put in the chat. Any questions about the response intervention? Okay, no? Quite unclear to understand? Okay, very good. All right, so I'll move on. Because now, remember, I introduced response intervention only because I want to introduce this idea of universal screening. All right? And what is universal screening? Okay, universal screening. Let me just show you. All right, the idea of universal screening is basically uh, we're not here. Where you provide, all right, you assess all the students. Okay, well, let me explain why we want to do this in the first place. All right. If you don't have universal screening, normal way is the teacher comes, all right, as for me, I, I'm a psych I go to school, right? I'm a psychologist. Then the, the teachers, uh, some teachers will be very concerned. And they'll say, oh, okay, uh, I, I, I have this student and I think this student has reading problems, all right? So then they will refer to me. But whether the student is referred to me or not, it's only dependent on whether the teacher is concerned, all right? That means it's teacher dependent. So some teachers don't know how to look out for this problem. So... The, that means the students in that class where the teacher doesn't know, all right, will be a disadvantage. 
So then, not so fair, right? Because then as a result, some of the students will not get help. So the idea of universal screening is we try to screen every student. Now, I do not re recommend, I do not recommend universal screening for behavior problems. All right. For, but reading problems, okay, it's possible. Okay. So reading problems, it's not difficult to do. And you will get to do it actually yourself later on. Okay. So, and uh, okay, let me just show you some, some examples. All right. So what is the purpose of universal screening? It is to screen all students so that you can... Uh, you can identify at risk students early. So when you can identify them early, you can do prevention. All right. And then, all right, and you can even put them in small groups. Uh, those and if they are small students with the same kind of problems, you can put them together. So let's say students with decoding problems, you can put them together. Can uh, can read single words, you can put them together. Students with comprehension problems, you can put them together. All right. And the good thing is, once you can do the screening, all right, you can find out where their problems are. Your intervention can be specially designed to meet those problems. So like I said, you know, if the student has comprehension problems, you can put them on one group. Then you give them in comprehension strategies. All right. Another group, they can't read single words yet. You cannot put them in the same group as the comprehension group because you have different instruction. All right. So you will put them in another group. So this idea is that with the universal screening, it actually can tell you what kind of instruction or intervention you can use. And then because, and then after you have given them the intervention or instructions, you can test them again. All right, to see, oh, are they making progress or not? If they're not showing progress, maybe I need to do something different. All right, so there is this, remember just the problem with the earlier method I told you about the, IQ achievement discrepancy, the old method of assessing children, the one doesn't tell you what to do, but this method tells you what you how you can help the child. All right. Okay, so why you want to do universal screening? Okay, first of all, if let's say I'm working with a school, I want to know how many students have the problem. Is it 10 students? Okay, let's say it's a school of 100 students. Is the problem uh, 70 students or the problem, is it 20 students or is it five students? All right. So what is sex? All right. Because that will determine if I have a lot of students, I got to strategize and work differently than if I have five students. So that's why we need to we figure out what is the extent of the problem. All right. Let's say I'm a, I'm a teacher in a class. If I have 20 students huh, in my class and uh, by from the screening, it tells me that 16 of my students are still struggling readers, All right? Then it doesn't make sense for me to try to provide individual or small group intervention, right? If 16 of out of 20 of my students have a problem, let's say, with um, uh, let's say with single word reading. In the 16 out of 20, so many. I cannot find do small groups or individual. I just I'm there's only one me. Then I might as well just do a large group and teach everyone single word reading. All right. But let's say I only have two students in my class. All right who have problem with single, re re single word reading and the rest of them have no problems, then I can teach the other students as normal, all right? The other follow the syllabus. But for these two students, I may have to do extra lessons on single word reading, okay? All right, so you, you, it helps you by screening, you know where the problem is and then you can target is this a big problem where I can have to give large group instruction? Or is it only just two or three students? And then I just give, I just give my attention to this two or three students. Okay, so in other words, you can allocate your support according to the student needs and the extent of the problem. 
And then, of course, you can screen them in the beginning of the year. You can screen them in the middle of the year and then see whether your all right, support is making improvement or not. And uh, just as important as this, by doing universal screening, you don't rely on teacher referral. All right, so it doesn't, whether a student is in Ms. Tan's class or Mr. Lim's class or Mr. Uh, Azman's class, it doesn't matter because everyone will be screened. All right. Now, but I will be honest with you. Uh, all right. Sometimes some, te some schools come to me and say, Chisun, I want to screen all my students. All right. But I know that uh, the, the concern I have is you must also think after you have screened your students, all, right, all your students, do you have enough resources to support the students? You know what I'm trying to say? Because let's say you screen your students, huh? And then you know that you have many, many students. Do you have a strategy after that? All right. To be able to meet the needs of all those students who need support. If you don't, then you may have to ask yourself, maybe I don't want to screen all of them at this point. I may only uh, screen those who are whom the teachers have identified in a systematic manner. Okay, so I want you to think about this. Lah. I don't want you to like wow, create a big problem for you. Or the other way is this. Remember, you can say, all right, remember the three tiers? Yeah, this three tiers. Okay, let me just show you. Huh? Uh, okay, the other way of looking at the problem is this. Okay, I don't have, I don't have a lot of resources. Okay, so I cannot support uh, I can I can only support the tier three. Tier two, I really cannot. Uh, but at least, all right, because you have universal screening, you know who are in the tier three. You know who are the but the five percent in your school, the lowest five percent who really must have some support, and you come up with a program to meet the needs of this group. All right. And then when you have more resources in your school, maybe you can say, okay, now I am able to support this second tier as well. All right. But at least you have a way of identifying who are my really weak students. Okay. And make sure that none of the students get fall through the cracks. So here, all right. Now, but the other thing I need to share with you is this problem. When you do screening, in any test, I'm not sure whether in the other sessions you went through, in any screening, there's always this possibility that with the screening, you can have, okay, the good, what we want is we want the true positives. Lah. Remember, it's a screen, all right? When you screen a child, the screener tells you this child has a problem, all right? That means the child's failed the test, all right? Failed, don't do well in the test. All right? Therefore, and then actually the child really has a problem. Now, there are also sometimes some children who, all right, fail the test and that day, maybe that day don't feel well, you know, so didn't do well for the screening test. But actually the child doesn't really have a problem. Okay, let me just turn off this. All right, the child doesn't really have a problem. So you don't want to be giving resources to these students because then your resource, because our resources are so limited already, all right. So just bear in mind, we have the there's always a possibility in any screening test there will be what you call false positives. They look like they have a problem, but actually, all right, like I say, there could be something because of that day, you know, some of the test didn't pick it up, all right. The child not wasn't feeling too well, but actually the child doesn't have a problem. That's a false po like, false positive. The true. Uh, the false negative is another one we want to look out for. Now, this one, okay, um, it can happen also, all right, where the child, for some reason, passed the screening test. So it doesn't seem to have a problem. But actually, in reality, uh, when you test them later, they actually have really have a problem. Now, these are the false neg negatives, and we want to make sure that we, uh, we don't want to have these students, the, the risk is that if we have some students who are false negatives, they need help. But because they pass the test, we don't give them help. 
then there will be a problem because students, that means it means these students who need, really need help are not getting help. So we want to reduce the number of false negatives. The true negatives are the ones who pass the test and therefore don't need help and don't need, really, really don't need help. All right. So just know that in any screening test, all right, there will always be false, true positives, false positives, false negatives, true negatives. All right. And the, the thing is, when you want to screen, you want to make sure you pick up all the students who are at risk, right? And we want to make sure that we want to minimize the number of false negatives, all right? It means false negatives are the ones that the, somehow that screening test didn't capture them, all right? So we want to make sure that we reduce this number as much as possible, okay? Because if they, we don't reduce that problem, that means there will be at least students who really have a problem, but we're not giving them intervention. Then later on, their problem becomes worse. All right. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we don't also have too many false positives. False positives are the one who seem to have a reading problem, but actually don't really have a problem, don't have a serious problem. Okay. Because we don't want to be uh, giving them intervention because they don't really need it. All right. Then there's a reason why I'm explaining this thing about false negatives and false positives because, like I said, no screening test is perfect. None. Okay. So bear in mind when you do screening, it's only one piece of information. All right. And it cannot be your sole identification. All right. I strongly recommend that it is important that. When you are screening students, you let's say you are working with the, your, your, the, your teachers in your school, right? You not only screen the students and have these scores, but you also talk to the teachers. And do the teachers notice that these students really have problems? And if your school really has a lot of resources and is in contact with the parents, sometimes parents can also tell you. Okay, so remind, remember, all right, don't just rely on just the screening test. All right. You may want to use, depend on the parents. You may also want to rely, talk to the teachers, whether the teachers observe a problem. All right. Now, the other thing is also important is that you want to increase your accuracy yeah, of picking up the students who have really reading problems. It's, maybe, it's a good idea to have a series of tests, all right, a few tests. Uh, and I will show you some examples later on. All right, so for kindergarten, all right, uh, you may want to check whether they can name the letter, they can name the letters, whether they can break the, the word into its segments, and or they can break the, they can remove, all right, syllables from a particular word, right? Uh, all this may seem a little bit difficult, but um, just notice that I just want you to know that in a good screening tool, you may want to use a few measures so that it can, gives you a better picture rather than just relying on one measure, okay, or one test. All right. And this is another thing you can consider. All right. So I explain. Huh? Let's say you, you um, I men mentioned universal screeners, right? So you, 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 the idea is that you test all students. And after you test, there will be some students who pass the test. So no problem. So this continue, you don't need to give them extra help. All right. So you can continue with your tier one in the instruction. You go to class, go for your English lesson. Now, there will be some students who do not meet the performance. Then, all right, but there are some of them are quite close. All right. You can just monitor them. All right. And you just do, maybe just, just monitor the teachers in this one. Uh, maybe a little bit at risk, but at this point we don't want to take too much. Uh, uh, don't have we don't have enough resources to help them. Ah, the ones that we want to help are these those which are where they are very much below their peers. All right, and that's where the screening tool will tell you. All right, hopefully tell you whether is this child is it a problem with not able to word, read at the word level. All right, cannot read accurately, single word. Or is the problem the child can read single word, but very slowly. You know, when they read the word, they are like, you have to figure out 
you know, oh, this word is k- at. Then that, oh, this is cat. So very slow, very slow in decoding. Okay, so the, the problem, this, this problem is maybe accuracy. This problem is fluency, right? So their problem is different. We must put them in different groups. Then, of course, comprehension, all right? Some students don't have problems with accuracy reading. They don't have problems with fluency. They can read quite fluently. But when you ask them, what have you read? They say, Tisha, I don't know, you know? Ah, so the problem, they still haven't, they need to be taught comprehension skills, all right? So it is important for us to be able to match what their students' problems are with the intervention. Okay, the needs and the intervention. And uh, remember I told you earlier that in any screener, there can be false, false positives and false negatives. So sometimes, all right, when you just take a test, the child takes a test at one time, all right, they, uh, there is not, there is some, sometimes, uh, uh, it is actually good to let them uh, take the test another time. But maybe, so that we recommend that actually it's good to screen the students three times a year, right? And this thing about growth, all right? Uh, sometimes the students will improve over time, maybe because of your intervention, all right? So it's also a in, good, in, good idea to have multiple data points, right? And if some of you may say, oh, Jisun, Wow, multiple data points. I really got so much to teach. I have no time to test the students, right? Just to let you know, the screeners that we are, I'm going to teach you only takes one minute per student. One minute, all right? Uh, some can be done in the whole class. It takes three minutes, all right? So let me just share with you a little bit later, all right? Um, can we just check? Okay. So, but before, I'm not sure whether all of you are familiar with the elements of reading. Lah, huh? But let me just give you a big idea first about what is involved when you read. Okay. These are what you call the big five elements in reading. Okay. The big five com- components of reading instruction. All right. The simplest is actually this. Can the child hear differences? Can you tell make the uh, what do you call it discriminate between sounds? All right, so this is called phonemic awareness. So, for example, can the child hear the difference between that the word met and the word cat? All right, they have different initial sounds. The word met starts with the m sound, the word cat starts with the k sound. All right, so. This is able to hear differences in sounds. Or can the child uh, hear different sounds like mm, et, all right? It becomes met, all right? So they are able to blend sounds. So this idea is, can they hear the differences in the sounds? Now, alphabetic principle, I think many of you may be familiar. It's relating the sound to the letter. All right, what we usually call letter sound correspondence. So, for example, the letter K, all right, you will read it with a K sound, all right? The letter T, you read it with a T sound. So, uh, this is what you call, you, you, we would often call this phonics, lah, huh? phonics, able to link letters with the sound. Now, notice the difference between phonics here and the phonemic awareness is phonics means you must, have, must see the print. You must see the word. All right. Whereas in phonemic awareness or phonological processing, you only hear the, hear the sounds. All right. All the, maybe the rest, I think you'll probably be familiar. Vocabulary. Because when you want to read, all right, you must know the meaning of the word, right? Ah, then when you know the meaning of the word and as you read the whole paragraph, then your compre- that's where your comprehension comes in. All right, forward reading fluency means can this, that's a, you know, is the child able to read fluently or smoothly or the child's reading is very jerky. All right, for example, they may say the cat is 
on the chair. That, you know, it's not fluent because the child is still trying to figure out what are these different letters and how do I blend them and how do I read. So if the child has is not fluent, the, pro, the why we want to measure fluency is this. If the child is not fluent, then all their cognitive energy yeah, is spent on trying to decode and figure out what the words are. So, so much cognitive uh, energy is spent on decoding that when you ask them what they read, they tell you they don't know what they have read. So, in, then their comprehension is lacking. But if a child is fluent, they can read fluently, all right? Then they are, instead of focusing on their decoding, it means they can read smoothly. Then now when they are reading, all their energy, cognitive energy is now spent on their comprehending. Okay? So making sure that we teach all these parts, all right? Making sure they have vocabulary is important. And then if child still hasn't got oral reading fluency, then we must develop this. Okay, and then after this, all right, concurrently, you also develop comprehension. So let me just show you some, some slides here. So just to help you see the difference, phonemic awareness is where we, all right, it's really, you see the ear there? It refers to the ability to hear differences in sounds, all right? Whereas phonics, is the sounds are now represented by letters, which we can see. So that's why we put this I here. Okay, so that's a lot of people make a diff, a, com, a confuse between these two, right? But it is important to make the distinction. Now, so I've given you a very simple idea about what reading involves. So your quick question is, Okay, I know how to measure. Okay, all right, these are different areas of reading. All right, so what has this got to do with RTI response to intervention? All right, remember RTI, we talked about universal screening. You want to screen all the students, right? Now, if you want to screen all the students, all right, you want, may want to consider using something what you call curriculum based measurements. All right, basically. You want a screening tool that is a reliable indicator of the student's proficiency in reading. All right. It means this reading test, all right, the test, the screening tool is measuring reading. And then you want to make sure it's standardized. All right. It cannot be one teacher does the screening, do it different, and the teacher will give hints. And then another teacher do not give hints. Then of course the student, uh, the teach the student who who gets help from the teacher will also obviously uh, perform better than the the student who didn't get any help. So no, okay. When you use curriculum mass based measurements, you must use the instructions. You must give the instructions exactly as it is written. You cannot change the instructions. All right, uh, because it will affect your results and how you interpret the results. Okay, the other thing about curriculum measurements is that it is very brief, all right? So that, like just now I mentioned, to administer an oral reading fluency test, it only takes one minute per student, all right? So it's very fast. It's not doesn't take a long time, but it is a good test to show that this child has a problem with oral reading fluency, all right? The third thing is that it must be sensitive to increase in growth. So let's say if the child, uh, you test them, all right, and two or three weeks later, you test them, and because you're given intervention, all right, they can show improvement. Ah, that is a good, all right, uh, screener, okay, a good tool to measure. So curriculum-based measurements are good for screening, they are also good for monitoring student progress and they can help you to form your classroom instruction. Because like I said, uh, these measures, reading measures, can help you tell you whether the problem, is it the problem in oral reading fluency or is it in single word reading or is it in comprehension, All right? So 
They are effective, efficient, and brief. Okay. Bef maybe before I start talking about the bows, all right. Any questions so far about our uh, curriculum based measurements or about reading fluency? Okay, no? You can, if you want, you're afraid to, I mean, you, you prefer, you can actually just type in the chat. Ah, happy to encounter in the platform again because it's one of my frameworks. Thank you. Oh, so some of you are familiar. That's great. So I won't go so slow. All right. Any questions? I'm a I'm very uh, enthusiastic about response to intervention because I think, all right, it is a problem. We Many of our schools have this problem where we have so many students with reading problems. And you don't have enough psychologists to diagnose these children, right? But and this, I believe a lot of teachers can provide support. Okay. Ma, maybe we have been staring at the screen for one hour. Can I just give you a five-minute break? Uh, I break only to break, okay, so that you don't have to. And then after when you come back, I will teach you how to administer uh the screening tool. Now but before you when, you, when you come back, so make sure you are able to assess your, I, I already sent out the, uh, the, what do you call it? The two, the two uh, reading probes. One is called maze and one is called oral reading fluency. So when we take a break and we come back, all right, you, uh, you will do some exercise together with me. Is that okay? Ah, very good. So you have received. Okay, so let's now it's 3.20. We take a five minute break. Can? Uh, now just, just to take a, so that you're, because I know staring, I, I do Zoom all the time and it's, you know, tiring. So take a break and then come back. Can? I also close my.
everyone. Are you back? Did you manage to get an eye break? Okay, good. All right. Okay, thank you very much for letting me know. Okay, um, I'm going to share this thing called the books. Let me just close my door first. Okay, I'll share screen first. Give me a minute. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Okay, here. This thing is called. This is this is just an example. Okay, this thing called dynamic indicators of basic early early literacy skills. Eight. All right. The I don't know how many of you are familiar. Can you all indicate? Any one of you can. If you have heard of it, can you just indicate using the reaction button? How many of you have heard of this thing called Debose? Nobody, huh? Okay. Okay, never mind. Ah, not yet. After this, today's session, you can tell people you have learned, you know, you have heard of this word called Debose. All right. Okay, so it is a reading measure. Okay, and now I'll just be honest with you. There are many other kinds of curriculum-based measurements, what I call CBM, all right, curriculum-based measurements. There are many other types. There's called AIMS Web, there's FAST, there's uh, Early, uh, Easy CBM, all these, all right, uh, available. Only one reason why I'm, but I'm giving, I'm asking you to do the both. Not because the necessary is better than the rest. But the reason is because it's free. No need to pay. Okay. All right. So at least for you all, you, and you just can go into, I'll show you how to access it. All right. You can go into the internet and you can download it. They don't charge you any money. But like any other tools, when you get free, uh, all right, it may not be so applicable for your school. So, so that I, I, we can talk more about it. So you can try out afterwards and see, you know, Maybe can can be used or cannot be used. You have to make a decision. Huh? So I'm not telling you it's perfect. But like I said, it is, I'm making it, sharing with you because one, it's easily available and two, you don't have to pay for it. Okay? Now, let me explain to you now uh, here. Okay? All right. So the both is like the rest. We already talk about CBM, which is help you to identify students with reading problems. You can use it for all your students. And then you, if you have students with uh, uh, who are at risk, you can provide that intervention and you can see whether they are improving. And then if you want your, maybe your uh, principal asks you, is your intervention working or not? Ah, you can show them, okay, I've done the intervention and how many students have shown improvement. So this is the advantage lah, of these tools. Huh? All right. And, um, okay, these names, all right, uh, maybe I don't want to frighten you with all these names. I will only show you samples. All right, sorry, sorry. Let me just show you. All right, there are different tools here. All right, um, now this one is very simple. It's called letter naming. All right, and this is the simplest, where the child is just asked to name the letters. All right, and we know, right, if you want to teach the students, first of all, they must know how to name the letters. And you want them to name it quickly. All right, if they cannot name it quickly, that means, all right, when they read, they can't even read. They can't read because they don't know the letters. And then, of course, the next one is phonemic segmentation. All right, remember just now I told you that this idea of phonemic awareness is whether they hear the students can break and uh, hear the difference in sounds or can they break a word down into sound level let's say i ask you the word cat can you break it down into the individual sounds so the sound your children will be able should be able to do like okay the word cat is made out of three sounds eh, all right so three sounds if they can do that that means their ability to learn will be learn how to read will be better now, right, just now I also mentioned about phonics, all right, or what I call alphabetic principle. These are all just long names. Basically, can the children match the letter with the sounds, all right? Now, there's this thing called nonsense word, all right? All right, the reason why a lot of times, 
uh, they we, you, you may see in some of these uh, reading cast, they use something called nonsense word. Okay, and you will, I can show you some samples. Lah. Uh, let me just show you samples of what is a nonsense word. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, these are all nonsense words. All right. Tip, rap, hat, com, tap. Now, they are easily decodable because they are regular words. That means they follow the phonics. All right. But they are words that don't exist in the English language. Now, why is it that we want to use something called nonsense word in our testing? All right. Why can't we use uh, regular words? Okay. Um, because this, because we want to see whether the child can make a connection between the letter and the sounds. All right. Some children, if let's say they give them a word mat, uh, M A T, they may not know how to read. They, they may not know what the different sounds are. And then if let's say they read it, it's because they know the word. Not because they can decode the word. All right. So they are just relying on their memory. So we want to give them a nonsense word or what you call pseudo word because that is a true test of whether they can connect the letter with the sounds. So right now, like the word tip, t, e, all right. I, I may not know this word, but I know that there are three sounds in it and I can blend them. Right, so that's why very often when you are doing testing for reading, all right, then you often use, uh, dec uh, especially in decoding, all right, to figure out whether the student knows the connection between the letter and the sounds. They use what you call nonsense word, all right. And there's this thing, all right. Of course, uh, when you read, you also need to be able to read quickly, huh? Be able to read quickly so that remember just like I mentioned. All right, you want to make sure that the, able, the students are read, able to read with automaticity. And some words are not easily decodable because you know English language. Eh? Some words are just not regular words. They don't follow the usual uh, uh, letter sound correspondence. So these words are not necessarily decodable. All right. And, uh, but you want to make sure that these words like, okay, let, let's, let's say the word. Uh, think of a decode. B B B E, all right. Actually, the B E is is if you follow by the the, the spelling, it it is not pronounced as B. It's B because B E B is actually B E E, all right. It pronounces B because we pronounce as B, but we have to read it as B, all right. So these are what you mean by non-decodable words. And students must know these sight words, all right, to be able to do reading. And finally, all right, sorry, there are two more. All right, oral reading fluency, where you read words in connected text, I would add, and maze, where you read and understand the passage. Now, notice all these one, two, three, four, five, all these tests only take one minute, okay? It is only the maze that takes three minutes. But for maze, you can do it as a whole class. All right. Today, I will be teaching you only these two tests. All right. The oral reading fluency and the maze. All right. The reason why I don't, I'm not teaching you the rest, because letter naming fluency, if you go in the website, it is very easy to administer. Now, this two, phonemic segmentation fluency and nonsense word fluency. It's a little bit more demanding, all right? You must know your phonics well. So if you don't know your phonics sounds very well, then I don't encourage you to do this too, all right? Word reading fluency, also not difficult to administer, all right? Because it's just asking the students to read those words, all right, as quickly as they can. And you can just follow the, uh, what do you call it? You, you can just follow the, the protocol. All right, so uh, let me just show you some samples, okay? Can you see this is the uh, letter naming fluency where basically there are, you see letters, some small letters, small capital, some are capital letters. And all you have to do is ask the child to, 
all right? You give the instructions there and you just ask the child to read, all right? And you say, and, and as, as you go along, all right, when, you, when the child reads the first letter, you start timing, all right? And then after that, uh, after one minute, you tell the student, the child to stop. So let's say the child reads under here, you put a bracket and then you count how many letters. So by this, using this test, you can measure, huh, all right, in one minute, my child can read up to 28 letters, all right? Uh, then, um, but I'm not going to go teach this today, but from this, you can go and check, all right? I think there's something what I call the benchmark. I send it to you all. All right, I will also go through that later. You can check, ha, huh, it's 28 letters for a child who is primary one. All right, is it uh, the child is doing as well as the other students? Or is a child a little bit slower than other students? Or is a child very much below others? All right, if, if it's very much below others, it means, oh, very serious. Maybe need to really need a lot more help. All right? Maybe because to be Honor some of the students, they never at home, nobody teaches them the ABC. So you may have to realize that, oh, this, this child is coming to, to primary one without any knowledge of letters, uh, how to name the letters. Okay. So you can't even teach them the letter sounds because they don't even know the letters. Right. So you, but to do this, you must teach them how to name the letters first. All right. They must know all the different letters before you actually teach them how to uh, do this probe, okay? So this is called letter naming fluency. So you ask yourself, is this something that could help you? All right. Now, this is phonemic segmentation. Uh, like I said, I won't ask you to do this, huh? but uh, but because it takes a little bit of a uh, uh, difficult. It's, all right, so you are, the child is actually asked to break up, break down, all right? Uh, the instruction is this. I'm going to say a word. After I say it, you tell me all the sounds in this word. So if I say M, you must say M. Mm. All right? So that's why there's two sounds and the child is able to identify. Not many children are able to do this. So I, again, ask you to think about this. But it is basically, uh, this is what called phonemic segmentation. So you actually say the word to the child. And the child tells you the sounds. So like the word uh, at, all right? The child is able to say at, uh, at, okay? So this will be as phonemic segmentation. Now, nonsense word, like I mentioned to you earlier, whether the child is able to break this into the all the different, uh, they're able to read this word. All right, no, sorry, no need to break it down. They're supposed to read, all right, as quickly as you can, all these words. So, tip, rap, hat, com, tap, tat, all right, so on. And then you time them in one minute, how many words. Now, this is a little bit technical, all right. It's, uh, some children can read the whole words read, correct, whole uh, words read correctly. Some cannot do the whole word but they can at least break this, it into the different individual sounds. So this is called let, correct letter sounds. But again, I'm not asking you to do this. huh? All right. This one might be not too difficult either. This is quite easy. Where this is a list of what you call sight words. Some of you may look at it and say, hey, it looks like some of the things I know, what you call dodge list or fries list. You know, some things that you need the students to read quickly. So again, all right, you said, okay, uh, here's a list of words, all right? Start here and go across the page. When I say begin, point to each word and read it the best you can. And if you get scared, you actually provide the word. So let's say one minute begin, uh, I will say, will, other, running, still, black. And then that goes on for one minute. All right, and then after that, by knowing how many words the child read correctly, you could, you put it down here, and then you check the benchmark. All right, is a child at benchmark means no risk, or below benchmark, which means some risk, or a lot of uh um very very low very low means really quite a lot of risk. All right. 
So this is word reading frequency. I won't, we won't go do this today. All right. But I think you this one very easy to administer. Right. So what you do is uh, I'm going to show you how you can get hold of this. So I'm going to stop here, sharing here. And I'm going to show you uh, here. Okay, this is a PowerPoint. Where did it go? Is it here? Let me just have a look. Ah, okay. Maybe I can actually provide you with the link. I'll put this link in the chat box. Okay, let me just put it now. Uh, okay. Wait, now I'll put it in the chat box for you. Hmm. Where is my chat box now? Okay, wait. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, maybe. Okay, let me put that in the chat box, and y'all can look at it here. Okay, and uh, okay, so you can look at it, but I'll go through it with you as well. It's a PowerPoint. Ah, uh, here. Okay. Okay, it's not giving me. I don't want this administration. Okay, let me just have a look. Ah, here. Yeah. All right. Now, can you see here? You know. Ah, here. All right. You go into this. Actually, I should I should give you this list this instead. Sorry. Let me cut and paste and give this to you. Okay, let me just send this to you. Ah, here. Yeah. These are the materials you can get. Ah, okay. You can actually download this. You see, download uh, Dibbles materials. All right. You just have to agree, confirm. All right. And, all right. So, I will explain to you the difference afterwards between benchmark materials and then progress monitoring materials. All right. So, there are difference. And uh, okay, here you will see there are benchmark. All this you can download. All right, you can download for free. All right, so uh, grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. These are the benchmark uh, materials and scoring booklets. Uh, okay, so all the way until eighth grade, which in Singapore will be second week two. All right, notice there is a difference between, I want to emphasize this, benchmark materials as compared to progress monitoring materials. All right, again, you will have a whole list. All right, and it actually allows you even to do what you call uh, remote, all right? But let me just go through this, all right? So there's this progress monitoring, monitoring materials. All this you can download, all right? Oh, sh stop sharing. Uh, are you all able to see, are you able to access through that link? Just try it out and see whether you can, add. and then now after it's on your own, just download it, okay? Good. Some of you can, huh? Go, oh, good, good. Ah, okay, good. So I will just continue uh, here. All right, so this is the link. And, uh, okay, here. Now, so the question is, just I showed you there's a difference between benchmark and progress monitoring. All right, benchmark means it's more like a screening tool. All right, you want to find where whether when you the child is reading it whether the child is uh the same level as the peers or below all right what is a child and if the, the child is below that means the child is at risk all right progress monitoring only use when you are providing an intervention for the student all right so uh benchmark again I repeat and so therefore, if you're doing universal screening, no, then you'll be using benchmark. Okay. You only do progress monitoring if you are doing an intervention. Right. So here, okay. Uh, and I think I sent this benchmark to did I send to y'all? I think I did, huh? Because so for example, all right, you will see different colors, all right, in the benchmark. Uh, and you will see that let's say a child is primary four fourth grade, all right? Beginning of the year, for a child to be uh, benchmarked, all right? 
the child should be reading between 87 to 130 words correct per minute. If the child is, okay, so it means that if the child is reading in the green zone, that means minimal risk, no need to worry. If the child is reading even be, beyond that, or right, 131, oh, no risk at all, no need to worry. But if the child is reading below 87, all right, below this, that means the child is either in the orange zone or the red zone, ah, that means there's some risk. So for the orange zone, we say some risk, but if the child is in a red zone, uh, that means the child is really at risk, all right? So which means, all right, I will want to, let's say you really don't have resources, I want to prioritize this group of students because they are very far behind their peers, all right? So you have B stands for beginning of the year, M stands for middle of the year, and E stands for end of the year. So beginning, middle, and end. So beginning, I usually say you can maybe administer beginning of the year in January, if your school starts, your school year starts in January. Middle may be in May, all right? And then E is end of the year, so mid will be maybe in October, all right? So that is where you have the benchmark, okay? So today, I'm actually not going to focus on, uh, okay, I'm not going to focus on progress monitoring because we are just doing screening. Okay. All right. So this is uh, if you get one of the scoring booklet, you will see this. So you put the child's names. All right. And this is for what? Let me just see. This is for what? Grade. Ah, this is for second grade. Let me see primary two. All right. Um, primary one and two a little bit more difficult because you have this nonsense word and ORF and maze. Okay, I think I may have missed something. Let me just uh, stop this for a while. I think I missed one slide. Let me just, okay, let me just go back. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think I missed something earlier. Okay, I was too, e ah, here. All right, I think I missed this one earlier. Now, I want you to notice, okay, that you can see that you actually have a, a, a series of, uh, a test that you can use, all right? But it is according to the age or the grade of the child. So I think your, it makes sense, lah, you know? Kindergarten to grade one, you are interested in whether they can do letter naming, whether they can break the words into sounds, all right? So that's why grade one and grade two, all right? Uh, kindergarten to grade one, all right? You are focusing on letter naming and phonemic segmentation. Now, when the child is older and you already taught them some phonics, then you may want to teach them nonsense word fluency. All right? So that can go until primary three. And then primary three also, you want to teach them uh, sight words. All right? So word reading fluency is also important. So again, primary three. All right? So notice these are all single words. You read only word by word. All right? Then after that, once you, but it is important for to teach exposed students to start reading, all right, not only in single words, but maybe in, in short paragraphs. So actually here in the books, actually start testing them, all right, uh, in primary one, all the way to secondary two or eighth grade. All right, and then for maze, I will show, these are the two I'm going to teach you today. For maze, it starts in second grade all the way to eighth grade. But I'll be honest with you, lah. Maybe for some of us, this is Ameri this is American. So you may ask yourself, maybe for my our my stu my the students in my class, this may not be so realistic. So you may have to adjust accordingly. All right, what they can do in prime kinder kindergarten, maybe for some of our students, they can only do in primary one. So you may have maybe our benchmark may not match exactly what uh what they have in america okay so you may have to do a few first or you are if you are an experienced teacher then you may look at the test and then you may have to uh, judge for yourself so i want to say that um uh, there must be some level of uh, what do you call it adjustments for you to make lah, huh? i want i i any questions so far all right uh let me ask you there were some questions so i'm going to look Try and answer the questions now. 
Just now somebody asked. Ah, okay. Wow, so many questions. Okay, let me let me try. I I found so you know, I'm trying to look at your questions before I move any further. Okay. Um okay, I'm looking at the questions. Your knowledge. Ah, can you help to understand the syllable concept? I think the idea, okay, then we, we are Fariha, I'm reading your question. Huh? How to help stu- how to help students to understand the concept of syllables? Um I think you so the idea of syllables is very important, especially in teaching or for reading. So you ask yourself, uh, you may have to familiarize with that. I will start by their name. Okay, let's say your name is Fariha. So you can see that there are three. Fa, ri, ha. So you break it down into three different sounds. So you expose them to as many as possible because these are parts that you break the words into. All right. Uh, let me see what else is there. Ah, whether you can... Then there's a question about how to adapt this test for Thai language. Uh, just to share with you, you will see afterwards when we try the, the maze and even the oral reading fluency test, that some of it, actually, I've already chosen the ones uh, that are not so related to the American culture or, or don't have so many American ideas, all right? So it, that our children can use. But if you if you all find that this is an interesting idea, uh, you may be able to design your own. It's not difficult to design your own probes where it's more suitable for your own children. You understand? But, of course, um. So, for example, uh, uh, we can talk more about this later, but it can be adjusted. But the, of course, we have to come up with your own norms. Okay, they come up, they come up, they call what you call local norms. All right, but definitely can be. A, but I don't know whether it has been done. I I, I don't know whether it has been done in any other languages except English. Some of you may ask whether it can be done for Malay, Chinese. I don't know. Okay, Chinese. I think a little bit more difficult. Maybe the Chinese the uh, reading the word fast enough can, all right, but the rest I'm not so sure. Uh, the link, okay, somebody has the link. All right, uh, so somebody asked me about languages. Okay, yes, if you are coming up with your own, uh, it needs a lot of validation. So that is the problem, all right? So um, you will have to adjust. So I would suggest that you may want to ask yourself, Start with what you have here, all right? Start with, uh, not rather than start from scratch, all right? Start with what they have and then adjust according to maybe uh, your primary three child cannot read primary three, equivalent to primary three, because even in uh, some of our children here, they don't do very well, if, even with the devils. Then we may say that primary three, maybe use the primary two probes instead. So just adjust accordingly, rather than design all on your own, okay? All right, so I continue now. Okay, and let me continue and share with you. So this one I've shown you. All right. Okay, I've just shown you this. Okay. All right, so like I mentioned, all right, so if let's say the word reading fluency, um, this is part of the RTI process, but uh, I won't have time to explain it to you today. But let's say you want to identify in the beginning of the year when the child, whether the child has a problem, whether the child is at risk, you can use a benchmark one. All right. And then at the end of, uh, there's no intervention, the child's not getting intervention. Then at May, you may do another one again. Now, why is it, and some of you may ask me, I really know. I really do the benchmark in the beginning of the year. Why do I need to do another one in the middle of the year? Okay, the reason is this. Um, children, over time, some make faster growth, some make slower growth. All right? So, um, if we just do it once, all right, some of them, they, are, they actually are doing well in the beginning. But in the middle of the year, they don't do as well. So, you don't pick them up. Okay, but so it may be something that you have to ask yourself whether it's important. But at least I would say beginning of the year and maybe end of the year, you may want to to try out. Okay, 
All right, so let me go on. All right. Okay, so let me show you. This is a sample, all right, of the word reading fluency. This is a scoring. This is a scoring form. Okay, so this is for the teacher. Notice all the, the script is given here for you. You just have to read the script. And then they also give you the reminders. All right, and this is a student's copy. So as the children read, all right, you will mark where the errors are. So let's say the child read this word wrongly, you put a slash across. So this is a, and uh, okay, this is the uh, examiner's copy and the student's copy. All right, I want you to take note. This is important. Um, to make sure that you got the right probe, huh? benchmark, all right, you must see the word benchmark if you're using for screening. All right, WRS, word reading fluency, and one means for grade one, beginning of the year. All right, you have to match this because afterwards when you check the benchmark, all right, uh, you must make sure you go to the right uh, column. Okay, all right, so here, benchmark, grade one, beginning, and then and the students probe again, there's at the bottom there, benchmark, uh, word reading fluency, grade one, beginning of the year. Okay, so this is what you need to do when you want to administer. And this applies across all tools, all, all the probes. All right, you must be quiet, preferably in a room. And you must stick to the script. Only say what is provided in instructions. All right, ensure that when you are scoring, the, the child can't see it. So I would suggest that you use a clipboard. All right, and you time each measure as stated. So let's say it's one minute, you give one minute. All right, two minutes, uh, if let's say it's three minutes, you have to give three minutes. You may repeat the direction or the in item only once. But if you're repeating the child got stuck, you must keep the stopwatch running. If you have an error, all right, make, make, uh, you made a mistake somehow, you may need to reassess again, all right? And sometimes when the ch ch child, um, because they are all young, uh, they, they read, uh, they lose their space, their place, you may have actually got to remind them and bring them to that place again, point them to where they need to read. All right. Uh, so these are important things that you may you need to, to note. Remember, you, we tell them to stop after one minute, all right, or three minutes, depending. When, where they stop, the last item, you put a bracket, which means all everything after that, you don't score. Okay, you put a bracket. And if the answer is incorrect, you put a slash. Now, if the child, um, they read the word, let's say the word was cat, all right? And, but the child, the first time they saw it, they read it as kit. Then they say, oh, no, it's cat. Then you put the word SC, which means self-correction, all right? And self-correction means that the final word is correct. It's considered as correct. It is count counted as correct. All right, and it is not unusual because our children are still young. They may give you multiple responses for the same item. All right, and you only score the final response. All right, so if the final response is wrong, then it's wrong. If the final response is correct, then you mark it and give it. All right, it's correct. Now, um, the other thing is this. Some of our children, all right, maybe I just stop this for a while. Some of our children, all right, and, and even in Singapore, we don't always pronounce the way uh, Americans do. All right, so like my name. By right, my name is Soon, S-O-O-N. It should be Soon. But in Singapore, all our long vowels become short vowels. You know what I'm saying? So if this is the way, typically in, in your country, a particular word is pronounced, you don't penalize a child, okay? But, uh, all right, so you, you, will, you will ask yourself, because that's what the children are hearing. But a common problem with our children here is in Singapore is that we don't pronounce the final sound of the word. Let's say the word is cats, C-A-T-S. Many of our children here in Singapore will pronounce as cat. They leave out the final, all right, S sound. Or the word is laughed, 
with the E D L A U G H F uh, G H E D. All right, the E D sound. Many of our children don't pronounce the E D sound, the final sound. That unfortunately is an error. Okay, they all get it. All right, so because we cannot compromise so much, but if it's a long vowel, it's a short vowel. Or, you know, many of our children don't pronounce the word three, T-H-R-E-E, -E, three. They end up saying three, all right? If this is something that among, is very common among your children, then you don't, even maybe a lot, even adults pronounce it that way, then you don't penalize, okay? So let's look at it, all right? Let's give you an example now, okay? Don't penalize because of, ah, and then some children, they have speech problem, all right? Then if it's a speech problem, then of course we shouldn't penalize. But then you may ask me, Chisun, how do I know it's a speech problem or not? You know, because, uh, uh, okay, so what I usually do is, uh, if I'm not sure, I will just uh, rate it first. And maybe the word is, the word is, let's say, sun, all right? And they sit the, the, the child's, Instead of saying sun, mean, say, say sun, uh, I mean some other word. Lah. Then I will ask the child, you know, later on, in, make it in a conversation and ask a word, ask them and you say, oh, uh, today do you think it's a sunny day or, or, or something I mean, that requires the word, the child to pronounce the word sun again. Then I hear whether the child can actually articulate the word sun properly. If the child can articulate the, child, the word sun, that means but read it incorrectly in the passage, then I'll mark it as wrong. But I know if I ask the, word, the child to say the word sun, all right, and the child really cannot and pronounce it the same way that they read it in the passage, all right, then it's not a problem because the child can't read the word. But it is because that's how the child pronounces that word. Then I will not penalize the child. Do you all get what I'm trying to say? Huh? So sometimes the problem is the speech problem. All right. So the speech, some, so you don't penalize a child for reading it wrongly. All right. Because it's actually the speech problem, not because the child can't read. So what I will try to do is I'll use that conversation, have a little conversation and try to assess whether the child can actually pronounce the word correctly. All right. Okay, so this is something you may want to bear in mind. Okay, so here, uh, don't penalize. All right, uh, accommodations. I think uh, some of the things you all can take note lah. Maybe we just look at. Uh, there are many things you can. You are allowed to give them breaks in between. Okay, because we're all working as special needs. If the children needs a special uh, hearing aid, you need to wear glasses. Please let them use that. If the child has a visual problem, you can allow, you're allowed to enlarge the materials. All right. Uh, adjust, they can adjust the lighting. Then the child is allowed to use ruler to track. And for some children, they need this thing called whisper phones. You can allow them to use. All right. But not often. Now, these are things that you are, uh, what do you call, unapproved. All right. Unapproved. So I don't recommend that you do this, but if you're, for some reason your children do need this, you can give them extra time, all right, or practice the mentioning, uh, practice the item, or changing directions. Um, personally, I don't, I don't encourage this lah. Huh? Okay, but I just know that there are such options. Now, what dibbles you can't do is for students with very poor verbal. It means they have very poor language skills, all right? Or they have a speech disorder and they, they, are, they speak very slowly, all right? Because they're, and because remember, Dibbles is actually about fluency. You're going to time them, right? And uh, here they say, for whom reading in English is not an instructional goal. So that's why this question about uh, modify for Thai, for Thai students or Malay, um, like somebody mentioned now, you know, you really need a lot more research, all right, to be able, to, but the both eight definitely is not created for this group of students, all right? Okay, so we're going to start by maze, all right? This is the first test, all right? So I'm going to show you now. This is how it looks like, all right? This is the student's copy. 
So you should look for it. Afterwards, I'm going to ask you to try on your own. All right. The first page, there is a practice passage, which I will go through with you. And then this is the actual probe. All right. There are a few pages. Now, what you may notice that is unique about this is that um, it is a normal passage that you have. But over here, in every few words, all right, every there is a, uh, a choice. That's way for so you the, the child read the, so the idea is for a child to read the passage, and then when it comes to this word, if they are following what this passage is about, they should be able to pick the right word. So ants, they use the few behind ants. Is it food, house, or lake? All right, and then they set a net for is it a his or me goal? Right. So the idea is, um, if they are comprehending it then they should be able to select the right word, okay? So this uh, probe is for three minutes, right? And later on, you I will go through with you how to do this part, which is you have to correct how many correct, how many incorrect, and adjusted score, all right? But this one, I will show you later. So what I need you all to do now is to take out the worksheet, the maze worksheet, all right, and uh, pretend you are a student. Are you with me? Do you have it in front of your screen or you may print it out? All right, and I'm going to administer. So pretend you're a student and I'll give you three minutes. All right, okay, so get ready, uh, all of you. All right. Uh, change. Yeah. All right, so this is it. And this can be, this is the only probe that can be done as a class. You can give every student in your class to do. So I'm going to start now. I'm going to give you a worksheet. When you get your worksheet, please write your name at the top and put your pencil down. So what by this, what you should do is you give out the worksheets and make sure the students have written down their names all right, before proceeding. Then you read this instruction. You are going to read a passage with some words missing from it. For each word missing, for each missing word, you will see a box with three words in it. Your job is to circle the word you see, which you think uh, you think makes the most sense in the context of the passage. Let's look at the practice passage together. Listen as I read. Tom goes to a school far from his house. Every morning, he takes a school, art, bus work to go to school. Let's stop here. Let's circle the word bus because I think bus makes the most sense here. Listen to how the word sounds now. Every morning, he takes a school bus to, to go to school. All right, so you go to the next, pass, the next set of instructions. Now it's, in your, it's your turn. Read the next sentence silently to yourself. When you come to a word, uh, to a box, read all the words in the box and circle the word that makes most sense to you. When you are done, put your pencils down. So now I'm going to give you three seconds. Can you try? All right. And do the next one. Okay, so assume 30 seconds ready. Put your pencils down. And then you just make sure that the students have put down their pencils and you say, good job. Now listen. In the afternoon, library, morning, he also takes a bus home. You should have circled afternoon because afternoon makes the most sense. Listen. In the afternoon, he also takes a bus home. Okay, when I say begin, turn the page and start write, reading the passage silently. Start on the first page with the title. When you come to a box, read all the words in the box and circle the word that makes the most sense in the box. You should stop when you come to a stop sign or I say stop. Ready? Begin.
Okay, so all of you, now you can start doing that little activity, all right? I will tell you when to stop. Please do it so that we can go through how to do the scoring. Stop. Put your pencils down. Right? So now I'm going to go through how to do the scoring, but I'll give you some instructions first to tell you what you should do. All right. So if you are the you are the teacher, you should start the timer after you say begin. All right. If a, now this is happening in the whole class, right? And sometimes your student may not realize. So if a student starts reading the passage out loud. You just say to the student, please read the passage silently and you can repeat this. If the students sometimes they turn the pages, so you must be alert. Nah? Uh, they, they skip one page, you say, just remind the students to say, by saying, please be sure not to skip pages. If this child around right, halfway when there's only one minute nah, and then stops working already, then you just need to give this prompt to say, please keep going until I tell you to stop. Just do your best. And you can repeat that so that you encourage them to do as much as they can because it's three minutes. All right. So, uh, yeah. So basically, your job is to encourage them to try their best until three minutes has passed. So, okay. What you have, I assume all of you have already done the, 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 the little maze assessment. So, how do you score? All right. Where the, I'm going to show you. Uh, Okay, I'm going to show you this later. Okay, later, later, where is it? Huh? All right, this is the, you. I, I will have given you this. All right, this is what I call the Dibbles P, P2 Maze scoring key. So the scoring key is where the answers are. All right, so you can check for the answers. All right, so let me go back here. All right, so where, the, where your answer do not match the scoring key, they'll be considered as errors. You put a slash. Now, sometimes the students all right, may circle more than one. All right, if you circle more than one, they say they circle two or three, you, you put a slash because you should only circle one. All right, and if the items occur, if the, the you remember, uh, if there are blanks after the last three minutes, all right, they stop. Don't, don't think about, don't worry about those un, uncompleted items. Okay, because they were left blank because the students can't get to it. Don't slash the ones. Just see where the student did the last item. All right, then don't count the rest, uh, which are not done yet after the three minutes. All right, so so these are some examples. So like this one is correct. So you leave it. You don't put a slash. This one, all right. Uh, the students did not mark anything, so you put a slash. Okay, because no answer. Okay, this one no problem. Now here, if there are mark markings here, and but it is like this, okay, they did something like this, but it is obvious this is the answer, then you will consider it's correct. All right, all the students put a tick like this, but you they circle this one, it is still obvious which is the answer, you will consider this as correct. 
Okay. All right. So this is the scoring scoring key that I mentioned. All right. Um. So what you need to do is after you have scored, the ones that are correct you put under C. The ones that are incorrect, that's why it's I incorrect. You put under I. Now you need to calculate what you call this AS. It means adjusted score. AS adjusted score. Basically, it is you take the number of correct responses minus half of the incorrect responses. All right, this is to discourage students who just do anyhow do you know, and then they they get a lot of words, but actually they make a lot of mistakes. Okay, but they penalize it only by half. All right, so let me give an example. So let's say for one child, they got nine words, all right? And then they got two wrong. So the adjusted score should be the number of correct responses minus half the number of incorrect responses. So it will be nine minus half of two will be nine minus one, which be eight, all right? Then what you do is you look at this eight, right? And remember, this is a primary two and it was for beginning of the year, remember? Huh? You look at the probe, it was for beginning of the year. So you will look at this uh, benchmark, all right? Uh, I think I've given up to this one. So you look under second grade, under maze, all right? And this is called adjusted score. And you look for eight, uh, wait, how much? Was it? Nine, is it? Look not eight, okay? So I look under eight. So eight is still within the green zone. So since it's within the green zone, it's a child at risk. If it's within the green zone, it's a child at risk. No, okay, the child is not at risk. It's only when the child, the, 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 the score is in the or, orange zone or the red zone, all right, then the child is at risk. Now, some of you may ask, what happens if the score is like, uh, okay, it's like the child got one error. And if I have one error, I divide by two, I got 0 0.5. All right, so like this one, all right, so only one error. So in this case, half minus one, uh, multiplied by one is still half. So what you do is just round off, which will be, is even as eight and a half, you round off to nine. All right? Okay, and what you do is then you then, it, it, this is all in a scoring booklet. Lah. Uh, you put, you will then record down Maze adjusted score, benchmark one is let's say nine. Then middle of the year, you can put here 10, uh, another, another score. And then end of the year, you put the score here. Okay, this is the scoring booklet. All right. And to make sure that you are able to administer, um, that there is what you call fidelity, you administer it properly. All right, there's what you call a checklist, administration checklist, a fidelity checklist. So first of all, you check that the student has, all right, each student has a copy of the maze and they've written their names. You are supposed to repeat the instructions verbatim. It means exactly as it's written. All right, you cannot change. Then you start the timer after say begin and you administer the prompts correctly. Remember those prompts I mentioned earlier? Let's say the child is not working, you tell them there. You, you give the instruction. And then at the end of three minutes, you tell them to stop, put your pencils down. All right. And then when you're scoring it, you must follow uh, the scoring that was given. And uh, and it's good that if you are, let's say you're helping other teachers. All right. Then you must, then you check that the answers are consistent. Huh? All right. And you actually uh, calculated the adjusted score properly. Okay. Using that formula. All right. Uh, the reason why they actually said if you are not using the data system, all right, is actually uh, in this, the, if you want to pay it for it, all right, there are many of these tools, they actually allow you to pay, let's say $3 or $5 per child. And they can put it into the system and the system can actually track the student's performance over time. So you have a database. All right. And if you're doing progress monitoring, that means you're doing intervention over time. You can actually, they can actually chart a graph for you. So which is about that, yeah, but you're not doing this under for screening and that is actually, all right. So that they have, but you have to pay for it. All right. So uh, extra, uh, I don't know, you can consider, huh? then, but I'm just letting you know. All right. 
Um, okay, what else am I going to teach here? All right, so actually, this is, I'm going to stop here where Mace is concerned and give you time. All right. Ah, okay. So very good. So you can use it for your students, but just will ask you for your feedback. That 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 passage that y'all did uh, was for P2, primary two. Do you think your primary two students can do it? What do y'all think? Is it is, is it is it uh, appropriate or is it too? I mean, I I, I just want your point of view. Uh, maybe you can just put in your chat. Anyone? Y'all, when y'all did the passage, do you feel it was easy? I mean, for primary two child? Uh, quite high, yeah? Okay. Anyone else? Mm, depends on your kids. Okay. All right. Understand. Okay, I only have one more tool to share. Uh, okay, uh, it's not very long, but um, I'm not sure whether y'all want a break or y'all are able to keep going. You want to keep going or you want to take a break? Okay, keep going. All right, let's continue. Okay, this one very short. All right, okay, okay, good, good, good. Keep going. <laughs> Too high for your students, yes. All right. Um, yeah, the question is, is it is it too difficult for students um, with dyslexia? Uh, here, this is based on my experience. Uh. Actually, this tool can be used to do what you call progress monitoring if you provide interventions for students with dyslexia. All right. It will be the students with dyslexia. This is actually one way. That's why you use this as screening. This is one way, instead of having to assess by a... Uh, psychologists, all right, you as a teacher can actually get a sense of where your students have reading difficulties, all right? And students with dyslexia will perform below the benchmark. They will be the ones who will fall in the orange zone or the red zone. You understand what I'm saying? All right, but, uh, but that's why I asked you this question, whether it's too difficult. So you may have to adjust right now. You may have to adjust accordingly and you may to try it over time to see for your students what is a normal, all right? Because uh, what is normal for American kids may not be normal. So this will be one problem. Uh, may not be normal, may not be typical of your students at the P2 level, for example. Okay. But uh, I have actually used this for Singapore students. All right. And um, it gives me an idea which are the weaker students and actually it provide interventions. All right, who for the local the low the lowest performing students, and for the lowest performing students, they are likely to be students with dyslexia. Okay, I, I hope I've answered your question. Okay, but just to recap, maze is specifically for reading comprehension. Whereas dyslexia is actually about students who have problems with single word reading. All right. Okay, which I'm not doing at this point of time. Okay, all right. So let's do another one. Okay. But like I said, I want to repeat, uh, the advantage of response to intervention is that you don't need a diagnosis, you can provide intervention already. All right, because if let's say the student comes up very low, right, like goes into in using the maze, all right, it means the student's very slow in reading, they're reading it with a lot of difficulty. You have to wait for a diagnosis. You can do an intervention, all right? So if the child is weak in the orange or in the red zone for maze, you can provide a reading comprehension intervention, all right? So the next one I'm going to show you is oral reading fluency. So the same. If the child falls in the orange zone or the red zone, all right, for oral reading fluency, then you do an oral fluency intervention. So you can match just by doing the, the, the assessment, you can match your intervention with your child's needs. Okay. All right. Let's do the last one. Okay. So I need you now to take out this. Oh, wait. Uh, let me just have a look. Take out this tool. Okay. Give me a minute. All right. 
Okay, this is called oral reading fluency or ORF. Okay, so let me just go through it very simply. It is uh, basically also one minute. It, was, it can be used from primary one students to secondary two or eighth grade. And you will score in two ways. All right, number of words read correctly or number of words read uh, correct per minute and number of errors. All right, and you will wait for, if let's say the child has difficulty reading the word and hesitates for three seconds. All right, if it's more than three seconds, so you count. One, two, three. All right, three seconds, you put a slash and you provide the word for the child. I will explain why you need to provide the word later. And you can do this as many times as needed. All right, but if the child, all right, the discontinue rule is, let's say if the child can't read any word in the first line, just stop. That means this child, all right, no need to continue with the test anymore. Do something lower, like a nonsense word or word reading fluency, because it just tells you that this child is not able to read at a passage level. They can't read a connected text. They can only read word by word, all right? So, um, yeah, don't torture the poor child. Now, the instruction is really very simple, okay? So, what you do is you point to the passage and you just say, please read this out loud, all right? And then, if you get stuck, I will tell you the word so you can keep reading. When I say stop, I may ask, okay, this one, uh, I'm going to skip this, all right, this part here. Now, let me explain a little bit about oral reading fluency. Remember, I told you the oral reading fluency is important to assess because uh, when children are not able to read fluently, it affects their comprehension. All right. And uh, another way, way of measuring reading comprehension is by asking the child to retell. It means they read a passage and then they retell the they retell the, the story what they've read. Now, uh, actually, there is a way to, to measure this, this part, this component where you actually ask them to read ready. After they read, they retell the story. Uh, but I have found that a lot of times the scoring is not reliable. All right, there's some problem with the scoring. So I don't encourage teachers to score it, but you can still tell the students to tell to to retell the story, but you don't score it. You just ask them to score, retell. So it's a still good exercise for you, all right? So, uh, okay, so let me repeat. Huh? So basically you tell them, if you get stuck, I will tell you the word so you can keep reading, all right? Then you just point to the first word of the parag first paragraph and say, start here, ready, begin, all right? So I'm going to administer this. All right, and but unfortunately, I'm not able to go and see where you are. So you're going to administer on your own. All right. So, um, but just get ready the passage that I've given to you. I, I, all right. So this is the passage. It's about puppy love. All right. So you get and so imagine that I'm in front of you, lah, huh? sitting beside you. Okay. So I, uh, I'm going to read the instruction now for you. All right, and then you will start. And when I tell you to stop, you just stop wherever. And you put a, let's say you stop here, you put a bracket here. All right, so before, but we let us, uh, let's just start here. Okay, so I imagine now that the passage is in front of you. Okay, so, um, okay, please read this out loud. If you get stuck, I will tell you the word so you can keep reading. When I say stop, I may ask you to tell me what you have read. So do your best reading. Start here. Ready? Begin. Okay, uh, stop. All right, so what you need now is wherever you stop, you put a bracket next to it. 
unfortunately, all right, I'm not there. And so if you had hesitated, uh, uh, guys, before I forget, uh, this one, the student must read this passage out loud. All right, so that as the child is reading, you will mark the errors. All right, so you'll mark the errors. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you have, let's say this child stops here, you put a bracket here, and I will go through the errors here. All right, now, uh, when you're scoring, do not mark the correct ones, but as a child is reading and the child reads something wrongly, all right, let's say the word was, uh, I can't think of a word, heart, all right, the child read it as hard, all right, then it's incorrect, you put a slash. So as a child is reading, you have to be very attentive to listen what the child is reading, all right, and then the child makes an error by correcting it within three seconds, okay, so this three seconds is very important. If it's within three seconds, you put SC, self-correct, and then score as in as score as correct. But if the child hesitates for three seconds and exceeds three seconds, then you will mark it as incorrect and put and provide the word to the child. All right, give the word. Now, why you want to read? Okay, so there's some why do you want to provide the word? Huh? All right, it's because let's say the child can't read the word things. All right, so you, you wait for three seconds and then you say things. It is idea is said so that the child, you that not knowing this word doesn't hinder the child from reading the rest of the words. All right, so that's the reason for providing that, uh, that, that three seconds. You wait for three seconds, the child can't read, you provide the word. All right, so that the child can continue to understand the rest of the passage. Maybe the child can't read. But when you provide the word, then the child says, oh, that word is things. Then they can continue and they still know how to read the rest of the passage. Okay? So that's a, the reason for the three-second rule. All right? Uh, so now if the child inserts word or they repeat words, do not, con you can just write it in, all right, and put it a little, uh, you know, put on top, all right? And But do not consider them as errors. So what are errors? Errors are words. Oh, yeah. The other thing is this. If to be counted as correct, the word must be read as a whole word and pronounced correctly for the context of the sentence. Right? So, if let's say the child cannot only knows the individual sounds but cannot blend it, that is considered in incorrect. I will show you an example afterwards. All right? And it must be correct. Uh, that one, I'll give you an example. So, what are errors? All right? What are considered wrong? Uh, obviously, the word read incorrectly or they substitute the word, all right? Instead of this word, met, they say mit, all right? That's a substitution. Or they miss the word, all right? Or hesitation of more than three seconds. They waited, they, they cannot read within three seconds, all right? Or words read out of order. I will give you an example. Or words are read, sounded out but not read as a word. I'll give you an example as well. Okay, so here, all right, this is an example. The, the, this is the passage, all right? So the word, the, the passage was, it was hot at the beach. Instead of saying hot, the child said high. It was high at the beach. So what you do is to put the word slash hot and you write the word high. So this is considered as one error. So the number of total words read is six, but the error is one error. So the word correct is five. So all right, so this is considered as the total, the number of words read correct. Okay, now this is another example. All right, it was, it was hot at the, okay, the child was trying to, but couldn't do it within three seconds. So it's considered as an error. So you put a slash and then you will say beach so that the child can continue reading the rest of the passage. So this is considered as one slash is one error, so one error here. All right, next, let me just go to the next one. I hope I'm not going too fast for you. Dr. Tan, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes, uh, yes, I am. Here. Yeah, I just want to clarify uh, that we'll finish at five, right? Yes. So uh, what time do you, how much time do you need to complete your presentation? 
This is the last one already. The last one. And then you have Q&A session, right? Yes, correct. So would it be okay for us to request for you to stop at 4.50, 4.50? In fact, I think about 10 minutes time you'll be done. Oh, all right. Thank you, Paul. Thank, okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is, uh, so let's say the example is, remember we said that the child, if let's say the child can't sound out, can't blend the word. The child can only sound the individual's uh, words, or letters here. All right. Uh, like this one. I, uh, we like to re 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 eat. All right. The child doesn't blend. That is considered as error. But the child can blend it at the end, okay, re, 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 read, all right? Then we give the child the score. So this is given, this is counted as correct. Whereas this one, because the child didn't blend it, is considered as incorrect. All right, now the other thing about abbreviation, all right, this word is, this the correct, this is the, actually the sentence, lah. Huh? Dr. Jones looked at my teeth. So the child said, Dr. Jones took my teeth, no problem, six. But let's say the child doesn't know the DR who stop sense for doctor. The child says, DR Jones look at my teeth. That is incorrect. So you mark it as five. All right. Uh, then uh, this is another example. This word should be pronounced as doesn't. But the child changed it to does not mind. That is not. Uh, how it should be read, so it's considered as an error. So you put a slash, consider as one error. All right. Now, word order. We mentioned word order. Here, the word is the sentence is actually Doctor Smith doesn't mind the heat. The child said, uh, Doc, Mister Smith. Oh, sorry, Mister Smith doesn't mind the heat. The child said, Mister Smith doesn't hit the mind. All right. So, because the word order is wrong. You will put a slash, and this is considered as two errors. All right. Uh, how about hyphenated words? If the words can stand on its own, like part time, then they are considered as two words because they can stand on its own. 24, then these are considered as two words. But if the word cannot stand on its own, like x ray, t shirt, if it cannot stand on its own, then this is. X-ray is one word, T-shirt is one word. All right, so let me just show you, all right? Uh, if let's say the child stops the word here, floor, all you have to do is this is 77 words, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83. So let's say this is how the amount of words read, the child read 83 words. Then remember, let's say this was the big end of the. Uh, this was the probe was for the end of the year. You wrote at eighty three, all right. So look at eighty three. Eighty three falls on the, uh, between seventy seven and ninety three in the orange zone, which means that for this particular child, they have some problems with oral reading fluency. They will need help, all right. Some help, so some risk. Right. Some of you may say, oh, my child. Okay, so these are another example. Okay, so the child made mistakes, uh, couldn't read a special. SC means now SC means uh self-correct. That means this, this is counted not an error because the child got it correct. Now sometimes the child missed the whole line. If the child missed the whole line, by right, actually, we should prompt them to read this line. But they missed it, like, huh? You missed it. So you cancel that whole line. And that line is still, this whole line is considered as errors. So that's why you consider here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's why this, for this probe, the child has 15 errors. So 73 minus 15 is 58. All right, so this is, I think, my last slide for this. And we are almost, yeah, the last two slides. All right, so there is, again, another, uh, if you want to make sure that your, your teachers are administering correctly, you can you can actually check their, how they administer. So did they hold the clip art, a clipboard and timer? All right, how did they, did they put the copy of the protocol in front? Did they follow the standardized direction verbatim? 
Did they start the timer when the child read the first word? All right, follows along and marks the sc scoring book as the child responds. They administer, did they administer the correct prompt and then apply the scoring rules and then apply the discontinue rule if appropriate. And the end of 60 seconds, put a bracket and say stop and then I mean, uh, do the scoring correctly. All right, that's all. Okay, that's that's all you have to do for oral reading fluency. Uh, but like I said, lah, you know, some of I've chosen the more friendly ones, but sometimes you have to be more selective because some of the passages may not be so may not be culturally appropriate, and some of the norms I already mentioned, all right, may not be appropriate. So you may have to consider doing uh, developing locally developed norms and tests, right? Yeah, that is my last uh, thing about the Bell's Eight. I do hope you can find it, you will find it useful, all right? And uh, maybe just try it out with your students. But like I said, you would have to adjust it for your student, all right? And think about how you can uh, adjust it accordingly. So I'm going to end here by just giving you a summary of what we covered today. So today, today I talk about the importance of universal screening. All right. I also talked about the components of reading, the five areas, which were phonemic awareness, alphabetic principle, vocabulary, comprehension, as well as uh, fluency. And then I also talk about curriculum-based measurements or CBM, which I gave you an example of Dibble's aid. But like I said, there are many, many other tools available. All right. Uh, and there are also tools that you can use to assess mathematics, all right? So I'm just doing reading. And we did two tools in the Dibbles 8. One is the maze. Now, just a remind, reminder that maze can be done for all as a whole class. But if you are doing, the next one is ORF, order reading fluency, then you have to do it student by student. I think the most important point I want to highlight is that uh, you by using universal screening, you're being fair to all the students. All the students, you get a chance to assess and really provide those children who really need the help. All right, with this, I end my uh, presentation and I hope that I would like to hear your, if you have questions, okay? So I want to give this time for you all to ask questions. Okay, let me look at the chat. Ah, some of you said, ah, okay. Learn more about right and calculating. Okay, yeah, I'm, I, I really hope that you can try it with your students. At least you see whether, you know, your students have. Um, but, and I also found this, that um, when you're actually assessing your children, maybe sometimes uh, we actually, we, we in Singapore at least, we actually do a lot of what I call choral reading, all right? Everybody reads together. And then I really do, you really don't know who are the weak, weak readers. But when you actually do the oral reading fluency, you have to, you're forced to listen student by student. And then you actually get to know where by just by assessing, assessing them, you actually know who are your weaker student. Okay. So maybe you don't have to, yeah, that I would suggest, I recommend. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. About, um, okay. I'm so glad that some of you are going to share with your, English, yes, yeah, you're going to share with your colleagues. Very good, because some of you may not be teaching English. Yes, in August, we do our cover reading. I think it's okay, but I will share with you my, my experience because I do go to classrooms and observe students, all right? And I notice this very common among students with reading problems, all right? When we are doing choral reading, what they are doing is you look at their mouth, they open their mouth, but they're actually looking around or listening and they are reading is a little bit slower. So what is happening is they may not be reading what's on the board. They actually depend hearing from other people, all right, and just repeating what other people are saying. So because of that, because if you just do choral reading alone, you are not going to pick up your weak readers, all right? So the students think they can read. But if you pull them out and ask them to do the oral reading fluency, they may not be able to read. So I do encourage, it is very important, 
all right, that you get to hear individual students read to you directly. Okay, yeah, 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 you get my point. I know it's very time consuming. All right, if you can't do it for all your students, at least those you suspect have a reading problems, you do the oral reading fluency one on one. Okay. Mm. All right. Any other questions? Dr. Tan, uh, can we allow the participants to turn on their microphone to ask you questions? Sure, now? sure. I'll okay. be happy. That's great. Thank you, Dr. Tan. Anybody who would like to ask a Tan question, you may turn on your microphone. We still have uh, five minutes. Or you can give me feedback about whether this tool, you think it can work or not, you know, because... I mean, we shouldn't be just uh, adopting things from, you know, other countries and not thinking whether it's appropriate because we are making very important decisions. So you are screening them. You're trying to decide whether they are at risk or not. Hmm. Anyone would like to turn on your mic? Teacher needs to repeat using the same passage for another day if people get below the 80. Okay, wait now. Let me just see. Um, Repeat. Um. No, okay. The, the, the idea is you just the, the, the idea is this when you are doing screening, you are trying to find out who are the students at risk. You're not doing intervention. You know what I'm saying? So you're actually not teaching them how to read this passage. You are using this passage to, to see okay, do they meet this criteria? If they don't meet this criteria, they are below at risk. Then if you want to do intervention, you use the progress monitoring probe, all right, which is another story. Okay, so that this one is for screening. It, it, when you're doing screening, you're just trying to figure out is this child at risk or not at risk? That's all. So you shouldn't be teaching the student to read this text, all right, to say, okay, next time I test you for this. You're not, 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 not that's not the purpose of screening. Okay, yes. It is to, maybe the word diagnose is a strong word. It is just to screen to see whether the child is at risk or not at risk. I will not give them a diagnosis because, all right, I'm, that's why I'm teach, I can teach you all. Because if, I'm, if only psychologists should be giving a diagnosis and they will not be using, uh, well, some of them, they may, in, in Singapore, we do use some of this information using the books to help us, all right, where, see where they stand, okay? But it's not, you should not be, at least for your teachers, you should not be using, using it for diagnosis. Mm. Doctor? Um, yes? Could I, okay. Um, if I want to use this method for my students, then I can use any suitable passage, right? No, uh, there should be no problem if I use any suitable passage for my students, isn't it? Ah, okay. But you would know, okay, it depends. Okay. It depends. You, you, I don't think you should be using any How what happened? Sorry, okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. You, you were asking maybe you can use any passage. Now, um, if you want to know you are using it for screening, then the passage you use is important because that is your Benchmark, right? Because you may use a, a passage that's too easy or too difficult. But I give you, you know what I mean? Yeah, because it, this is, uh, this is it's, it's all validated. So it has to be done across the different um, student population. But mm -hmm. I will give you a clue. There is something else that I didn't teach you, all right? Some of you may say, okay, I, 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 I'm not I'm not so concerned about uh the students at risk or not, but I want I am a I'm a let's say a geography um, science teacher, all right, and I want to know whether the some of the students cannot don't do very badly in science, all right, because they can't read the textbook. The textbook may be too difficult. So how, how do I know whether the textbook is too difficult or not? All right. Now, there is this thing what you can do is you ask the students to read the textbook for one minute. All right. And if the textbook, your accuracy is the number of errors, okay? How many words they read correctly over the total number of words read? It's more, let's say the accuracy is very low. 
that means you can know that the textbook is too difficult. If let's say the accuracy is between 93 to 97%, then the textbook is still okay. But the accuracy falls below 93%, that means the textbook is too difficult. So you can use it for your textbook, but you cannot use your textbook or any passage just for screening purposes. Okay, does that answer your question? Okay, all right. Any Thank other you. questions? Yeah, we have one uh, person, uh, Miss. Yes, Ima. sure. Go yes. ahead. Okay. Unmute yourself and then you ask a question. Um, my name is Napa. I am a special teacher, special education teacher in regional special education in Thailand. Okay. Uh, for, for my student is almost uh, early uh, uh, early childhood, uh, preschool pre student. Um, but um, some sometimes I have a uh, older student that uh twelve or thirteen that can can read in Thai. Um, I I want to know. Uh, have I begin with letter or we can skip the letter and the phonics to the word on because it's. Maybe it's too late to 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 learn about later when you grow up when you thirteen fourteen. Uh, I asked you about that. Is it important that we have to ready about ready form later? Okay, I, I'm not quite sure whether I understood you correctly, but um, so I'm hearing you that you're saying that some of your older children that means. 12 years old, 10, 10 to 12 years old, they still have problems reading. Is that what you say? Ah, okay. We had this problem too in Singapore. Okay. All right. Uh, that they are actually by primary five, primary six, they should be reading passages, right? But they are actually below. So sometimes, all right, and uh, that actually takes another session. Okay. All right. Uh, and I can teach you you should actually, you can go down, um, instead of doing a primary six probe, you may be able to go down a primary, primary three or primary, some of them may, can be even reading a primary two. All right. So you have, you have to use an easier probe for that. But that is only for if you are doing progress monitoring, you are doing intervention. But you still should go back and use a primary six probe at the end. To see whether at the end, let's say you'll do intervention, did they catch up? Okay, all right. And then the other point is this: for many of the children, they are they are still struggling with uh reading. All right. On one hand, at, especially at primary five, primary six, on one hand, you must teach them the phonics and how to do, all right. But we also need to know that we cannot just teach them B is sound t is t sound because they have to do their primary six they must read for comprehension as well so you must do a few things at the same time so you teach them how to let's say you teach them a word you teach them the winning of the word you put them in a sentence all right teach them how to spell the word so you have to do them a few things really because they really have to catch up does that make sense to you napa yes um, yes thank you okay uh, but that is a difficult problem that we also don't, uh, not easy problem to solve. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Thank I think somebody you. else raised their hand. Thank you, Ms. Napa. Uh, do we have time for one more question? One more question? Can I see? I thought I saw a hand. Yeah, I, I saw one too. No, uh, I think she probably accidentally okay. raised her hand. Yeah. Okay. So, Yes, we have no more. But the time you're still willing to answer one more question? Okay. Sure. Is it is it in this chat? Mm, yeah, there is a uh, one question in the chat by Mr. Afik. Dr. Tan, thank you for the sharing. Are uh, all teachers in Singapore trained to administer the DIBM? No, okay. Okay, in Singapore, what happened is uh we have uh we have what you call special education needs officers. SAN officers, they are trained how to use uh, the bows. We also have uh, teachers who are teaching in the learning support program as well as the dyslexia program. So only specific people who are working with children with reading difficulties are trained. 
Mm. But not all. Okay, moving on. Uh, Teacher Naroshi, my daughter, do you have a video or site of a chorus speaking in your school to share with us for reference? For chorus reading, uh, really not my area. <laughs> okay, so I don't have, I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, there are, just let you know, there are videos on how to, uh, what do you call it? Administer the doubles and the ORF. All right, mm. you can just go online, go to YouTube. You can teach yourself. <laughs> Thank okay? you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tan. I uh, believe that I must say on behalf of all the participants here, we thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed your presentation, Dr. Tan. Your delivery it was so engaging that uh, most of us lost track of time. It's almost five o'clock here now. Thank you so much, Dr. for an enlightening and stimulating presentation. We are indeed delighted to have you as our speaker for today. So now, without further delay, I would like to present the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Tan Chi Soon. Everybody, please give a round of applause to Dr. Tan in the chat box there. Wow, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and also thank you to the participants here who have been yes. very extremely engaging and supportive from day one until today. Uh, they are really amazed by their great effort and support. So congratulations to all of the participants to and to Dr. Tan. We hope to have you again for our next training session. And uh, to our viewers, uh, okay, and this is the training team here, uh, the training and the uh, special, uh, strategic communication unit team for all of your great effort here in ensuring that the training session uh, was smooth and successful. So congratulations, guys. We did it. Let's do it. Let's do some more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, doctor, without further delay, I would like to invite Dr. Mama Azli Sani Majalil, our Deputy Director of Sinusen, to deliver his closing remarks. Please welcome Dr. Muhammad Azli. Assalamualaikum and a very good day. Dr. Hanani Binti Harun Rasid, Director of Sinusen, our Honorable Speakers, uh, Ms. Wenning Si, Simeon Resident Expert and Educational Specialist, Perkin International Asia Pacific Program for Indonesia, Professor Santoshi Halder from University of Calcutta, India, Professor Dr. Eric Kabo from James Madison University, United States of America, and Dr. Chan Chi Soon, Senior Lecturer from National Institute of Education, Singapore. Alhamdulillah, we have reached the end of the regular course. Let me begin by thanking all of you for your great efforts to participate in this online course, strengthening the roles of teachers in school-based screening and intervention. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be here with everyone today. In accordance with Simeosan's objective, which is promoting teacher capacity building, this time around, Simeosan aims to enlighten educators on the importance of teachers' roles in school-based screening and intervention for learners with disabilities. Early screening will help teachers to provide appropriate support based on the needs of each learner. Therefore, I hope by now, all of you have a depth, uh, understanding and perhaps a new perspective on how to identify the appropriate assessment tools and instruments accordingly. Moreover, I believe the session earlier has shed some light and give ideas on the intervention recommendation that teachers and school administrators can implement at each phase of learner's development. This effort will definitely enhancing educational access to learners with disability, since everyone has their right to access uh, quality education. I am sure that takeaways and inputs from this course will help teachers to do early identification in order to minimize the negative effect of delayed intervention by directing the learners to preventive services at an earlier age. It is highly appreciated if you can share all these ideas and takeaways from this course with other educators which can benefit all learners with disability within your community and beyond. Important initiatives like this should be reciprocated 
and emphasize wider and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Simeosen, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to our speakers, Ms. Wenningsi, Professor Santoshi Halder, Dr. R, Dr. Eric Carbo, and Dr. Tan Chi Sun for their insightful inputs and knowledge. I assure you that the knowledge shared earlier has proven us the significant impact of the school-based screening and early intervention towards the learning development of learners with disabilities. On my final note, I would like to thank all participants for your time and dedication to making this productive training session a success. If you are interested to participate in our programs and activities, you can reach us via our official website and social media accounts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube for latest updates. Thank you and Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam, Dr. Azliz. Uh, here it is, our uh, social media uh, platform. So please do follow and support us uh, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as uh, you may visit our website there. Uh, without further delay, I would like to now share the evaluation uh, link, evaluation form link. Uh, but Masura will also share the link in the chat box. Please be reminded to fill in the form so that we'll entitle you to receive your certificate of participation. Okay, so you may scan the QR code there on screen as well as the link will be shared in the chat box there. And to our viewers on YouTube and Facebook, thank you for joining us and we really appreciate your support from day one. And hope to see you again soon. Take care and thank you so much. Stay safe, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, stay safe. Have a nice day to all of you. Thank you. Bye. It's time to open our eyes to a bright Promising future will rise to the call of the times and create a stronger tomorrow. Let's start to make a difference, teaching everyone to learn through science, health, and technology. We will share our expertise by promoting knowledge and policies. We can build. The link is shared in the chat box. We'll achieve our goals through partnership, creating opportunities by working hand in hand. We can accomplish all our dreams.